It's weird hitting the start stream button and it just starts immediately without the thing popping up to be like, Hey, stream starting. It's like, oh. Okay, sure, I guess, yeah. Hopefully it is streaming properly. I see stuff happening on the YouTube side. <laughs> Number 15. Could this be another example of a magnum copus? Alright, such as AFK, I think Pagan died in the last minute or so, so I'm all alone! Late in Kretosis, rude. I am on time. I am 100% on time. No stream as fuck, try again. Oh. I played the most annoying and loud ad before this video. My ears already hurt. That sucks, I'm sorry. And here we have Cree being late for the 76th time. I think you mean the 110th time? You're never alone with us around, Cree. Yeah, I could get bullied by you. I don't know what to talk about, considering they're both gone right now. Meh. 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 Oh, he's alive! He lives! Hello. Hi. Hi. Alone? Plap time. No. <laughs> Talk about slurs, Cree. Well, see, my favorite slur is... <laughs> Yep, we're, uh, we're covering a Starfield video today by, uh, none other than the creator of the Magnum Copus. Um, this video was recommended to us. Uh, fuck, what was it called again? Hold on, it's in our chat. I need to find Discord. Do people actually hate Starfield? Starfield and negativity bias. And, um, he's using Vault Boy from Fallout in his thumbnail for a Starfield video. Which is fine, I guess. It's just, it doesn't match up with, you know. Wait, is this the Magnum Copus guy? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's okay, guys. Creed is black. He can say it. I'm not. Still no Bioshock Infinite is flawless coverage. Look. I despise Bioshock Infinite. I never want to play it again. I have to play it at least once to do an eventual analysis video on it. And it doesn't make sense for me to play it now to cover a Bioshock Infinite video when I could just play it when I'm doing the analysis and cover that video then. You know? Add old, uh, yeah, add old streams up, mean more vids. Yeah, I've got, like, five of them uploaded. One went live yesterday. Uh, the other four are going live over the next few days. And then tonight... Tonight? No, probably Tuesday night. I'll upload, like, the remaining ones and schedule them, uh, to release every other day. Play it on stream? Yeah, yeah, I'll probably play it on stream. You mean Bioshlock Shitfinant? Yep. That's what it is. Minecraft analysis when? Never. Wizard to analyze. You mine rock? You build house? You build a hoose? Ah, oh, you're I back! Again. Yeah. Have you started the recap of what you did the last two weeks? No. <sighs> So, I guess let's get started. Cree, what have you done the last two weeks? <laughs> Exist. Um, I put out a House of Usher review. Check it out. Yeah. I think that's about it. 
Fair enough. Uh, Pagan, what have you done the last two weeks? Mm, watch anime. Well. The, any, anything else for either of you? Not really, no. No. Shit. Uh, well. For the last two weeks, uh, we, we played an indie horror game called, uh, Dead Beacon. It was actually really good. Would definitely recommend it. Um, actually had the dev in chat with us talking, so that was actually pretty cool. Hmm. So we got to, uh, get some insights into them, uh, gave some feedback. Uh, they actually said they're going to do a couple things based on the feedback we gave, so that'll be interesting to see. Um, we, uh, started a new bounty game. Threadnought, uh, wanted to see Castlevania, um, Circle of the Moon, so that's what we're playing, which is a weird Castlevania game for sure. Watched five movies with my community in the two week time span. So we watched Alien, and then for Halloween movie marathon, we watched Aliens, The Thing, and then Bubba Hotep. And then this uh, yesterday, we watched Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Definitely has that old. Uh, has that old. Um, comedy, right? Because it was made in 1989. So it has uh, old school comedy, like two of the characters, uh, they're both guys, they are they have to share a motel room and they actually end up spooning in the night and they don't realize that one of them kisses the other one's ear. And then they start waking up more and more and realize in horror what's going on. And the one guy's like, like where's, where's your hand? And he's like, it's between two pillows. <laughs> no! So they get up and then they start like going <laughs> and they deepen their voices and talk about the football game that they totally watch. That was it was super manly and manly thing. It was definitely one of those on, uh, definitely one of those uh, old school comedy. Which the thing movie? The uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, not the original The Thing. Okay, the original The Thing is The Thing from Another World. Which is also a play on. Which is also an adaptation from something else. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I think Thing Nine from Outer Space or something. No, 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 that's something else. Fuck. It doesn't matter. We watched John Carpenter's The Thing. We did talk about how it, the new The Thing, which is the prequel thing, uh, the prequel was horribly butchered by the studios and how depressing it was and if you really want to see something really awesome like holy shit uh you should watch the uh, practical effects for the actual the thing prequel john carpenter when john Plummer walks in <laughs> uh watch animal house we already did that for a uh for a saturday showtime and it, it is a classic for a reason. Animal House is a fantastic movie. Watch the nice guys with your community. Ah, I could. Do it. I could. This next uh, this next week we're gonna watch Jumanji. Oh. Yeah, yeah, we watched that several. Like that was probably about a year ago now, wasn't it? No. Wouldn't have been a year ago. But uh, I'd say a few months ago we watched it. Me, you, and Pagan. It was more than a few months ago. That was at least, at least as far back as March or uh, April, I think. I mean, maybe, yeah. That was a little longer, though. I've only watched parts of Jumanji when it aired on TV. It feels like a fever dream. I certainly of get is. those moments. Yeah. If you if you haven't watched the whole thing and you just come in and like, what's going on? Yeah, that would definitely be uh, maybe one of those. We're doing the Robin Williams version. We're not the, doing the Rock version. There's only one Jumanji movie. I have heard surprisingly the Jumanji with the Rock in it is actually good. I've heard that too, but this is also one of those movies where it's just like leave it alone. We don't need more. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Uh, yeah. Should we get on with the video then? 
I mean, I guess so. I, I didn't expect that you two did nothing. Eh, it's just not much I want to talk about. I did see FNAF, but it's like... Nah. Well, yeah, talk about that just a little bit. Like, you don't have to go into any details. Yeah, I'll try not to spoil the uh, the amazing plot of FNAF, but... Uh, well, I didn't even think of it like that. I was just thinking, like, <laughs> you know... Just it's give not... a basic summary of your experience. It's not... accurate to the lore of the games, which, like... Yeah, the lore is all kinds of fucked. It's, like, really weird and buried deep. But, like, if you take the first game in isolation, uh, you can understand, like, the lore they set up there. And, um, it's not super faithful to that. Um, parts of it are really awkward and weird. They, they have trouble balancing the uh, animatronics as, like, their place in the world because... The whole point of the game says, yeah, the animatronics are trying to kill you. But then in the movie, it's like, no, wait, they're actually good, though. Even though, like, it starts off with a random security guard getting fucking murdered. And, uh, there's only, like, one really good scene of the animat uh, animatronics going to town on people, and you don't really get to see much for the most part. Like, you see a guy... And, like, he goes into a closet with a glass window, the the frosted glass you can't see clearly, and he realizes he locked himself in a room with uh, one of the animatronics. And then you just see, like, a bloody hand on the window from the outside. Um, lots of Tism's story. Vanessa is there for some reason. Um, there's this whole subplot of, like, main character guy, uh, Shaggy. His little sister... Um, the ant wants custody of her so she could get government money even though it's like the ant is rich enough to have a lawyer fucking tailing her around to do her bidding and like apparently this the $300 she's going to get from the government for custody of the little sister is enough to go after I guess um I don't know why that subplot needed to exist um I wish it was a lot better. I didn't hate it. I'm probably never going to watch it again, though. Uh, how is Matt Pat's character in the movie? The movie's an instant zero out of ten because there wasn't a three-hour-long scene of him getting violently ripped limb from limb by the animatronics. And they shoved in the whole it's just a theory thing in, like, a super awkward way. Where, like, he's someone at a diner, he's working at a diner, he's like, oh yeah, uh, lunch is the most important meal of the day. Oh, I, I thought that was breakfast. No, it's lunch. There's, uh, uh, because such and such reason, reason, but that's just a theory. It's like, okay, if you want to give this jackass a cameo and have him drop the line, but it's just a theory, like, you could have done it in a way that makes a lot more sense in the world where, like, they're trying to figure out what's going on, main character guy, uh, Shaggy, talks to, like, some paranormal investigator person who happens to be Matt Pat, and he's, like, going through, like, okay, well, it could be this, ghosts do that, blah, 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 but that's just a theory. So, like, you get his line in there in a way that makes sense and isn't, like, forced really poorly. Yeah. Do they explain why the guy stays after finding out the robots are alive? <sighs> Kinda. He he needs a job to show that he's like a responsible adult so his little sister won't get taken away by uh, the evil ant character. Um, yeah, I feel like they could have done it a lot better. Um, the animatronics look shockingly good for the most part, like accurate to the game. Um, yeah. I could go into more depth, I could go into spoiler territory, I don't really feel like it, really. <laughs> Alright, that's fair, that was going into more depth than I, than I thought. I thought you were just basically going to go in, like, um, it's a movie that exists, um, it's fine, but, you know. It certainly is a movie that it exists. Around. There, there's nothing, like, amazing. It's not going to be one of those things that wins awards, or or shouldn't be, I should say. It should not but win any awards. But it's also not a movie that's absolute dog shit, like we've been getting. 
yeah, there's a lot of awkward weirdness to it. Um, I actually do kind of want to talk about it more now, but I just want to get on with the video and get this over with. <laughs> yeah. FNAF looked like a movie. It was, in fact, a movie. Zero out of ten, no 12-hour Roxanne Wolf sex scene? Oh, God. Why would you read that comment? Why would you allow that cursed thing to be spoken aloud? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe sounds like a 4 out of 10? Possibly. Maybe, maybe like, maybe even a 5 out of 10, it sounds like. It, it's just, it's four, there, it's average. It just exists. 4 sounds about fair. Like, um... If I had known what the movie was going to be, I wouldn't have gone and seen it in theaters. But I probably still would have watched it. Part of me is glad the movie exists. It's just like, hey, here's a, uh, here's a thing that exists, and it's not completely terrible. I mean, hell, it's fucking light years ahead of anything Disney has done in a long time, aside from maybe Andor. Andor is, like, the the crazy exception that proves the rule. Because Andor is, is so well written. Shockingly. Seriously, the speeches in Andor are, like... Yeah, in those last few episodes. Some of the best speeches ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, they are genuinely up there with some of the best speeches in media. What'd you think about Willy's Wonderland? Never saw it. I saw Red Letter Media's review of it. It's like... Yeah, I think I'm fine without this. Yeah. Anyways, video time? I I mean, I guess so. This will be definitely the fastest we've ever gotten to a video, for sure. Um, I might actually have to refresh Watch Together too because the whole thing is glitched out for me, I just realized. Okay, go for it. <clears throat> All right. Let us uh, let day. us begin and see see if any bugs or glitches or anything happen. No, it looks to be day. working. Oh. Um. Do people actually hate Starfield? Starfield a negativity bias. So um, I would like to point out with what's on screen here right now. Keep in mind this is his pose to his community, and he's a hardcore Bethesda shell, right? Yeah, this so is a he, guy he who... Has a, he has a very tainted community pool to work with. This is a guy who pretty much exclusively makes Bethesda-focused content. And most of it is positive, by the way. Like, a, a, to an absurd, fanatical degree, positive. Yeah. Remember, like, this me, is... Remember, this he's is the, the one that made the Magnum Copus. Yeah, he made the Magnum Copus. This is the guy who quit his day job... Because he thought 76 was going to be such a hit that he could make a career off of making videos on it on YouTube. Yeah. So, keep in mind, he's already got an exceptionally tainted pool uh, that he's pulling from. And almost half of that of his audience haven't even touched Starfield. Hold on, I want to check something else. When did this video come out? Just grabbing the link and checking... Mute tab, paste. One month ago. September 17th. Okay, so this is like two and a half weeks after release, kind of. Yeah, something like that. So this still isn't long after the game was released, which, I mean, <laughs> it's uh, definitely gotten a lot worse since then. Yeah. So let's Which see how I, this goes. I would love to bring up those articles. Shit, I should have had those articles on hand, too, so we can bring those up later. Because the, the new cope from Bethesda has been insane. Can you sh can you send that article in our chat, by the way? I tried looking for it the other day and couldn't find it. I have the one about real-life astronauts weren't bored when they landed on the moon, but I need that new one for the video. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll grab it. Should be in Rags's gaming chat. Pretty sure. 55% either didn't like it or didn't play it. Funny. Yeah. 
Yeah, and like I said, and remember, his is an incredibly biased pool of voters on this poll, right? Mm-hmm. Incredibly biased. Two dollars from some shambler. Thank you. Hello, Pagan. Hello. Bethesda is a trash developer, and they make terrible games. They finally lost enough of the few good employees they still had, and even the most oblivious of casual consumers are noticing. Yeah, the turn on this game has been fucking amazing. It's better than what I could have hoped for, honestly. Like, okay. I I need to make clear, because some people take that out of context because they're petty little cunts. I I wanted this game to be good, but the fact that it isn't, and people are actually, like, waking up to how bad Bethesda is, and are realizing some of their older games aren't as good as they thought, yeah, that's better than what I could have hoped for, for a game that was bad. Found the article and posted it. Thank you. (laughs) Starfield's planets are boring, because the moon isn't Disney World, fuck off. Yep. That's Bethesda's new cope, because they realized the other cope of when the astronauts first went to the moon, they weren't bored, was really, really, really stupid. So now they're like, <laughs> wait, we gotta we gotta pivot. So now their new cope is that the the planets are all boring because the moon isn't Disney World. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You don't get it. When you play Starfield, you're supposed to be bored out of your fucking mind. Yeah. <laughs> the the ironic thing too is a lot of their games are like theme parks and like modern Bethesda, Fallout Three and Four, Skyrim. They're like fantasy and post apocalyptic theme parks. Yeah, they they are. It's like yeah, there's a coat of paint of the thing you actually want here, but it's just a thin coat of paint. Oh. Let's see, uh, The Voices Will Not Stop says, Just get a better PC, forehead. <laughs> also, The Voices Will Not Stop, Cup has 19 gorillion fucking triangles. Yeah, the, <laughs> the Starfield is so bad and run by such an incompetent, and made by such an incompetent developer, that you have an apple that has, like, 20,000 triangles on it. A fucking apple, for God's sakes. And, and keep in mind, this isn't a regular apple. This is an apple shaped as a cube. Yeah. And there's lots of stuff like this that's been happening in games recently. City Skylines, which is like a city builder management sim type game. Yeah, so where, where you play from a god's eye view, by the way. Keep yeah, and there's little NPCs walking along the streets to fill out the world so it looks like there's actually people in your city. They had fully modeled teeth. and That rendered in the entire <laughs> thing. There was no draw distance for the teeth rendering. <laughs> It's like, why the fuck would you do that? This, this has like you're, to be... Your God's Eye View game, why in the fuck? Who cares about if the people have teeth? You wouldn't even really need to model the insides of their mouths, because when are you ever going to fucking see that? Yeah, uh, you don't even need to model their fucking face. Yeah. I have to assume this is like... You, you know how in a lot of... Um... I definitely don't want to get too political here, so I'm trying to be careful with my words. You know how a lot of colleges and universities aren't going for the best and brightest, they're going for quotas and stuff, and they're not actually teaching people the skills they're there to learn, and the result is people being incompetent, getting degrees, and going out into their fields of work. Mm -hmm. This is probably one of the easiest cases of seeing the results of that without people fucking dying. So like, oh yeah, here's a game developer, someone who went to college, learned the shit poorly, and they didn't learn any of the like... What's the word I'm looking for? The The um, practical or pragmatic realities of game development. Not just that, but like... um, for some reason, the word occlusion is coming to mind. That's not the word I'm looking for. Uh, like, the resource management thing. Where it's like... Op- optimization? Optimization, yes. They didn't oh, okay. learn any of the optimization, um, I guess, techniques or skills, or like when to even fucking do that when making a game. So we're mm-hmm. winding up with these games where you have, like, 
a crate that is a cube that has 60,000 triangles, or city sim with thousands of NPCs that have fully modeled, highly detailed teeth in their head that you're never going to see, and shit like that. Yeah. Um, this is... As, as shitty as this is, this is the best place for it to happen, because you don't want the same effect happening in... For example, the restaurants you eat in, the people who maintain the water supply, and, and stuff like that. Which it already is, by the way. So have fun with that. Yeah. Yeah, well, affirmative action and diversity laws in general have been an absolute disaster for civilization. Membership message from Grandmaster Pi, thank you. Creed's college rant hit a little too close to home. I'm going to go cry in the corner now. I'm very sorry. 500 gigabyte game? Dude. Some of these massive fuck-off games are insane right now. But, like, the I sizes was, are getting up to. I was just about to make that fucking joke. The fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Western game dev near here. How do you know? 500 gigabyte game. <laughs> yeah, yes. is it the latest Call of Duty? Like, 300 uh, gigabytes or something? Or I think it was, like, 290 or something? Uh, I don't know. I haven't it, been it's looking something at crazy. Call of Duty. Yeah. Um, there's no reason for games to be that big at this stage in our technological advancement, unless you're doing like an extremely, like absurdly high, highly detailed render of like nearly the entire planet, or at least an entire country. Because uh, fucking New World. Which is an Amazon MMO, which Amazon blundered the shit out of. When New World is takes up less fucking hard drive space than your single player on rails Call of Duty game, Jesus Christ, something has gone wrong. <laughs> uh, five pounds from Threadnought. Thank you very much. They're going for diversity in airline pilots and medical professionals. Hooray for diversity. Ignore the corpses, bigot. Yeah. Well, did you, if you saw the latest thing, the the thing that took over the world for a couple years there and made everybody lock down, uh, it turns out that the vast majority of those have now been directly linked to and attributed to faulty um, ventilators. Hmm. Like, we now have that as evidence. Because your rate of survival, which we knew off the bat, your rate of survival when you were put on a ventilator, your mortality rate was up by 500%. That doesn't happen from the thing that happens because the equipment is that bad. And it is, as it's now been proven, the equipment is that bad. Anyways... Yeah, the, the some of the things that are happening in our world is a bit insane. Video? Yeah, let's uh, let's let's get to the video again. Uh, just brief super recap. Uh, it's Bad Company Sarge. He's asking his community, and he's a hardcore Bethesda shill. So you know, we have a tainted pool. But even in the tainted pool, the vast majority—or sorry, not vast majority, but the majority have not even played the game or don't like it. The other day I posted this poll asking people if they were enjoying Starfield. The reason I posted this was because I'd noticed that about half of the comments I was getting about the game were negative. This was yeah. despite the fact it's reviewed well and I personally think it's a good game overall. Well, again, people, as we people <laughs> are talking badly about the game despite I think it's good. Yeah, and again, we know that Bad Company Sarge has no, like, ability to, to critique anything. Because we know his track record. If this was his first video, we'd be like, okay, well now you need to establish why what you think is a good borderline for it. Why what you say is good critique. Can you back it up with, well, this is why, this is why, this is why. We know that Bad Company Sarge can't. Also, Appeal to Authority has been reviewed well. What, you exactly. mean by the major publications that we're always going to give it 9s and 10s out of 10s? Yeah, because they want access. Again, there's a reason we call them access media. They just review favorably so that the company will give them handouts. Yeah. 
if I myself, if my channel was a bit bigger, and if I did nothing but praise Bethesda day in and day out, I would have been able to get a review copy. Yep. Um, even if my channel reaches a million subscribers, if I keep criticizing them, they will never fucking give me a review copy. Yeah. Um, what the voices will not stop said, uh, it, it good, me like, why other no like, Ogren Logic. Uh, Ogren, <laughs> for anyone that doesn't know, they are a subspecies of humanity in Warhammer 40k, characterized by being massive, huge, hulking brutes whose in general intelligence is that of a four-year-old, and the really smart ones have the intelligence of a nine-year-old. That's the, that's the level of smarts we're working with here when it comes to an Ogryn. <laughs> but they're big, strong, and very durable. So they're, they're viewed as an acceptable uh, deviation, which is why they're called that an acceptable subhuman type. So Hassan XQC IQ got it. Yeah, basically, that's what you're thinking of. You're, uh, uh, Hassan Piker XQC. They're they're on tier with a nine year old. That is about where they are. Actually, Hassan would be Hassan would be the nine year old. XQC would be the four year old. Yeah. Because I think Hassan is more manipulative and and vicious, whereas XQC is just an idiot. Lanterns glow for two dollars. Thank you. I'm just going to take two of Bethesda's A's. I'm not sure what that means. I know, like, triple A, but, like... Yeah, take... I guess, so they'll be single A. There you go. Mm. Uh, <laughs> such protect the little ones. Yep. Uh, Box Fox says, orcs are smarter. I repeat, the orcs are smarter. Yeah. <laughs> I was a bit surprised, so I checked with the poll to see what was going on, and from the results, we can see that only a very small percentage of people are saying they outright don't like the game. With the vast see, again, I, I hate this, because it is such an insanely small sample size. And it's an incredibly biased and tainted source. Like there's This is <laughs> your community post that Not your community sees, you are known as an infamously hardcore Bethesda shill and fanatic. And even in your shitty painted poll, the vast, the sorry, I keep saying say vast majority, the majority, over 50%, either haven't played the game or don't like it. Your yes ones are in the minority. I know because he doesn't understand how fucking polling works. He thinks, oh, yes. Yes, this is the one. It's like, no, no, you have three options there. No, so I think what he's going for... So each option is weighed against the other option. I think what he's going for is people are hating on this game despite having not played it. Maybe. But again, that's his that's his tainted, like, pool. The people that are mostly going to watch your video aren't going to be a part of your shitty community. It's also, again, the sample size. Not just his community, but this is... 1,400 people out of the probably hundreds of thousands of people who played this game. Well, there is such a thing as once you get to a certain size of polling data, it's no, yeah, of course, of, the whole. of course, but it's still, I feel, a very small sample size with just 1,400 people, regardless mm. of it being his community or not. It, it being his community is a modifier that makes it worse. Now, there's a good example, though. Uh, Sierra Anderson. Well, three of my friends said violent crime is good, so isn't it good? Only one random guy said no. Polls. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's that's the problem with a lot of this data-driven stuff, is you need to understand the methodology of how they did their sample size and their testing. That's why so much data is called junk science and scrapped, because their methodology is just inherently fucked. Yeah, it's so <laughs> weird that he doesn't seem to understand this, where it's like, it, yeah, this is a poll for your community. This is how your community feels about it. This isn't how the majority of people feel about it. 
like, well, why do you think randos would have even seen this poll? Apparently, Especially the people who don't like it. The people who don't like the game are Probably very are unlikely around. to see this. Yeah, they're Appar not going to stick around for your shitty-ass poll. Apparently, yeah. there's more people playing uh, Cyberpunk than Starfield right now. I can believe it. Let's uh, let's let's find. Yeah, I'm checking now. Okay. Ooh, this might actually be true. Hold on. So, Cyberpunk 2077, 24 hour peak, 81,000. Playing 34 minutes ago, 68,000. Okay. Yep. Let's see, Starfield. Oh my god, it's even worse than before. HA! Um, 24 hour peak and playing 35 minutes ago, 41,000. Yeah, so... Fucking double. oof. How are you getting your shit stomped in by fucking cyberpunk? God damn! Mm hmm. That's fucking and brutal. And just because I want to dunk on them more. Uh, again, a single player, very niche title that came out before Starfield and is a turn-based tactical RPG, Baldur's Gate 3. Current players, 193,998. Months after it released. a single, uh, Mostly single player. You can play it co-op. But you know what? You know, the vast majority are going to play it single player. And it is just completely clowning on Starfield. Hold on, let me grab that too then. Baldur's Gate 3. Well, I can. Bring it up on screen. Link, so you can bring it up the link. Eh. Oh. Well, I've got it anyway, so. Yeah, uh, Baldur's yeah, Gate 3 released a month before Sharpfield. And it has got well over four times the uh, players. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Again, the fact that it's it's holding on to damn near 200,000 players still is fucking nutty. Yeah. played it, or enjoyed their time with it. And the reason for this? Well, in short, my buddy Jay managed to sum it up quite well when I asked about this on Twitter. They said, I think people are very quick to comment on things they don't like, and often don't mention things they do like. And That's not true at all. I, I think people are more likely to push back against something when they when they see that there's, there's something like objectively wrong with it. Like, when you see somebody say something that is, like, certifiably incorrect, you are more likely to call them out on it than if somebody gets something, like, vaguely wrong. It'd be like if somebody made a video where they claimed the Earth is flat. You're gonna have a ton more people that are gonna be like, no, you're, you're an idiot. Mm-hmm. Just because what you said is just, is, is just super easy to disprove. My favorite Cyberpunk 2077 moment is when Vinny Feinsauce messes uh, with the shrimp lady in PC. Yeah, that's amusing. Yeah. Uh, 10 euros from Corktail. Thank you, Joe Biden. Wake up. All right, then. Joe Biden. Wake up. Starfield is Bethesda sure, game. Bethesda. Bethesda. Yes, absolutely of this video, then that is it. Starfield is a very well-liked game by most of the people who have played it. The no, it isn't. No, no, it isn't. Actually, we, we can actually prove this based off of the playership numbers and how the rating is going. Yeah. The, the majority don't like it. It's getting worse and worse as it goes on. It's not improving. There's not more people coming in to like it. The, the rating is tanking. The sales numbers are going down. The again, we don't we don't know the actual like 
returns that they have or the people getting refunds because they don't give exact details of that, but we know that the refunds went up dramatically when Starfield released. Like, to an insane degree. So we can show that, no, something is clearly going on here. And the number of people that are just... The numbers that are coming out do not support the idea that the vast majority like the game. Yeah, they especially especially in recent ratings. Because uh, that, that recent reviews on Steam are fucking plummeting. Yep. Uh, see the point? Stop spamming chat, please. We don't need to see Acer Thorn's name in a million ex exclamation marks numerous times. Thank you. Uh, membership message from Fantastic197. Thank you very much. Thank you. Afternoon, Jemson Farm Tool. Oh. Currently playing Starfield. Sacrificial lamb, pain of my friend group. All I feel is pain. Please send tequila. I cannot do that. I'm sorry, you cannot. Um, Mirthful says, uh, Acrotosis. Starfield is the ultimate culmination of two decades of everything wrong with how Bethesda makes games. It's also their worst decisions distilled and condensed into a single title. Yep. Yeah, I can agree with that. Yep. They've uh, dumbed down everything to an insane degree. Um... Choice obviously doesn't matter all that much. Um, they I'm didn't actually have shocked. Any lore. They didn't have any lore to ruin, and yet they still contradict themselves in their own fucking game. Yeah. Where they get to make up everything from the ground up. Five pounds from Threadknot. Thank you. Hey, Setch, remember my prediction? More revenue than Baldur's Gate 3 but more money in refunds than what Baldur's uh, Gate 3 made. Oh, yeah. Yep. The other thing, too, is the, the pricing difference. Baldur's Gate 3 is a, a, a literal, like, leap forward for the entire industry. And it's priced at $60. When all of these companies want games at 70 plus, it doesn't make them look good. That a game that is is cheaper than theirs is way better than theirs. Like I guarantee you that if, if Baldur's Gate three released and the base price was eighty dollars or hundred dollars, none of these other developers would have said shit. They would have just sung the game's praises and would have been like, "See, see, they they charged a hundred dollars for you. We're only charging seventy. But because Baldur's Gate three is charging sixty. And motherfuckers like Starfield want to charge $70 for the base version of the game. That's the problem. That's why but that's why Baldur's Gate 3 had to be torn down by all of the the triple A developers. But that also is why the uh numbers are tainted for top sales because for every say, say Baldur's Gate 3 sells what's a good example uh, I, I was going to say 3 copies and Starfield sells 2 the difference between the two would be much less because Starfield also costs $10 more per so that, that's the why you have to be careful with those top sales because they do it based off dollar value they don't base it off of number of units shipped I blame extra credit for making the whole game should be more than 60 to $70. Yeah, fuck extra credits. I hate them. Yeah, they are generally one of the worst things that's ever happened to the game industry. Look at are the ones talking about it the most, while those having a good time are just playing the game. Having Apparently not so much anymore. Uh yeah, no, they're not. not. That's it's not Again, true. Viewership and, numbers have dropped across all streaming platforms for Starfield to a hilarious degree. the The game literally, well, literally in a figurative sense, fell off a cliff in terms of relevancy. Uh, in in all kinds of media, just like after two weeks, it just suddenly dead. Yeah, nobody's watching Starfield. 
uh, videos. Nobody's watching. Unless those Starfield, videos are uh, making fun stream. of Starfield, like uh, Seth's video. Yeah. And that's a well-established uh, channel, too. Anything he puts out is going to do well. Oh, yeah. But dude, his video, by the way, if you guys haven't seen Seth Zentak's video on Starfield, it is really, really good. Yeah, I'm probably going to watch that best, at some point. One of his best lines in that is, uh, in order for modders to save, save Starfield, they'd have to hit Control-A, delete everything, and start from scratch. Oh, shit, that's fucking brutal. Like, damn! That's way more brutal than I was expecting for him on that. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. Damn. Um. Yeah, and, and what he's saying here also isn't true because we know that there's Bethesda shills who post constantly about Starfield. Well, maybe not so much anymore, but earlier on, when this video was made, certainly, mm -hmm. that po uh, posted constantly on Twitter about it. Like, um, that one dude on Clave Emily pointed out who tweeted, like, it averaged out to a t one tweet every, like, 10 minutes or something like that over a 24 yeah. hour period about the game rather than just playing it. Working hard to ride Bethesda. Working yeah. Now, is that Peter Ovo fucking loser? Yep. really feel the need to talk about it all that much. And you they do, though. Again, so that's just the wrong there, too, because the ones that are enjoying it are the ones constantly trying to praise it to the high hills and constantly making videos and posts about it. This they're, is just also... getting no, they're just getting no community traction because the overwhelming majority realize the game is shit. This is also bizarre coming from him, considering he's the kind of person who makes positive videos constantly about games. Yeah, I'm actually curious. How many of his um, Starfield videos did he make between his review and this, or his re the, the release and this? I'm genuinely curious now. Hold on. Hello, everyone. No, shut up. All right. There's that. Yeah, because he mentions too that he's done like videos, and that's where he's been getting these comments on. So, okay, uh, four months ago, how to get early access to Starfield. I mean, that was obvious. Everyone knew how to get early access to Starfield five days early. Bethesda literally announced it themselves. I don't know why you need to make a video on this unless you're fucking desperate for views. Um, now let me get this back up on screen so people can see as well. You can't see all of his, uh, his videos here, but you can see three of them. Uh, why do people hate Starfield? Oh, is this... No, that's... That's a, that's a different video. That's not the one we're watching now. I was gonna say, wait, what the fuck? Shit, uh, we might... Depending on how fast we get through this one, we, might, we can throw that one on, too. Maybe. Um, that would have been before release, though. Uh, five Beth old Bethesda mechanics that Starfield needs. Why do people love Starfield? Can Starfield uh, get this uh, weapon modding right? I've already made 12 Starfield builds, pre-Starfield, uh, sorry, Starfield pre-release character builds, the Wanderer Starfield character build, easiest way to make money in Starfield, how to smuggle contraband in Starfield, is Starfield good? Uh, another character build, and then finally this video. I don't know, man. If you're making one, two, three, four, five, six six videos in the span of a month on Starfield and more before that. It seems like you're talking quite a lot positively about the game. Yeah, so by by you even as a metric in this, you're just lying because you're constantly talking about this game. I can't even tell if his Starfield uh, videos are doing worse than his regular videos. Okay. That's a beginner's guide. Well, his guide. Let's Play ones are clearly dumpstered. Yeah. Holy shit. Um, Private Ranger build, 661 views. That, That's a sad amount of views. Skyrim's biggest secret has just been revealed five months ago, 6,000 views. But that's like the exception, not the rule. Most of these are... Not great. Oh shit, he yeah. did a video on a game that isn't from Bethesda. I'm actually shocked. 
Oh. Uh, oh Middle War. Earth Shadow of War in 2023. And he's got one from Borderlands. Oh, he does too. Jesus Christ, though, look at his Borderlands one. His Borderlands viewership is like his Let's Plays. <laughs> Seven, oh, stop, stop scrolling. Hold on. Go down slightly. I just saw that on your fucking screen. Hold on. What? Seven <laughs> ways that Red <laughs> Redfall succeeds. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh I, my I god. I saw that on the screen and it was like, what the? <laughs> oh, hey, let me scroll down a little bit further. Redfall desperately needs a patch before that. <laughs> oh, god. oh my god. Does he still have the burn loot murder links in his videos? I don't know, maybe. Isn't this the same guy who got butthurt on Fallout 76 not being good? Yeah, he is. Yes. Didn't we cover a Bad Company Sarge video not that long ago where he defended Redfall in the video randomly? Yes, that was the I Hate Game Reviews video. Yeah, That was actually right. one of the ones that was there, uh, but oh, you can't yeah, see it on still, screen because uh, it's off to the side. He's um, still funding Burn Loot Murder as well, so there you go. Hold on. I wasn't going to do this, but now I kind of have to. I hate game reviews. That was that video. God. <laughs> this guy has a way of latching on to, like, the worst games and trying to defend them. It's really bad. <laughs> the worst games and worst people and ideologies, too. Holy shit. You know, I'm guilty of this. Rather than making a video focused about all of the things I love about Starfield, I chose to make this video. You motherfucker, you made, what was it, eight videos before this about how much you love Starfield. Fuck off. <laughs> also, I just realized that's hilarious because he, he referenced the uh, critic reviews as like a metric for this game's success. And then he has a video talking about how they're completely worthless and you shouldn't listen well, to you don't, critic scores. You don't get his high IQ play here, Peg, and he only hates reviewers and uh, video game reviews when they're not positive towards the thing he wants it to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, I know. It's just funny <laughs> that he, he would even make a video where he's basically telling people, you know, don't listen to the critic scores. It doesn't tell you anything. They're too negative. And then... But the moment that they're positive to something he likes, it's, oh, but the critic scores are everything. You should always listen to them. They're the most important thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. this is part of the problem with um, getting into pretty much any discussion online about anything that has popularity. Is that you're going to run into these... Again, I don't like using the word fanboy, but it's accurate here. These fanboy weirdos like Bad Company Sarge here, who... Their beliefs and opinions will change on a fucking dime to be whatever's most convenient to them and protecting their fucking video game waifu, where it's like, oh, um, reviews for this Bethesda game are bad. I hate reviews. Reviews for this Bethesda game are good. This is a good basis for why this game is good. I'm going to point to this as proof that the game is good. It's literally like peak double standard. Reviews are only good when they say the things I want them to. Yep. Yep. That how there's a minority of people out there who don't like the game. That's negative bias in full effect. Rather than focus on the half of the comments which were neutral or positive, I couldn't help but focus on the negative half. Again, because you disagree with them, like this is this is the thing that happens. This is why it's not negativity bias. If you if somebody says something you disagree with, it is very hard not to call them out on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm taking this from everybody's side. That everybody does it. That's human fucking nature. So the people are calling you out in your comment section because they vehemently disagree with you that Starfield is a good game. 
And yeah. if the problem you have is that we have evidence that it's not a good game at all, you just have your fifis. This is especially true. Like, I'm actually kind of glad I watched his Starfield review before uh, the stream, where okay. he's like praising the skill system and. Oh god, his the review is so. Planets are very different from each other. Hang yeah, on. that. Planets generally <laughs> feel different from one another. Like how? How in the <laughs> fuck can you say that with a straight face? Yeah. And we we now know that Bad Company Sarge here gave Starfield a nine out of ten. Yeah. Like, to be a decent reviewer, you do have to have some standards, not none. Yeah. And, like, the thing he said in that video, too, I didn't tell you, is, um... Uh, he said something to the effect of, you know, some more unique-looking items and better legendary effects, or not legendary effects, but effects on weapons, and the game would have been a 10 out of 10. It's like, oh my god. Some... very slight things that he wasn't 100% on board with, and that's what brought it down to a 9 out of 10. Not that... Not the massive amount of issues, not the, not the fact that over half of the main story is Radiant Fetch Quest fucking slop. Yeah. If Starfield's a including, 9, I feel what he calls 7 out of 10. Yeah, in, in, including the fucking um, insanity that you did that for your main quest line. You did proc gen on your main quest line. I could like, even forgive it, maybe, if it's like one or two quests, where it's like, okay, we need I, to I fill... I could forgive it if it was a, a No Man's Sky situation. That too, where... but what I'm trying to explain is, you need a little bit of filler so you're not rushing through the main story so fast. So it's like, okay, yeah, go, go kill a thing in a place to just draw this out a little bit more. But, like, yeah. only one or two quests like that, not half of the fucking main story. Yep. Or, as we found out, 95% of the main story. Which is insane. <clears throat> I need to uh, grab a couple super chats here. Or, not super chats, membership messages. Uh, four months from Happy Nihilist. Thank you. Hi, goat, horse, and reptile. Random question. Heard about the amazing digital circus new popular indie animation that I dare say was decently good. That's not a question, that's a statement. Um, yeah. I've watched it, it's decent, I like it, I hope to see more. Yeah, yeah I watched it as well, it is pretty <coughs> decent. It has some it has some good jokes in there, for sure. Like, uh, especially when they talk about how uh, Kingsley is, and uh, the other one are the most stable, and then it turns to Kingsley, and Kingsley's fucking G-Mod physics fa spazzing out. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, yeah. yeah, that's pretty fun. Kinger is definitely one of my Kinger. favorite characters. Kinger, there you go. Yeah. yeah. I like Kinger. I like um, when uh, the fucking little mutant creatures are taking away that one character's head. He's, he's just like, I got you! And then he puts his, hand, his floating hands on her, and the hands just go along with her head. He's like, oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. I love the fucking the startled <laughs> joke yes. that comes up twice. I love yeah, that. Yeah, where he forgets that he's with anyone else. He thinks he's there by himself. Yeah, and then, then he notices them, and he does a scream. And the second time they do the scream, and they cut it off. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "Oh, Dangle, you scar, you oh, Mangle, you startled me." And then they fall <laughs> down the hole, and <laughs> Dangle has like this whole fucking thing about like. <laughs> like what's going like she says like a full sentence and then he's just like pauses and then he starts he, to do the scream he, and then it cuts he turns and looks and then suddenly he's just like and then just cuts off yeah <laughs> um <clears throat> 16 month membership message from Bezin thank you Cree help Skinwalker in my basement won't shape sip <laughs> Won't shapeshift into my celeb crush anymore. What do? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Bez, Bez isn't getting that uh, skin walk <laughs> Yeah. Skin <-oosie. laughs> oh, God. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly decent. Uh, we'll have to see where they go with the story. I like the... Uh, I, I'm not going to lie. 
the the exit rooms. I don't know what a better better way to say it because if you say the back rooms, that's very specific now. Yeah. Um, but the the exit rooms very much reminded me of Stanley Parable really hard. Yeah, yeah. that's why I totally... got that vibe. But holy shit. Yeah, that's what I was saying to Cree when I watched it with him. Uh, was that uh, that scene in particular felt very like Stanley Parable esque? <laughs> Cree, what the heck did you just say? No, chat broke its vocabulary. <laughs> I, I also realized why I like that crying emote on YouTube so much. It reminds me of fucking um, Chopper, kind of. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Cloud Seeker, I've heard of that game. I'm not touching it with a fucking thousand foot pole. I'm good. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it either. I should stop listening to shit without headphones in my fucking dorms after this. I'm going to fucking die. Uh oh. <laughs> Everybody just immediately snaps their head to look at you. What's a skinussy? <laughs> <laughs> Me walking into the woods about to get skin wussy, I'm about to be disemboweled. <laughs> 20 ARS from Draguo Dot. Thank you. Have you seen Monkey Wrench by Zeurel? No, I haven't heard of it. I haven't either. I remember when I drew Owl Cree doing the chopper stream and Cree didn't know what it was. Yeah, I've come a long way. Not really. Mm. So is this another Magnum Copus? It might be. We'll, we'll see when we get more into this video. We're only a minute and 30 in. With this video, I'm going to be trying to dispel or clarify some of the negativity surrounding the game. I'm planning oh. on making this Oh, please. You, I want to see your evidence. You have like, your work cut out for you, my friend. Yeah, and plus, we gotta see, because remember, he's going... I guarantee you, he's going to pick the easy ones to dispel, right? Yeah. He's not going to pick any of the super hard ones to, to get rid of. Like, why is this a space exploration game that doesn't have any space exploration? Why is there no, why is there no exploration in this game? And literally, every single planet, <laughs> no matter how far you go has civilization that has been built on it. Don't you love so being an explorer in a world there. where everything's been explored? Yeah. Like, that's that really undermines everything, and the, I need 15 fucking load screens to go from one planet to another. That is just, <laughs> just absurd. Where I talk about all the common bad points I've heard getting brought up, discuss how valid they are, all of them. and then oh, once God. I'm done with this video, I plan on posting more positive focus videos going forward. I want to be someone whose channel you go to for a good time, making content that you enjoy, not harping on about how bad things are. Oh, toxic positivity, there it is! <laughs> yeah, God, this guy is oh, coping he's... so hard. It's it's insane. <laughs> it's just no, no. Everything must it's... be positive. I the don't, things I like the... cannot be criticized. It, it, it's it's not like I want to be a channel about integrity and having actual like objective reasons for my beliefs and what I think on different media and everything. No, no, no. It's it's a I'm going to be the happy one that tells you the comforting why. See, that's the thing, too, is I don't, I, I don't even mind if people focus on being positive if they're if not... If it's merited. Yeah, if it's merited. And, like, like I only want to focus on the positive type thing where it's like, okay, I'm not e this game sucks, people hate it, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm going to go play something people yeah. do like instead. I don't have a problem with that. Look, not like, everyone... Like the channel was, like, the good vibes or something like that. So then you, you play Starfield, you realize it's shit, so you don't make a Starfield video, and instead you make a Marwind video, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think that that's more... I think that's what you were getting at, right, Cree? Pretty much, you know, yeah. 
And you could even talk about it for a moment and be like, I, I wanted to do that, but the video wasn't coming out. Like, well, it, I was getting really negative, so we're not going to do that video today. Yeah. Instead, we're going to talk about... Pretty much anything that isn't, well, just pretend it's what you wanted and see how uh, you feel. It's yeah. like, wh what? I still can't believe that's an actual thing someone said. <laughs> YouTube is the catalyst for the dictionary having over a thousand entries for the definition of moron. <laughs> yeah. Um, I had to endure Cree streaming Shortfield for, what, 30 hours and had to play it myself? This better be some good arguments or I'm going to go postal from Tentacle Dude. In Minecraft, right? I like how, I like how Tentacle Dude says Minecraft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the mimes deserve their fate. We've been enough of that out there already. After I'm done with this video, I'll be doing a fun little let's Oh my god, I didn't realize how bad that weapon was. I just saw him reload that what? weapon and I about because like, there's more crap than myself. Of that out there Hold on. After I'm done with this video, I'll be doing a fun little let's play. What? Looks like this takes the entire barrel and everything away. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, the weapon. I didn't think the weapon design could get even wor any worse in Starfield. Then I saw that. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy I shit. I'm sorry, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> the weapon designs in this game. That one guy that we watched who did the, the Fallout gun video he yeah. did one on starfield oh my god it they are so much worse than you think <laughs> oh i they don't doubt so it so much worse than you think also, they are so bad bad company sarge i i don't think you should have showed this on screen for this video i know this poll is only two days old but you have 450 votes which is a third basically a third of the votes you got in your first poll you showed in the video not a good sign for retention of people like actually interacting with your polls. Mm -hmm. And also the fact that now we actually have the evidence of how your Let's Play series went and it was a disaster in terms of viewership for your channel. Yeah. Is the fight to pilot? Also, what are these options? They seem really fucking random. Fighter yeah. pilot. Okay. That, I guess, makes sense for a space game. Trader. Okay, fair, but him, you can't really do that in a fucking Bethesda game properly, you know? To be fair to him, there there's the read more option. You can see fighter pilot. He explains a little bit more, like, what each thing would yeah. do. Yeah. But like so, boxer. To be fair, there could be a thing that's there. I, I'd assume boxer melee focused, maybe joins the pirates or something. I barely muted in time for that sneeze. <laughs> Reloading a pistol by pulling the slide off and replacing it. Reloading a revolver <laughs> by swapping out the whole frame and keeping the cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen I have seen reload animations that do that voices where they take the entire upper half of the frame and the cylinder away and they put something new in place. Well, I saw but a joke. To be fair to those, those were those were intentional shit post ones, like the ones where a guy reloads a double barrel shotgun by opening it and then grabs a handful of shells and slaps <laughs> it against it. Yes, that one I love. I showed you that one. Um, there's another one I saw. And I don't know what game this is for, but the guy, I think he has a pistol, and he takes out the magazine, throws the pistol away, pulls out a new pistol, yes. and puts the same magazine into that. Yep, yep, I was just about to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, I really hate the one where the dude, like, pulls the magazine out, throws the pistol away, and Wait, you pulls out a that new one? pistol. <laughs> it's glorious! I, I it, it, hate... It's the, it's the most <laughs> triggering one, because it's... Again, these are these are intentional shitposty, like, one. My favorite one is when the guy goes to reload an assault rifle, 
and he pulls the magazine out, and he looks at the magazine, it's empty, and he looks at his rifle, it's empty, and then a third hand comes out of nowhere holding a new magazine. <laughs> it just jangles it in front of him, there, and grabs it. There's another one I saw of a guy, I think it was a double barrel shotgun as well, and he, you know, he breaks it open to pull the shells out, and the shells just keep going and going and going as he's pulling yeah, them out. Yeah, it's a so really like, long... <laughs> I love that one. And then the entire length of the shotgun barrel. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's another one of a uh, revolver reload animation where he takes the uh, the old casings out and then he just like doubles over. This is first person. He doubles over and throws up a bunch of bullets. He just starts picking them up off the ground and reloading. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, those are good. As the fighter pilot, I've also already started a live stream play for the game, and I'd also like to do some more builds and guides and other videos which you can actually enjoy watching. But first, which we... you can actually <laughs> enjoy watching, therefore meaning that this video is going to be bad and you won't enjoy watching it. Why would you say that? It, why, see, this is you... this is part of the mentality some people have that I really hate, where they perceive. Okay, I'm talking negatively about something, so you're not going to enjoy watching this. This is going to be a miserable experience, but this is something I have to talk about. When it's like, no, you could talk about negatively about things and have it be fucking entertaining. That's what the yeah. Plinket reviews are. That's what, um... That's what Mauler's review, <clears throat> his first reviews were. Especially about Outlast. Like, holy shit, his Outlast, re Mauler's Outlast reviews were fantastic. Yeah. And his newer videos are great too, like they're they're still entertaining to watch. It's sometimes it's just entertaining to watch a piece of shit get torn apart, even if there aren't any like joke after joke after joke like a Plinket video, you know? Mm. Yeah. Poisoning no, the well, more like that... it does feel like poisoning the well towards like an entire content of genre or entire genre of content that is yeah. talking negatively about things. I will say. Like, I still enjoyed that joke that Mahler did uh, when he was making fun of uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp for whatever, Quantumania. Mm -hmm. And he's like, and there's no way, you know, that I would ever stop a, a review mid-review <laughs> to then review and the speeches in Andor because that would break the flow of the video. So anyways, in Andor, the speeches... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. One of my all-time favorites, though, is from his uh, Multiverse of Madness video where he's talking about, like, uh, America Chavez and, like, why do you want to kill America, you fucking commies? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just so out of left field. It was fucking funny. And ER, ER is another fantastic example of, Dude. like, tearing down <laughs> shit, but having, but his, at least his, though, have lots of jokes in them. I wish... Are, I had. Really fucking good. I wish I had even a quarter of the fucking comedic genius that ER has. Holy shit! Mm -hmm. I still love his glass onion review <laughs> when he's like, when he, when he brings Ye on, and he's just fine, and he's like, okay, now, now we'll get back to it. It's the G and he's like, no. <laughs> yes, and the monetization <laughs> thing fucking gets Thanos snapped. <laughs> Uh, what's funny about that was that actually directly inspired a fan art that we got, um, which was me being ye, only I was talking about the CIA operations, and Green was <laughs> crying because his monetization was exploding before his eyes. Yeah, monetization was... always explodes on my streams. <laughs> yeah. Even the Minecraft uh, stream from last night got fucking demonetized. Um, yeah. Luckily, most of the gaming streams I do... I am able to get them monetized after a review, but, like, just by default, every stream ending with a yellow sign, it's like, god damn, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> need to gun and out of the way, so that I can say what needs to be said and move on, for my own sake more than anything else. Are you... my, my brother in Christ, why would you show that footage? That Chad, I don't want you paying. to pay attention to what just fucking happened on screen. And let's, let's talk about the amazing AI 
that is so revolutionary doesn't react to when its friend dies in front of it and when it gets shot multiple times. So that I can say what needs to be Why said. Why would you show this? Move on. For my own tunk, sake, tunk, more than anything tunk, else. Tunk, tunk. Well done. <laughs> well done, Jeez. you lemon. God, and having been playing Stalker a lot lately, like, God, you really notice this stuff after you've played Stalker. A you lot. notice it after you play any game that has reactivity whatsoever. You notice how bad Starfield's AI and reactivity are if you play the game Fear, for God's sakes. Yeah, that's fair. It... Oh, God, it's so bad. <laughs> I don't know what the hell they were thinking with this fucking... Like, Fallout 4's fucking AI isn't this bad, so why is this so shit? Yeah. It's so weird. Like, it, they, they took such a step back with this game, and I don't get why. Uh, Postal 2 offers more choice than Starfield. The shooting mechanics in AI are better, too. Unironically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I need to play that on stream at some point. There's a lot of games I want to play on stream, <laughs> especially now that I have the model. Um, yeah. Hold on, there's a comment here. Kretosis, game stream, are you talking about sending villagers to work camps? Yes. The, the nearby village will be plundered for villagers as soon as I can to make them work in Goat Switch. Yep. yep. Also, oh. <laughs> uh, I do agree. Gritter, Gritter says, five shots are an SMG. Bro plays on easy. Yep. <laughs> Even the enemy AI and Stalker reacts to watching their friends die. Oh my god, they do so much in that game with the AI. It is so good. Like, it's actually not that complicated, but the way that they have the enemies do certain things, it makes them feel like they're extremely like ad like advanced AI when they're not. They will actually sneak up on you. Like they will actually choose to not shoot you if they are behind you to a certain radius where they believe like, okay, they can't actually see me. They will sneak up behind you and shoot and shoot you only at point blank range. Yep. It is crazy how they will actually sneak up on you on purpose, and you can actually turn around and catch them doing it, and then once they realize that you've seen them, they will then open fire on you. I love that. The also, the fact that they times... they jiggle peek. <laughs> they love jiggle peeking. Oh my god, I cannot tell you how often I will see them just, like, snap out of a fucking, like, out of cover, take a shot, and immediately run back into cover to a different spot, and it's just like, oh my god, Will you stop? <laughs> or they'll just keep doing the fucking pop out, shoot, pop out, shoot, pop out, shoot, pop out, shoot, like really quick. And I'm like, oh my God, you are literally like a fucking, <laughs> like a Tarkov player. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> the number of times, if you, so if you, if you play uh, Stalker, Anomaly, uh, especially, or um, uh, Stalker Gamma, the number of times that you will be like sneaking up on an enemy position and be like, okay, Okay, here's the plan, what I'm gonna do. And then suddenly a big shotgun blast goes off directly in your fucking back, and then you hear Nanka, Chiki Briki, Nanka. Yeah. It's like fuck. I have had that happen so many times where I'm like looting. Where I think I've cleared the building. I'm like, okay, I don't see anybody, I don't hear anything, I think I got everybody. Let me start looting. And <laughs> I'll have my back turned. And uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll hear, like, at the last second a footstep or something, and I'll just get blasted in the back and lose half my health, and I'll turn around, and a dude literally snuck down the hallway. He could have shot me from all the way down the hallway, but no, he snuck all the way down the hallway, came into the room, and at the last second is when he shoots me in the fucking back because it'll do the most damage at that range. And I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> yep. Oh, not not so to good. mention the number of times, too, where enemies will play dead. Yes, the playing dead thing is oh. really cool because... Normal enemies, when they play dead, they'll they'll draw a pistol or a sidearm to try to shoot you. When certain mm -hmm. enemies play dead, aka Monolith, you walk up to them, and then you hear the chink. It's like, what's yeah. that sound? And then there's a massive explosion. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's so funny because like, I'll be in a firefight and I'll shoot one person because sometimes... Because the way that that game works, there is like bleeding mechanics for the enemies as well. And once you shoot somebody, they can fall and die a few seconds later from bleeding. And 
so sometimes I'm just like, okay, well, I nailed that guy with a sniper rifle and he dropped like two seconds later. I think I got him. And I'll walk up to him to like either loot the body or execute him. And uh, just, like just to make sure, like I'll put an extra bullet in them just to make sure that they're dead. And I'll get sometimes I'll get too close and they'll just like immediately like pop up and start shooting me with a pistol or something. I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. (laughs) And if it's monolith, oh, my God, I am super like I will not go near monolith until I have like double tapped them from a distance, because Mm -hmm. if you don't, you just walk up to them and you think they're dead and you'll just hear monolith and then they drop a fucking grenade at your feet <laughs> and oh my god fallout 4 unironically and it's because the reason why fallout 4's ai is more advanced than starfield is actually because starfield has more complex environments and the ai because the ai cannot handle that it cannot handle these things at all. Which is also why the AI will constantly see you through fucking walls and ceilings and shit like that in Starfield. Mm. Yep. Oh, that was the one where I did the because Kree saw me on my stream do that mission flawless stealth until we got outside and then two guys spotted me through multiple floors from above. And I was like, motherfucker. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Yes, I was. Um, The thing that annoys me about that section, too, is you do the whole stealth section, and then you get outside, it's just like, okay, stealth section over, guns blazing now. Because it's not even that you were detected when you got outside, it was literally just, no, we're done with that now. It's like, what the fuck was the point of the stealth section, then, if I'm just going to start shooting people? Yep. I hate that shit. I fucking hate when you're forced to do something and then it's like, well, you didn't actually have to do that because like, well, that you had to, but it doesn't mean anything because you immediately throw it away the second it's over and it's like, why'd you make me do it? Yeah, what was the point of doing that stealth section? It wasn't for the sake of pacifism because they throw you into a section where like, you just shoot people and sure, I guess you can try to sneak your way through there, but there's no more help, and enemies detect you super, super, super fucking easily to the point where it's, like, impossible to get through there. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. I'm still fucking salty over... Oh, hey, you set up a meeting? Oh, you're trying to sneak into my office, huh? No, I set up a meeting. No, motherfucker, I set up a meeting. Oh, man, that's another thing in in Starfield. If anybody says that there's actual choices in Starfield, you can call them a liar outright, because we know that's that's, uh, just absolutely false. There are no choices in Starfield. You think that you have options? The dialogue boxes make you think there are options, but it is literally situations of, but thou must, all the time. Even in situations where, like, I'm going to pull my gun out and shoot the, the thief in the head so we get the artifact for free. You try that... And you get yelled at, and you go back to the conversations as if you never tried that. It's shit like that. There is no choice. I should put that into review. I might uh, boot up Starfield after the stream and record footage of that. Yeah. This is why I rotated saves, too, so I'd have a save at pretty much every point in the main story. (laughs) There is choice in Starfield, though. You can choose to refund it, for example. I actually did... I, I didn't expect that if I canceled my uh, my Game Pass, I would get a refund from Microsoft, but I did. Ha! <laughs> nice. Go. Yeah. They gave um, me back my $11. Hey, I take you back your $11. Oh, thank you. There's something else I was going to say. What was it? What was it? Oh. The 
person in Constellation who dies in that one quest is like one of the very few things you could change in the entire game that means anything. Because most, most things are presented as choices, as Sech said, aren't really choices. When you confront the CEO and Neon who uh, impounded your ship because you bought a stolen artifact, you could spare him or kill him. Doesn't make a difference. Um... There's another part in the game I was thinking of where you can, where, like, you're presented with a choice and it doesn't matter. I forget what it is. This game, oh, right, it's, uh, the collector guy on the, uh, the skiff or whatever his fucking stupid ship is called. The, the, the scow or something. Yeah, the scow. Um, he's a collector of rare items. You can talk him into selling it to him or you can fucking beat the shit out of him. What does this change? Fucking nothing. But the one thing that does change based on your actions is which member of Constellation dies. And it's not even a proper choice because you don't know that you're causing a character to die beforehand. It's like, the choice that's presented, oh, the hunter is coming down here to the lodge? He's up at the eye right now. Which one do you go to fucking defend? It's like, okay. What the fuck does it matter? It sounds like he could travel here pretty much instantly. Which he does because he's there in a matter of seconds. So, yeah. what the fuck is even the point? So the god awful reveal where they they make the emissary be whoever the fuck you were closest with. That is so stupid. It doesn't work because they Not don't speak like the way the people. Not speak. just, not just whoever you were closest with, the one who fucking dies. Yes. Which is important Which is to know to be because... Which is supposed to be whoever you're closest with in that particular group. I hate that for the fact that, like... <sighs> of course it would be the person who dies. That's like the most obvious thing you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't see that coming beforehand, sure. But, when, when you're talking about, okay, we're gonna reveal a character... The player knows is actually the the starborn. Who are we going to make it be? Oh, let's make it the one who died. It's like wh what? Yeah. The one that came out of nowhere was definitely the hunter, who is, <laughs> is just the fucking space pope. It's like oh, that guy you were literally just introduced to the mission right before this. It's like Jesus Christ. We 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 had the. My community, and everyone I've seen so far who doesn't read the first line, they just look at his face to try to see who it is. They have the fucking, uh, I'm Star-Lord. Who? Moment. <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? Does the Space Pope have Undertale? I'm sure he does. God. Um... And the Space Pope is such a fucking nothing character in the first place. Dude, and then, and like, that, the dialogue like, options they give you with the hunter is like, but you're supposed to be a man of peace. It's like, but you don't know that. You don't know anything about him. Oh, That's God. So dumb. Dude, and I, I have people, like, I, I remember how people thought we were shitposting when we talked about how stupid it was that he came up with the location of the pilgrims base. Dude. And it's like, no, you don't understand. We are underselling how fucking, like, convenient his his discovery of that position is. Especially when you take how he gets the system name, where it's like, oh, it's two halves of, uh, these Infinite two words. Addendum or whatever. Yeah, it's like, you could do that with fucking any word, though. Like, you could take the first yeah. half and last half of two random words and make a new word and be like, oh, that's a thing! Happy Pilgrim. Hmm. Well, there. Let's see. Uh, it's probably if we just take it apart. Hmm. Hmm. There's nothing with with P. Graham. No. 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 So it'll be Hap Pill. Hap Pill is the name. And it's like, what? How? <laughs> how the fuck did you get that? It's the Indum system. How? Yeah, it's just a total ass pull, and like. 
this is the difference between good or bad writing, because he was always going to come to the conclusion that it was the Indom system, but you can yeah. have, like, good writing to build up to the point where the character discovers that in a way that feels natural. It feels like the character actually did research and made a discovery, as opposed to, huh, there's two words here. What if I take one half of one and one half of the... Oh my god, that's the name of a system. That's where you must go. There's nothing that starts with this. Let's look at the second word. Dumb. <laughs> I feel pretty dumb right now. <laughs> that's, actually, that's actually a joke he says, by the way. It is. Oh. It is, it is incredibly painful how awful the writing and ev just everything in Starfield is. It is, in it's, it's one of those things that it is incredible. Like, Starfield is a monument to bad games. Yeah. I am a monument to all of your sins. <laughs> I've decided to view towards the game into two different sections. Valid and invalid. Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> this is gonna oh. be interesting because no, when I we get can't wait for this. when we get to the invalid section, it's gonna be like he says the thing, it's like how the fuck is that invalid? Yeah, I, I just cannot wait. I can't wait to see the valid ones, because the valid ones are gonna be the most piss water <laughs> ones out there, right? Yeah. It's gonna be to like, a... it's gonna be shit like what he mentioned in his review, where it's like, you know, a lot of the spacesuits they look very samey. It's like, yeah, that's a valid criticism of the game. Yeah, exactly. That's like, and it's gonna be one of those. I gave you that. It's like, oh, thank you, fucking divine arbiter. <laughs> <laughs> this argument is made by racists, therefore invalid. Oh no. The number of times that's been used these days is, did, is insane. Hold on, so. did he say abuse towards the game? I... I don't know. I'm actually gonna rewind because I'm curious now. Okay. For my own sake, more than anything else, I've decided to split the negative views towards the game into two different sections. Negative views towards the game, not yeah. negative abuse. Valid and invalid. Essentially, do I think this is something you should actually consider, or is just something that's being talked about to be negative for negativity's sake? And oh boy! The vaguest of vague fucking rule sets. And you know I, you can I, apply that to fucking any criticism, where it's like, oh, you're just yeah, being negative for negativity's sake, like... That, that I think is valid. Like, he's, he's already like, quantified it as, like, his subjective view of if I believe it. Like, oh, yeah, God. and you know he's not going to back it up with any kind of actual evidence or argument that disproves the, the thing. He's just going to say, well, this is very negative and would be very hard to disprove, so therefore it's invalid. Yeah. What's that? You drink water? You know who else drank water? Benito Mussolini. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. God, this God, is going to be, be so shit. I can already tell how <laughs> yeah, awful this gonna is going to be. This is going to be a disaster. <laughs> this this argument is really dumb because this never happens in the game. And it's like, cue the fucking footage of like, <laughs> just all the evidence proving that that argument is 100% valid. Yeah. And he's just going to either outright lie or ignore all of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, like, I can't wait to see how this is going to break down. Oh, sorry, Herald of Truth McDipshit. I'm glad your opinion is a very gospel when it comes to Starfield. Yeah. <laughs> My source is that I made it the fuck up! <laughs> and let's the points as they have the most value. First is going to be the confusion around certain mechanics and the overall learning curve. While plenty of things will be familiar to those of us who have played Bethesda games before, there are new things going on with this game that take time to be learned and understood. So I feel bad. the big two here are spaceships and outposts. With spaceships, there's a few different factors. First is the actual flying around itself, which does get tutorialized towards the start of the game. This not very well. Basics. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say not like, very well. It, uh, it, a lot of things were left unclear to me. Yeah, it's incredibly bad tutorialization of the spaceship mechanics. Not to mention all of this is a complete fucking lie. 
It's literally, it's literally the Futurama gag where your ship isn't actually moving. The whole rest <laughs> of the world is moving around you. It's very fucking disorienting. Yeah. But when you realize that, like, you're not actually getting closer to any of the planets, because when you do, <laughs> you warp through a JPEG. <laughs> <laughs> And that's only after you travel for seven fucking hours. <laughs> oh my god. I need to steal more of my girlfriend's Jack Daniels. This is going to hurt too much to listen to. Right, here you go. <laughs> I mean, quite a few hours of just flying around and having space battles to really get used to flight. But now, I love it. It's great to be able to blast apart other ships, dodge between asteroids, and explore the vastness of the universe. You can't, can't do those things! What are you talking about? Okay, you can you can dodge between the asteroids fair, you can fight other ships fair. Explore the vastness of the universe? No, you can't. You can't you travel can't. in space. It's literally loading the screens into like pre <laughs> like procedurally generated things. This Holy game shit, man. does not have a concept of what fucking space is. You're thrown into a fucking zero-g skybox with a ship to fly around in, with some props, some ships, and a JPEG of a planet. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's this is really, really bad. This is one of the biggest downsides to Starfield, is it's a space exploration game where you can't explore space. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't think people understand how shit this is that you can't actually fly to other planets or even land on the planet that you're currently orbiting by just flying to it. People were bitching about this exact thing all the way back when... Um... When Starfield was first revealed. No, no, no. Uh, shit, I don't play the game now. I've already forgotten. Destiny. When Destiny first came out and oh, they had like yeah. the whole the orbiting thing there. People bitched about the fact that you couldn't fly down to the planet all the way back then. And it's like, if that was something that should have been done all the way back then, what the fuck is Starfield's excuse? Well, even in No Man's Sky at its worst, Deus Vault had seamless travel between surface and space. Exactly. It's like, it's something that was already done. It can be done. And they just chose not to do it because they're lazy. Yep. Exactly. That's what that's what I was saying, Gritter. No Man's Sky did that even at its disaster release. Yep. But yeah, uh, like this is another thing. It's like, okay, I want you to go without opening a menu ever. I want you to go fly to another planet. Bad company, Sarge. Or I want you to land anywhere on the planet and then go around the entire planet. I don't care how long it takes. Walk around the entire planet. I want you to do either of those two things. I have a big section in the Starfield review I'm working on that uh, talks about that pretty extensively where this game doesn't have a concept of what a planet is. A planet to this game is a set of parameters that modifies the square of ground you land on. Where it's like, yep. okay, this is a uh, forest planet, so put trees there. This is an ice planet. Actually, I don't even know if there are ice planets in this game. I don't think I've seen any. Um, this is I, a... I believe I was on one. Okay, this is a nice planet, so there's ice here. This is a desert planet, so put desert there. It's like, okay. But it's not an actual planet. It's a chunk of... Yep. See, this is a problem with the system, too, is... Planets are finite things. Given enough time and resource, I have this written into my script. Given enough time and resource, you can explore the entire surface of a planet. If you yeah. were made fucking immortal, and you didn't have to worry about food or water, and you could just hover across the ocean, and, and like you couldn't ever get injured, you can explore the entire surface of Earth probably with relative ease. Like, if we give you levitation so you don't have to worry about climbing, you could climb every mountain, you could cross every ocean, every desert. You can explore the entire surface of planet Earth with those obvious insane powers. 
Yep. You can't ever do something like that in Starfield because planets do not fucking exist. Yeah, they're literally a 10 kilometer like, by 10 I kilometer box. I actually have to I actually have to give credit to fucking Starbound of all things here, because when you land on a planet, you can walk all the way around in a loop to your landing point without stop- well, you you have to cross obstacles, of course, but there's no loading screens, you, you land on a planet. I have to give credit to fucking Starbound! Starbound! Yeah. Also, you have the problem of Starfield- <laughs> Does it even save the fucking areas you visit? Once you visit a certain number, they reset I, and yeah. create new and, and areas that you've already been. So you can never fully explore a planet. Exactly. And, then, and that's part of the point I was building up towards about planets having a finite space. Due to the system working this way, every single planet has infinite surface space. Mm. Sorry for interrupting you there, Peg. What were you saying? No, it's fine. Uh... And then you have the problem of, and again, this is part of the cope with Starfield. Oh, it's supposed to be boring, but you go to a lot of these Procgen areas, and what, at like half the time, what is there to explore? Oh, there's a silo off in the distance. Let me spend ten minutes walking to this fucking thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's some sort of old, like, silo that somebody built here. Okay, there's nothing here to do. There's nothing here to gain. There's no story here. All right, I guess I'll 10-minute walk back to my ship so I can load into a new area that, well, maybe this time there'll be a fucking bandit camp for some reason here, and I can just shoot all them and take their loot and leave because that's all you could fucking do. And it's like, this is shit. This is fucking shit. This isn't exploration. This is literally just... It's it's basically a walking simulator occasionally broken up by, oh, look, Fallout 4 Raiders on a, a, in space. Go fight them. Even, even worse than that is that even if you try to get away from everything, the number of times you will go to a planet in the furthest reaches of space and suddenly there's four fucking starships flying over you and two of them <laughs> fucking <laughs> land nearby. It's like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. You just can't get away from these fucking... Um, back to the point of planets having infinite surface space... What is even the fucking point of having multiple planets if there's infinite surface space on a single planet? You know? Yeah, there's because, none. Because you could just build that single planet to have all the biomes of the other thousand planets, even though most yeah. of those planets have similar biomes to each other. So, like, what is even the point of having a thousand yeah. planets? Yeah. Um, it's and, and with this for marketing PR fluff. That's yeah, it. exactly. Because with the system, you could have had 100 planets that generate like this. You could have had fucking 700 quadrillion planets that generate exactly like this, and they'll all be the same as they are in game now. The difference is how many are actually there, which is pointless at that point. Yep. Um. Fuck, there's another thing I was wanting to say related to the whole exploration thing. That wasn't even it. Was it it? No. Fuck, I forgot it. Yes, chat, the cat is meowing. <laughs> she does that a lot. She's doing it more and more. Do you have a main coon, Cree? I like the cat. No, I don't. I don't know what the cat breed is called, but she's that one that's, like, black, white, and orange. Uh, no, that's not a calico, because, well, how much black? I've, I've never measured. Well, it, it, is it like she's, like, mostly black with, like, a little bit of color sprinkled in, or is it, like, very evenly? It's fairly even. Fairly even? Oh, she might be a calico. Old and going deaf, perhaps? She is old. She is really old. She's, um... Fuck, she's probably over 20 now. Yeah. I don't know if she's going deaf, though, because... I think she could be. Cats do tend to get louder when they, when they go deaf. Hmm. 
because they can't obviously hear the volume that they're working with. But she still seems to respond normally when, like, people talk to her, so... Mm, I don't know. Fair enough. Anyways, yeah, space exploration in this game is fucking shit on numerous levels. The cat is more interesting than the video. She really is. <laughs> ...work really well, but they do require practice to actually enjoy. And I'd say it's a very similar thing with the shipbuilding process. This is one I'm still getting to grips with myself, but the more time I've spent in the shipbuilder, the easier it's become to use. Unlike Flight, though, there's less of a tutorial here, so you do have to figure some things out for yourself. You have to figure a lot of things out for yourself. Oh yeah, the, the shipbuilding... The shipbuilding is absolutely dog shit. It is so bad. Nobody likes this system. Well, In fact, people who that. like this game, I have seen, just absolutely tear this shipbuilding thing apart. It is so bad. It's how, super fucking uh, janky. It is so jank. It makes no sense. It is super, super fucking just inconvenience. It's inconvenience incarnate how annoying it is to do anything with this. You can't even preview like half the shit without literally buying it, installing it, and then going to your actual ship in game to see the changes. You can't yep. even see the changes you're making in the screen. It's that bad. Patrick's secret box is the best ship in the game. The oh. box ships are pretty fucking funny that the AI is so bad. It just can't. The AI can't target specific systems. They just shoot center mass. It's like, oh. Uh, yep. Okay. Such, um, do you have a cat? No, my cat passed away a couple months ago. Such, I have a question. Yep. Since you've played it more than I have, in Baldur's Gate 3... Can enemies intelligently target... Um, I guess there isn't really body part targeting like Fallout, but can enemies intelligently target like certain members of the party that are going to be more dangerous or like a healer or whatever? Yes. They can do even more than that. They can set up multi-stage combos to fuck a, a player over. Oh. Like, infamous examples are... Uh, you, you you'll you'll be fighting on like a bridge, right? Okay. With a bunch of other people. And it's like, okay, you know, bridge fights. Nice. Um and you think, oh hey, I've got this clever idea. I'm gonna go have my barbarian run up, grab somebody, and throw them off the bridge and kill them. It's like, yeah. So you do that, you run up, you grab the person and throw them off the bridge, you're like, yeah, the AI then walks over, trips your ass, you now have a disadvantage, and then pushes you off the bridge and you die. And you're like I don't know, or man. even it, better, it seem, we'll it throw seems a grenade to, me... to stun everybody, and it... then throw everybody together, we'll, like, shove everybody into each other, and then we'll get out of the way and have their mage casters fire AoE spells to hit everybody. I don't know, Such. I think the game would be greatly improved if the enemies just mindlessly ran in and just did basic attacks against all of your party members. Yeah. So that's a ton of strategy you need to play Baldur's Gate 3? Not necessarily. Depends on what difficulty you're playing on. But you can think outside of the box pretty significantly in Baldur's Gate 3. And apparently the AI can too, to a degree. Yes, the AI does it quite a lot. Like, there's just no excuse for this for Starfield where... Oh yeah, uh, our enemies just shoot center mass. They don't try to target systems that would actually be useful to target in a space battle. Yeah. Kind of like how enemies in... Skyrim and Fallout 4 just, again, shoot you, rather than, like, make any specific targeted attacks. Or use yep. intelligent AI of any kind to, like, flank you, or throw grenades to get you out of cover, or anything of the sort. Like, there are things that y will happen in Baldur's Gate 3 that you think will be a fuck-up, and then it'll get to that thing's turn, and you realize, to your horror, that that was actually a plan all along. Like, for example, uh, there are certain enemies that when they get caught on fire, they get different mechanics. And, you know, you won't be aware of it. 
uh, unless you know the fight ahead of time, you know that this is what's, what has been kind of tweaked with the tactician difficulty especially. But you'll have a moment where your character is next to uh, um, a water barrel, and the enemy is next to a uh, big old explosive barrel, right? And then you'll suddenly see the enemy, an enemy archer will fire a fire arrow at the explosive barrel that then suddenly knocks their teammate over towards you and it did damage to them. It also hurt you a little bit with the AoE cone of it, but it knocked their teammate specifically close to you. And then it gets to that teammate's turn. They smash the water barrel and then you see them drop like a fucking electrical charge and zap your ass. Now you're stunned. It's like, fuck it. And they could only do that because they got blown closer to you so they could get to the water barrel. Yeah. There's, um, there's no excuse for modern Bethesda games to be as bad as they are. And by modern, I mean as far back as Fallout 3, which, okay, isn't super modern compared to 2023. They could have done better than what they did back then. They could have done better than what they did in Skyrim. They could have done better in Fallout 4 and Starfield. And they don't. It's just constantly the laziest shit from them. The, like, most bare minimum to push the game out the door and fucking sell it. Yeah. I'm so fucking sick of it. Yeah. Admiral throw it down. I didn't say that was going to be all the time. I said you'd be shocked at how many times something looks like an AI fuck up and then turns out it was a plan all along. I didn't say every single one of them. God, what is it with people and fucking comprehension? And also the the double gif Yankee dash thing. The double dash thing in general has been patched. They figured out there was an AI problem where the AI was trying to create a plan to get to a party member that was considered unreachable. So the the AI would accidentally loop back to doing dash to try to get to said party member. But again, it's because the AI was trying to put a plan together to try and combo your ass in some other way. And that's what would cause it to do a feedback loop and it would just do double dash instead. That has been patched now in the new patch. Ever need to do manual shipbuilding if you don't want to? as you can just buy new ships, capture them, have them as rewards for some missions, or even use the upgrade option as a more straightforward shipbuilder tool. Shipbuilding is one of the coolest things in the game, but it does take time to get to grips with it, which can be frustrating. I was gonna say I disagree, but I think he might be right, because everything else is so bad in Starfield that the idea of designing your own ship actually is... like... Probably so, the coolest thing of the game. You're so exceptionally limited on what you can do, though. You are. And I call, again, I called this shit before that this wasn't going to be the shipbuilder people thought it was going to be. I told people it was going to be Snap Apart. Yeah. And everyone was like, no, it's not. And I'm like, no, no, this is not going to be fucking Space Engineers where you can literally rebuild the entire uh, Terok Nor from Deep Space Nine. No, that's not going to fucking happen. Bethesda fans describing soggy bread with ketchup as a good meal? It has that Bethesda charm. Yeah. <laughs> God, it just reminds me of... Of, uh... Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon and its animation. That's one of the most, like, incredible animations out there. To the point where every single video I've ever seen that talks about Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon will show that animation including the shit posty videos and they'll usually have like god damn <laughs> <laughs> and it's just him eating a piece of bread but it is so well animated and comes apart like bread like a breadstick actually would it is one of those like even the minute details of the crumbs and everything it's like what the fuck somebody like that was somebody's magnum opus was that bread eating animation holy shit <laughs> And it's just so funny to see even the shitposting videos suddenly slow down and they zoom in on the bread eating and they'll just have like, go back to the, the guard watching him eat bread and just put my god on the screen. <laughs> I 
Yes, the shipbuilder also will regularly fail to recognize viable builds and <laughs> won't even tell you what's wrong most of the times with your build. Yeah, it gives generic uh, warning messages such as reactor class, not whatever. It's like, the fuck does that mean? Yeah. talk about outposts and this is the one which I'm still in the early stages of understanding and I'm not God. enjoying all that much. Outposts are difficult to set up effectively. You need to get a bunch of resources, work out what it is you need to build, find the right part of the right planet to build on and then play around with things till it actually works out. This is a system that I think will be easier to deal with over time. I've already got- Also, again this is a pet peeve of mine. Show the actual footage of outpost building, please. Don't show footage of the very beginning of the game in the tutorial. Please. Yeah. Like, he just showed the shipbuilding system, kind of. He didn't really show himself putting together a ship, I don't think. No, he just kind of showcased circling around ships he'd already put together. Cause it, probably because he didn't want to show how janky and awful the snap-together system is, how much yeah. it breaks. Because you, you can't show that system off and make it look good with how fucked it is. Especially if you're taking an existing ship. Well, actually, I think most ships, most shipbuilding, you're taking an existing ship. Um, I don't think you could start one from scratch. Point is, like, the fact that you have to, like, take all the parts off of the ship, not all the parts, but many of the parts off the ship to try and, like, snap everything you want to add into place... And, like, just reconfigure the entire thing. It's completely fucked. It's yeah. literally... Also... Go ahead. Uh, also, notice how he's not... Like, these are supposed to be the valid criticisms, the ones that he deems worthy of actually being considered by me. And yet, <laughs> he's, like, very fucking... Like, even the ones that are valid, he's being, like... Oh, it's bad. It's not that bad, though. I'm not going to actually show any of the problems with it. Like, I'll just well, also... vaguely say... Go ahead. He's like, I'll just vaguely say, like, some of the issues, and then not go into the deeper parts of the issues and all the stuff that you can't do. And it, it, the actual complaints people have, he's not stating. It's not yeah. just that, but he's also explaining away the Christmas. These are the valid ones, except they can be explained away. So yeah, they wouldn't exactly. Be valid. They'd be invalid. Because if you have evidence that that directly contradicts it, then it's no longer a valid criticism of the game. <laughs> like he's showing how biased he is, even in this stuff where he's supposed to be conceding to arguments of criticism, and he's like, "Well, yeah, these are valid, but I could just explain them away. They're not really valid." Yeah. It's like, wow, you can't even concede the smallest things in a game that has just numerous, just tons and tons of problems. You can't even fucking concede to the few small ones that you think are valid. That's awful. Yep. Got every resource I see to pre-planning and tagging the elements I actually require, gathering them, and then returning. Outposts are a real process, and while I have seen some people genuinely enjoying them, I do feel like I've seen far more people just getting frustrated. My advice here is to wait on outposts. They aren't needed for 99% of the game. They're they aren't needed ever! What do you mean they aren't needed for 99% well, of the game? Well, yeah. you might be talking about outside the main story, I don't know. I will give the benefit of the doubt on that. I've only played the main story so far. I remember what I wanted to talk about for the exploration thing earlier. Okay. Um, I did exploration off stream, and uh, to the point both of you made, um, I found a lot of fucking nothing. I found map markers that were like, oh hey, there's a thing over here, and it doesn't tell you what it is until you get there and discover it. It's like, hey yeah, it's this uh, biological anomaly, it's a gravity anomaly, or whatever. Um, I saw, similar to what Peg had said, a silo in the distance. I ran over there. Yeah, it was a silo in the distance. There's an outpost thing I saw. I ran over there. There's no one there. It was just a tower with some stuff in it, I guess. There's a, a few hundred credits. Not re really anything of any value. Yeah. 
great exploration. Ten out of ten. Yeah, like this is a problem I've been seeing with people who. Well, I don't know if General Sam likes it now, but when he did his video, <laughs> he was enjoying it, and even he was like, you know, it was fun exploring planets for like the first five times I did it, and then every time after that, it's like, I'm just like, nah, nah, I'm not gonna bother with that. Uh, what's that look like? A five minute walk to go look at what's likely a silo with nothing in it? Nah, I'm good. I'm just not gonna bother. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's pretty bad when you're. Fans are saying this shit. This isn't even the people who hate the game. This is the people who are saying, oh, I'm, I'm mostly enjoying the game. I just don't like the... I just don't do planet exploration because it's pointless. It's like, that's pretty bad. Yeah. I also think I mentioned this... Oh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I, I think I mentioned this on stream before. I found a, um, a fracking operation where there's no, like pressurized interior of the building like there's spaces in the walls that are just spaces in the walls to go inside and outside there's no glass there's no wall it's just an empty space there's uh cots on the ground sleeping bags uh there's even food items around but again no pressurized interior this is on a moon with no atmosphere how the fuck are you gonna eat are you gonna sleep in your spacesuit how are you gonna take a shit now, don't think about it, because Bethesda didn't. Mm-hmm. This here is to wait on outposts. They aren't needed for 99% of the game. They're very much an optional feature, so if you're really struggling with them and not having fun building them, take a break. Okay, so I take it back. They're very much an optional feature, then they're not needed for 100% of the game. Exactly. Yeah, so... <laughs> And also, it's supposed to be a side thing that you do for fun. If if it can't achieve that, then that's a problem. Like, I'm sorry, but that's just shit. That's not an argument you could just wave away like that of like, well, we'll just, just wait. We'll just fucking wait, forehead. Like, well, I'm sorry. I, it, I bought the game to do this. This is one of the things they advertised. I want to have fun doing it, and I can't because it's poorly. It's just done so poorly. Wait for what? Wait for what? Yeah, what company, am I, Sarge? What are we waiting yeah, for? Yeah, what am I supposed to wait for? It gets pretty bad when I could build stuff I actually enjoyed in Fallout 4, even though that game was shit. I could at least make things that I enjoyed. I could make outposts. I can't barely even do that in fucking Starfield. There's nothing to do. <laughs> wait for the mods, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's literally just, well, just wait for the mods, guys. Just wait for them to make a completely new game. God, why Why are you guys being so hard on Starfield? They're gonna, the modders will make a basically new game. It's like, well, yeah, that's the problem. They have to make a basically a completely new fucking game to enjoy the game. That's a problem, my guy. Yep. You know, if a lot of the modders for Bethesda games got together and got a unified goal for a game they wanted to make, they could probably make something fucking spectacular. Yeah. Yep. Something far better than what Bethesda could do. Gotta imagine if there was a game that came out, which who knows, they might do this with Starfield, where they just collectively decided, no, you know what, we're not going to make mods for this game. No, we're all just going <laughs> to collectively decide, no, we're not doing it for this game. We'll do it for the other games, but not this game. It, like, oh man, imagine how people would react to that, where it's like, yeah, no, you don't get mods to fix the game. You have to play the vanilla version forever. And it's like, oh boy, how much you want to bet nobody's going to play this in two years? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not going to say this game won't have any modders at all, but it feels like all interest has already died off. For the, I should say all interest. Most interest for this game has died off. I do not think this is going to have a big uh, modding community. Yeah, I'll I don't be sure. I think it'll close. have, yeah, I think it'll have a pretty small one. Like they'll they'll get updates from time to time, maybe like a mod a week, if that, and that'll probably be about it. Because I can at least to a degree understand Skyrim having the mod community it does. If a game is at least fun on a basic level for normies, that's like okay, yeah, it's probably going to do fairly well if it's like from a big company. Um. I can see why some people might have fun with Skyrim, where it's like, okay, 
you're thrown into a fantasy world, you have a sword you can hit things with, power fantasy, whatever, people love it. It's garbage, but people love it, okay. I can understand it having a mod community. This one, like, what the fuck is there to do in this game? Why are you doing anything in this game? I still don't know. I have completed the main story. I still don't know what the main driving force for finding the artifacts in this game is. What, you touched one and saw a vision, so now you have to go get the rest? I don't know. It's yeah. not really a compelling reason for me. Yeah, it feels like if they literally just did the fucking, well, you're supposed to be an explorer. You're supposed to be interested in this stuff by just by the fact of it existing. So go find it. That's your job. You like how it's you like, have a job at the start of the game working in a mine, and because you touched the artifact piece and had a tism, you're like, oh yeah, uh, you're changed now. You, there, there's no longer a place here for you at the mine. You've got a new future. And then you complete the game and become starbound or starborn, whatever. Yeah. And and you go to constellation, and they're just like, oh yeah, you're that person. You disappeared. We don't really care that much until you like tell them the the news. It's like, why do they suddenly not give a shit about me when they forced me to leave my job before? And yeah, I get it, it's a different universe, whatever. Bethesda doesn't really do, in my experience, like, big changes with the alternate universe thing. Yeah. You know? Mm hmm Not even, uh, just to mention that, when, when people talk about, like, the mods for it, the modding for this is going to be okay. So just go play Elite Dangerous. Okay, just go play Star Citizen. Okay, just go play Eve Online. Okay, just go play like, Starbound. It's literally <laughs> one of those things like you're you're just trying to make an inferior version of a game that already exists, a different game. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's one of those things like it isn't even something like oh well we can do this unique thing and that that it's like no like. Because of Starfield being a space exploration, huge air quotes in that, like, 50 fucking feet high, a space exploration RPG, also huge air quotes on that one. Like, the stuff you would add to that with modding, like, oh, actual planet exploration, things like that. Okay, well, you can just completely dangerous, which already does seamless transitions and everything better. Like... And it has an actual economy system and space trucking. And the first introduction to aliens in Elite Dangerous is genuinely terrifying. Whereas in Starfield, it's like, are they aliens? I, I guess. Maybe. Except no, they aren't. Yeah. Well, I mean, we know the truth that they aren't. They're just they're just people. But yeah, um, for anyone that doesn't know, in Elite Dangerous, when you're flying through space, you can take your, you can use your hyperspace uh, jump, and then, like, at random, you can be pulled out of hyperspace and have your entire ship shut down with systems trying to reboot, and you hear this like horrifying sound as your ship vibrates, and you see this like starfish jelly thing go flying past you and then turn and look at you slowly. And then it starts getting closer and closer to the cockpit, and it starts scanning you. That's your first introduction to an alien fucking race. Genuinely fucking terrifying. Jesus. Yeah, if you've never seen that, it is it is wild. Yeah, I might look that up after the stream. Yeah, I've seen it. I feel like any of the modding that's going to be done, it's, yeah, like you said, you know, it's just going to be inferior versions of other games. It's like, I... I I don't see how it's going to be anything other than, well, we're basically just going to remake Star, uh, Starfield. Basically just going to remake No Man's Sky, but worse. And it's like, then just play No Man's Sky. This is part of the thing with modding certain games, too, is you're working from a foundation that's going to inherently limit you to a degree. And um, no shade towards RPG Maker, because I know people like RPG Maker games, some of them. But, like, if you were to take an RPG Maker engine and try to make a massive, like, open-world 3D space exploration game with that, you're not going to be able to. Because it's not designed for that. There are inherent limitations with that engine. So, to do certain things with this, you're just... It, it's just 
the whole point you've already said. You're you're making an inferior version of something that already exists. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like especially when this game is already basically just an inferior version of Fallout Four, but in space. <laughs> which yeah. How the fuck do you make an inferior version of Fallout Four for one? Yeah. But they managed it because this is somehow worse in multiple regards than Fallout Four, which is saying a lot. But if you're going to go through that effort to try to improve Starfield by making mods, why don't you just make your own game at that point? Because for all the improvements you want to make to Starfield, you would literally just be better off making your own game from scratch. Get fucking Unity. Get uh, Godot or Godot or whatever it's called. Get even fucking Unreal if you want. I don't care. And make your own game in that you'll be a lot better off than using Starfield as a fucking base. For a mod. Mm hmm Yeah, it's... God, it's just all so tiresome. <laughs> Kato Genesis is currently working on a comprehensive outpost guide, and I've essentially stopped working on my own Outpost character until that's done, as I could do with a helping hand, and Kato makes great guides. <laughs> Once Kato has explained it to me, I'll have another crack at it, and things will go better, as I'll be more Oh my god! Involved. I have to wait for someone to make a video that actually explains how to do this thing before I can enjoy it. I'll just wait for him to do that. <laughs> Are you serious? This your is your defense. cope argument to disprove yeah. the fucking... Valid oh my, the valid criticisms, by the way. Valid criticisms, by the way, that he's just completely fucking like, well, someone will make a video explaining how this shit works eventually. Who fucking cares? Yep. Fuck off. God, you're such a piece of shit. <laughs> God, I hate him. I actually hate him. He's so <laughs> annoying. I don't understand why didn't they change engine. They have to know creation engine sucks. They don't know that. It's Bethesda. Bethesda are incompetent. They don't I, know their engine is terrible and needs to actually be overhauled. I'm not necessarily going to say that. I think they're used to the tools they have because they've been working with them for decades and they don't want to make the jump to a new system. Where it's the like, problem is, is that they haven't been updating their system as they go along. Like, it's Source. Okay. Source now compared to source when it first released for half-life 2 are vastly different yep you still have the same basic frameworks and everything but they are very different now no, because I know. valve has been upgrading and working on the engine because they have systems engineers that's what they do yeah oh my god i finally got a chance to look at source 2 and fiddle around with that oh my god oh i would be 100 percent using that over regular source and source filmmaker if you know if, if there was just more models currently for it but that that'll yep. happen eventually but my god it is so much better oh my god like the original sfm just feels like well it is it's abandoned wear but it, it is literally held together by rubber bands and shit you are duct taping everything trying to get that thing to work and then you you open source two and it's like Oh my god, it's fucking... It's a miracle! <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Right, Rex. So Rex says, to be fair, such Patrician commented on this. Having them change engines when they know so much of it seems unfeasible. No, that's fucking stupid. You are a major company. Changing engines is entirely fine. And also, There's they could just fix their fucking engine they do have, but they don't ever do that. Yeah. There's... Uh, companies that change game engines mid-development at times. I'm not buying yeah, the argument that... Some of those that, are bad. Yeah, some of them are bad. But the point I'm getting at is I'm not buying the excuse that Bethesda has worked in creation for 25 years so they can never change engines. It, I yeah. don't think it would be an insane leap for them to move to Unity or something, you know? Yeah, or Unreal, for God's sake. Yeah. I think it's just pure cope. They're just too lazy to do it. I kind of hate that any criticism of Starfield is lumped in a console wars bullshit. 
Is that still happening? Because I, I, I haven't seen much of that recently. I know back before it came out and just after it came out, there was a lot of console war shit. But I haven't seen much of that recently. I don't even know how you would do that, because it's like... Oh, it doesn't matter what console you're console on. It's... Thread. Hmm? No, you should have seen it. People are only mad at Starfield because they're Sony ponies. And, you yeah. know, they think Baldur's Gate I... 3 is going to compete with Starfield. Ha, huh, a bunch of losers and stuff like that. I, like, yeah, I got shit like that before release. In fact, that's why yep. my Twitter account is banned. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it's still going. I know the console war is still ongoing. I mean, for Starfield specifically. If I make a video saying Starfield is shit, is there still console war shit for that? Because that just seems uh, so weird to me that there would be at this point, because it's like... No, come on. It doesn't matter what system you play this game on. It's shit. It's going to be shit all around no matter what what you're playing it on. Are you really going to sit here and defend it on all oh, but my Xbox, all oh, but my PlayStation, all oh, but my PC? It doesn't fucking matter. Here, hang on though. Rex says, well, that comment is unfinished. The amount of effort to learn the tools of the new engine, a lot of programmers would just quit. Maybe they're really just lazy. What the fuck? No, that is an insane cope argument right there, Rex. Holy shit, they would not just fucking quit. You don't just leave a dream job like at Bethesda where they just phone everything in and you don't actually have to work. Like, holy shit. No. If anybody, if the programmers quit because they changed engine, it's because they were too talentless to work with any engine that had any complexity to begin with. They weren't worth being hired like to start with especially when you consider how That's bad insanity the creation engine is and it's like it's like it, it, imagining somebody quitting because oh well we updated our engine to something better and more easy to use and it's like oh i'm quitting because of that it's like why because we made your job fucking easier you fucking idiot yeah that's that's actually insane yeah yeah i i if you've ever worked with the creation engine, you know how much of a piece of shit that thing is. It is impossible to do a lot of stuff in it. Like, I, I know there are some people who are like wizards with it who can get shit to work with it, but my god, I have tried so many different things where it's like, this should work, what I'm doing, there's no reason it shouldn't work. It would work in almost any other engine, but it won't work in this one specifically because it's the creation engine. It is that bad. With all of stuff in the game, I've also heard people complain about the slow start, and there is some truth to this. The start um, of the game overall is a bit slow, as there's a couple of missions you have to. And it also doesn't make sense that you should you should lump that in there. The start doesn't make sense. Why is a xenobiologist working in a mine? Because why wouldn't a xenobiologist question. be working in a mine? It, it's like these, these are things you have to answer. Why would a uh, starship captain be working in a mine? Why why would a smuggler be working in a mine? Like, I'm sorry, but these need to actually be answered. Why this? Why you, as the person you are, given the background you could choose, are working in a fucking mine? Well, yeah, see, I can explain that sense. really easily. Such your background uh, title is just flavor text. It doesn't actually yes. mean anything. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't actually mean you have a background, I know. I, I know that's the actual answer. <laughs> but still. To do which the lodge in New Atlantis, but you're actually free to go off and do your own thing. This has been put in place as a sort of extended tutorial section, something which Constellation actually continues to do if you progress with their missions, which is helpful when you're new to the game, but does also slow things down. The more you've played of the game, the quicker you'll be able to get through the opening sections on replete playthroughs. Repeat play- what? What the fuck did you just say? Wind that back a bit, I do want to hear that again. But does also slow things down. The more you've played of the game, the quicker you'll be able to get through the opening sections on replete playthroughs. On replete? On replete playthroughs. Yeah, replete playthroughs. Pay playthroughs. What the fuck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, the biggest question. Maybe... 
Yeah, you should re-record that if you find errors like that in your video. I don't know how you didn't catch that. But, like, why the fuck would you do a replete pl uh, pay-through of this game? Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Five dollars from Stephen Wright. Thank you. The first thing I noticed when I watched y'all play this is just how boring everything looks. Gray. Gray everywhere. Nothing but gray. Yep. yep. Yeah. I don't like the way Starfield looks at all. It, It's so washed out and just... It's so boring looking. It looks like a it looks like a Schneider film turned into a game. They should actually add a section in about how boring a lot of the environments look cuz I didn't put that into the review. Is this the Magnum Copus guy? Yeah, it is. Yep. We're all doing first time. You'll know where to go, what to do, what to loot, and so on. But it'll always be a tad on the slow side, as you do have to tick some boxes before the game actually opens up. Next thing I want to talk about is price. If you can't justify the purchase of this game, then it is totally valid to not be playing it. Games- Thank you for- <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm sorry, what the fuck is this shit? Dude, the game <laughs> is broken. It's fucking empty. They did basically nothing and then want to charge 70 no, plus dollars for it. It's not worth that much. They're overpricing it. But Pagan, you don't understand. If you can't afford to play this game, that's okay. I I'm not, yeah, not going to... It's fine. I'm not going to throw you into Guantanamo Bay because you can't afford to play this game. Yeah, it's Wait. it's it's okay that they're just gonna nickel and dime you to death, and that you you should just pay out the ass for literally nothing. It's fine that you can't. <laughs> you just don't play the game. It's fine. I promise I won't have one of my many many assassins come to your house and kill you because of that. I promise. Okay, I'm giving you my word that I won't do it this time. <laughs> this time. Yeah, this time. Oh my god, I, <laughs> this is insane. This is actually insane. This is like going to a restaurant and ordering just like, I don't know, a pizza. Just ordering a pizza or something. And then they come with like a pepperoni and they throw it at you. And they're like, here you go, retard. That'll be, 80, <laughs> that'll be $87. <laughs> and it's just like, I'm sorry. What? Well, like, if, if you don't like it, don't eat it. It's fine. It's fine. You're the problem here. Okay criticizing us about our about how much we think you should pay for that you're the problem fuck you <laughs> i'm gonna read a super chat i want to talk about something very quickly that has come to mind so eight dollars from dialucon thank you i remember falling asleep six plus times trying to watch you play starfield good god the game is boring yeah it is boring i'm half tempted to read that section of the script to chat that i uh, read to you guys before the stream started because goddamn. Um, but something I'm noticing is the VTubing thing is starting to affect how I fucking move during a stream. Because <laughs> I don't have the model up right now, but I've been trying to avoid, like, waving my arm in front of my face. Because that fucks up the model when I'm, yeah, when I, I'm doing a game I, stream. I meant to tell you that that's probably going to happen because... <laughs> Like I got to thinking about that, and I was like, I was like, I wonder if I should tell him that. And it's like oh, I'm sure he knows, but <laughs> it's just funny. But yeah, you will because you have to basically play a character with your model, yeah, like with I've, your movements. I've not been it, leaning it, over as much. I've not been, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna ingrain yourself with that over time as you keep <laughs> doing it, where it's just no. gonna, that's just gonna become like a habit. Yeah. God, even more so. You, like I said, you should take that part where I actually fell asleep mid combat. <laughs> that was—I couldn't believe it happened because you'll—you—you you notice, like the build up to it. I notice more now. Like my aim gets really floopy, and I'm like having to work harder to drag myself onto target and stuff. And then suddenly I just conk out. How many times have I fallen asleep to this fucking game? Where ever since it was announced, and we've been covering videos about it, just like upcoming. <laughs> 
I have fallen asleep during them because they're so fucking boring. <laughs> I fell asleep yeah. during your guys' stream when you were playing it. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I am going to break out the script and read part of, uh, part of that section I read to you guys earlier, the part about falling asleep, because I'm more proud of this line than I should be. Um, yeah. Where Double. is it? Uh, unfortunately, what we got turned out to be a shallow, boring mess. In fact, this game is so mind-numbingly fucking boring that scripting and recording this video was a task and a half for me because the mere thought of this game was so goddamn fucking boring that even thinking the word Starfield has the power to invoke drowsiness, with it, drowsiness within me. Even as I write these words into this script and record them for this video, I want nothing more than get... <laughs> I want nothing more than to get into bed and go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> it's yeah, the best way so... to describe how fun this game is. Yeah, it is so unbelievably boring. It's... <sighs> like, I'm already a generally very tired person, but... <laughs> yeah. Something about Starfield just conks me right out <laughs> like if i have hey, to sit here and care. just watch fucking anything about starfield for too long i fall asleep to it yeah i i'm feeling more and more tired as the stream progresses starfield might actually be the best sleeping aid in the world you know keep in yeah. mind <laughs> i i stayed up i i could stay up for all the other streams most of the time hell I, that fucking minecraft stream the other day where we barely talked for like half of it I was able to stay up through that just fine, and that went on well into the night. That was yesterday. No problem. Yeah, I know. No problem <laughs> staying up for that. You said, yeah, but you said the other day. Well, technically, yesterday and was to, the other day. And I, I, to be fair, you were also playing another game, so. No, I stopped that. I, I was for, like, a little bit, but then I, I stopped because I got stuck, and I was like, ah, just whatever. And that was, like, four hours, three or four hours. <laughs> Where I stopped and we still kept going and I didn't fall asleep. But Starfield, oh no, nah, I sit down for that for more than an hour and it's like, okay, good night, guys. <laughs> Enjoy sleep ASMR for the next fucking 30, 40 minutes. I felt less deflated reading The Road than watching the Starfield stream. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh it tracks you by camera. I thought it used a wearable sensor halo or something. They wouldn't be able to track facial movements, though. Yeah, it needs to actually be able to see your eye movements and everything. B. Yeah. <sighs> oh, sorry. Fuck, talking about Starfield. Yep. And if you're not sure about one, then I recommend not purchasing at launch. Starfield will go on sale at some point. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck are you even addressing this? Oh, the game is too expensive for me. Oh yeah, that 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 is a valid criticism. It's like who the like, yeah. Oh god. And it's not that the game is too expensive for people because of their fucking money situation it's it's too expensive for what they're getting that's the problem you're paying a shit ton of money for basically nothing i could get games that are f a million times better than this for free stalker gamma is fucking free yeah i've played free games i've played games that cost less than five dollars that are immensely more enjoyable than starfield is yeah I played an indie horror game that was 10 bucks that is simultaneously the most terrifying game I've ever played in co-op and also the funniest fucking thing I've ever played in co-op. And uh, Cree and Pagan have now got to see Rubik's Raptor and crew go through Lethal Company as well and play that. It does and look it like is, a fun game. Yeah, it... it God, the, as you saw, the cre some of the creature designs in that are just absolutely, like, nope, nope fuel. Like the fucking jack-in-a-box on legs. Oh, God. But then death is so fast in that game, and just comes so quick, it you can't help but laugh your ass off about how it happened. <laughs> we got struck by lightning. We were right there. Yeah. <laughs> did, did we all just get struck by lightning? One lightning bolt. 
He is addressing none of the actual criticism of the game, and it's very telling he has no real uh, defense for this game at all. Oh, he's only talking about the valid criticisms against the game right now. Yeah, that's yeah. the worst part about this. This is the criticisms he considers valid, and here he is just hand-waving them away and trying to be like, oh, well, that's not actually problems. It's like, motherfucker, these are supposed to be the valid ones, the ones you're supposed to concede exist. And you're just being like, ah, but they don't really exist. It's, I can't wait to get to the invalid ones where he's literally just going to say, well, I disagree and I like this game. So therefore, invalid. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying this game isn't fun, but I can prove them wrong because I had fun with it. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be that <laughs> level of shit. They say the game is buggy and unoptimized, but I haven't had any bugs in this game at all. And I can prove it because... Oh, well, actually, maybe I should delete those uh, gameplay streams. Give me one minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In a couple of months or so, we'll see the first minor sale price of it. And in years to come, the price will drop noticeably, I'm sure. And if you want... You know what hasn't gone on sale? <laughs> Since it launched? <laughs> Actually, this is another good example. You know what hasn't gone on sale since it launched? Fucking Factorio. You know what it's done instead? The price has gotten more. Oh no! They they've increased the price of Cractorio. No! Remember when Terraria used to be like five bucks? Yeah. <laughs> there are just some games where because they are so good, instead of going on sale, they make them more expensive later on. <laughs> And look how quickly they went on sale too with Starfield, where it's like, oh yeah, fucking recoup losses, recoup losses, quick. Yeah. Wait, Starfield has gone on sale already. I've seen it on sale. Yeah. Oh my I don't god. Know, uh, not on Steam yet, though. I don't think. I, I remember when Deathloop came out. Um, it was only like a few <laughs> months later. It was on a fifty percent sale. It's like, oh god, that really didn't do well, did it? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like you know a game is not doing well when it goes on sale like very early after not, it comes out. Not just on sale, but on sale for that much. Because like, yeah. if a, if Baldur's Gate three has like a ten percent off sale by Christmas, it's like okay, yeah, fine, whatever. That, that's yeah. not. Yeah, that's more of a fair thing. But when you have like, oh hey, the game was released three to six months ago and it's fifty percent off. It's like oh yeah, they're trying to recoup losses. Now, mm -hmm. That game did not do well. Yep. Yep. Wasn't Fallout 76 on 75% discount after a few weeks? It was they were trying that. to give the game away for free. They were tying copies to new consoles being sold, so you, you had to take it. Yes. Yep. They were yep. duct taping fucking <laughs> Fallout 76 onto like new Xboxes as like like a tumor. Just on the side of the box. <laughs> Fucking yeah, they, you not. They were literally trying to just throw free copies at people. Like, please, please, just take it. Please, God, we'll do anything. Yeah. Like, my God, the amount of, of just the hilarious things of them <laughs> trying to shovel out Fallout 76 was funny as hell. <laughs> Whoa. Tumor 76 upon ye. Yep. <laughs> oh god what, <laughs> what a horrible thing to unleash on someone <laughs> just throws a copy of fucking well <laughs> throws a copy of throws a fucking empty cardboard box with Fallout 76 on it at somebody just whoa 76 upon you and it's just the fucking like disintegration <laughs> meme <laughs> ah! yes <laughs> I was gonna make that joke if you didn't. The, the, <laughs> the copy of the game, well, the box, because it's a paper disc with a code. The box touches you and you just disintegrate like a fucking uh, Star Trek phaser blast. Yeah, you just fade away and the, the fucking box just, like, it never even touches you. It just it got close enough to vaporize you. It just continues going. It's that dude from <laughs> Wrath of Khan who shoots himself because of the braid parasite. It's just, like, that horrible scream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that really high-pitched yell that fades off extremely quickly as they vanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <He's gone>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You throw a copy of 76 at someone, and on contact, they just fucking explode into a gore pile like in uh, the 3D <laughs> Fallout games, where it's just, like, cartoon <laughs> physics, where, like, the pieces go all over the place. Oh my god, it's like the fucking, um... <laughs> oh, what's the name of that anime? The The weird... Shit, they have that weird gun that when you shoot at people, it causes them to, like, explode from the inside. Fuck, what is that? I don't even know what that's called. It's like a it's like a thought crime anime where you literally get judged before you even commit like a crime, but because like they could basically tell. Oh, that's uh, that's like the Minority Report future crime nonsense. Yeah, but it's it's literally that, and they have these like enforcers that have these like crazy weird pistols that when they shoot you with it, like it just causes your cells to like exponentially grow all at once, and you just explode into a gore pile. Jesus. Uh. <laughs> that's not an anime pagan that's Australia <laughs> <laughs> most wholesome day in Detroit they <laughs> is it psychopath is that what it's called okay I'd imagine maybe in a couple of months or so we'll see the first minor sale price of it, and in years to come the price will drop noticeably, I'm sure. And if you want to test out the game now, but aren't sure you want to fully commit, then you can get a month of Game Pass at a much lower price than a full game would cost. It should provide you plenty of time to play the game, and if you don't end up liking it, then there's a bunch of other great games you can try out so that it doesn't feel like you've wasted your money. A few personal recommendations of my own would be Citizen Sleeper, Deathloop, and chained I was, was going to say, I'm surprised you didn't pick a Bethesda game that says fucking Deathloop, which is, I'm pretty sure, published by them. It is. It's from Arcane Studios, and it did horribly, too. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, save those $10 you do for pizza. I agree. Better usage. Here are some personal recommendations of mine if you don't like Starfield. You, you could play Redfall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, the fact that you like Starfield means I don't trust your recommendations for other games. Yeah, especially when we've seen the stuff he likes, or it's literally, he'd be like, <laughs> yeah, like you said, like, here's Redfall, oh, here's Fallout 76, or here's Deathloop, Ch take your pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. no, th can I choose to kill myself instead? That's that way more. Yeah. It's that <laughs> whole thing uh, that you quoted yesterday, Pagan. Your, uh, your boost uh, mean nothing to me. I see what makes you cheer. Yeah, <laughs> your booze mean nothing to me. <laughs> Echo, all of these are great games with a sci-fi edge to them. Chained Echoes in particular is one of my favorite games of all time. This is a Starfield video! Fantasy and sci-fi in such a beautiful way. Stop it! Uh, I love it so much that I bring it up any chance I get. It is that great. But as well as those few recommendations, there's whole series of games on Game Pass. From the Elder Scrolls and Fallout, to Mass Effect, Wolfenstein, and Yakuza. I think that Game Pass might be the safest way to dip- My god, this is a fucking Starfield video, stop it! Go back to Starfield, you idiot! Yeah, like, the, the price point isn't even something I feel is worth bringing up in a video like this, or like a review or analysis. Unless... You're literally saying this game isn't worth $60 or $70 or $80, however the fuck much it costs, whatever game you're covering. It's like, yeah, this game that's, uh, that I'm reviewing here, it's not worth the $30 they're asking for. You know? I, I don't think he under- I don't think he realizes what he's basically doing here either, where he's interrupting his Starfield video to be like, A show. Oh, but here's- Look at all these other games that you could be playing instead that are way better than Starfield. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, mmm, you understand that that actually doesn't help your argument and actually makes the game look worse because you're literally interrupting your video on the game to be like, well, here's a bunch of other games that are way better that you could play instead. And see if it's worth your money, because even if you end up not liking it, there's plenty of other games on there which you will enjoy playing. The next negative. You don't know that. It's just you literally don't know that. That's, I, a, that's not a statement you can make. 
I also just find it weird for this random Xbox Game Pass chilling. I wonder if he's actually paid by them. If he actually he gets be something. Because he's because, such a dick writer. Yeah, because that's a really random tangent to go on. Look how great Game Pass is. It's this thing where you only pay this much and you could play all these games on. And there's all these other series that you might enjoy too. It sounds like a fucking ad read. Yeah, I was going to say, that felt like an ad read. Without I actually wonder. being an ad read. <laughs> well, I don't have the video up anymore. I was going to see if there was a thing that had paid promotion on it anywhere. Yeah, because I was going to say, if he didn't say that it's paid promotion, then it probably was just him going off the cuff for some weird reason. Or he's because... stupid enough not to, you know, divulge. Yeah, if he's, if he's actually dumb enough to do that without actually saying that it was a paid sponsorship thing, then you could get in a lot of trouble for that. I've got it up. It doesn't look like he's got a thing saying he's paid. Mm. Mm. I wonder... See, it might not be that he's paid. It might be that he's desperate enough to become an official paid shill that he's just doing this stuff for free. <laughs> he does it for free. Um, in hopes that they'll pick up on him and like start paying him to do it. Yeah. Yeah, he wants in the club and he's not quite there, so he'll do anything to get there. Yeah, we we, we already talked about a voices. He does have the burn loot murder links. is that the game feels bland or boring. First off, let's acknowledge that this is very much an opinion. If you're finding the game bland or boring, then you're finding it bland or boring. Simple as that. In my opinion, the game isn't bland and boring at all, but I do think there's ways you can play which would make it like that. Oh, oh fuck boy. Off. You're just playing the yeah. game wrong, Forehead. Just don't yeah. play the main story. Just play the side content. Duh. Not just that, but he's pulling out the fucking opinion shield at the first available opportunity. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so what people do find uh, boring or bland can be very subjective, but there's things that are usually fairly easy to determine if like they're boring or not. Some people are genuinely interested in the way paint dries because of, like, they paint miniatures, for example, or they do art where it's, like, actually important to their hobby or job or whatever they're interested in, where, yeah, they'll take an interest in how the paint actually dries. But it's very easy to say that for most people, yeah, it's going to be fucking boring. If we, we look at this shot right here, you're on a gray planet with rocks, some resources here and there, I guess. Maybe a base, maybe a empty silo, maybe a spaceship that landed. There's not a whole lot here. It's pretty easy to determine that that's going to be fucking boring for most people. Yep. If I start up a new unity, a, a new unity project, and I put in a textureless plane that stretches off for miles in every direction, um. It's pretty easy to determine that's going to be boring for most people to explore with nothing there. Yeah. If I spawn in a rock every 25 to 30 meters, it just randomly spawn. Okay, that changes up the environment a little bit, but it doesn't really make it interesting to explore. It doesn't make it fun and whatever the opposite of bland is. Yeah, so... The problem, Bad Company Sarge, is is that this is what 99.9% .9 of the planets look like, just with color swaps. That literally every planet is essentially a palette swap. Oh, instead of gray and blackish rocks, we have yellow and reddish rocks now. Oh, aren't you excited? It's like, no. Saying these are blackish rocks are being is being generous because those are still gray they're different shades of gray yeah one's dark gray the other's light gray yep like sorry I'm, I just don't see how this environment we're showing right here how anyone can explore that and find it fun and not bland yeah 
And keep in mind, this is what 99.9% .9 of the planets look like. By Bethesda's own admission, this is what they look like. Just the colors are different. I wouldn't necessarily say 99.9, .9, but a vast majority of them do look like this. Well, I think that's I think that's the accurate breakdown. They said a thousand really? planets, and what was it, a hundred of them, maybe, were uh, uh, handcrafted. Well, see, it isn't even full planets that are handcrafted at that point. It's just like the two or three locations they put on each planet that would be handcrafted that they specifically yeah, yeah. put but I'm there. I'm not saying by their own admission, Bethesda said that this. At least yeah, 99% of the planets part, look like this. Part of what I'm arguing against the 99.9% .9 there is some planets are going to have trees and wildlife on them, which mixes it up a bit. Like, it's different enough that I wouldn't say it's the same as this. But, like... Yeah, but those you... could be in the 0.1% that aren't like this, because it's a thousand planets. You know what I'm getting at, though. I think there's more than 0.1% of planets that have trees on them. Well, let's just say there's 1%. Sure. I definitely explored, as part of what the game told me to do for the main story, more planets that looked like this than didn't. Yeah. Yeah, and every planet has a single biome that I've seen. I've, I've never seen a planet that has uh, two biomes, even. Yeah. Even Earth was a single biome planet now. Yeah, because it's dead and everything turned gray for some reason. Yeah, I get some bleaching, whatever. The point is the entire plant looks the same. Is a huge game with so many planets you can explore. You can spend hours upon hours upon hours just jumping from one planet to the next, wandering around the surface and scanning everything. You could spend hours upon thing. hours upon hours in creative mode on Minecraft flying through the environment and as you explore tree biome, plains biome, desert biome, ice biome, tree biome, plains biome. Yep. Like, and it has actually more visual variety than what Starfield does. Yeah, it does. It is... I know he's a Bethesda shill, but it's still insane that he doesn't seem to realize that, like, thousand planets and most of them look the same isn't a selling point. Yeah. And, and running around doing, like, the exploring of each planet, when each planet looks damn near the same as each other planet, it's just a color swap, and you're not actually... You don't get anything for actually exploring those worlds. Like, there's nothing of value to do there. Yeah, you can't even say that you're the first one to ever be there because there's, there's like all these like little things that show that there were people here once before. They're they're not really explorable things. They're just like little landmarks that tell you, "Hey, get fucked." And then you have the fucking people that literally land on the planet right next to you who shouldn't be there. If you find so much as a chair on a planet, that means someone's been there before you. Yeah. And in my exactly. experience, so, every single planet I've lived on had something to imply that people had been there before me. Yep. Uh, there's just no reason. There's nothing to... There's no reason to go exploring the planets because, one, it's just going to generate new areas for you every time you visit enough locations, set locations on that planet, they'll just reset and generate new ones where you've already been. So it's literally just an infinite void for you to just always explore the same planet, meaning you never really have to leave the planet. And you're not the first one to be there. You don't get anything good for it. There's no, like, amazing loot on any of these planets, really. There's just nothing here. There's just nothing to it. Yeah. I, I miss it. Did he say we're in the invalid section now? No. No. Okay, because at the start of this section, at this point, he said, oh, blind and boring is very subjective. But you know that's still, like, a very valid criticism, even if it can be very subjective, right? Yep. Because, um, even though it's hard to quantify exactly, when you have a lot of people saying something's boring, 
might not necessarily be true, but there might be something to it as well. I treat exploring the more empty planets and scanning them as a downtime activity. Something to do when I want a bit of a break and to just chill for a short while. What I do most of the time... You know what I do wait, wait. when I a want to break? A you know what I do when I want a bit of a break and to chill for a while? I play a video game. One that's usually entertaining in some way. What? And what are you taking a break from in Starfield? Like... The amazing uh, story. Honest question. The, yeah, the fantastic what? narrative. What are you actually taking a break from, Bad Company Sard? The combat is so boring, I fell asleep during it! I unironically had a lot more fun last night streaming Minecraft when I was, like, exploring a random cave and putting torches down so I can mine in there later without getting attacked than anything I did in fucking Starfield. <laughs> the voice will not stop says a break from the suicidal thought. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, is there any positive thing about Starfield? They have some quality of life. They do actually have some good quality of life stuff. Like, jumping up onto a ledge, and if you're just short, your character will grab it and climb up. That's actually really nice. Being able to sell directly from your ship's inventory. Again, that's really nice. But it's these small niceties in a sea of shit. Yeah. It's like fine. It's like having a 30 kilogram fucking bar of shit and there's a tiny little gold nugget inside it's like oh yeah. that's a lot of shit though yep that's one big pile of shit Starfield has some great missions with characters I enjoy talking to such as and revelations I don't always see coming such as hang on wait 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 to be fair let's see if he actually has <laughs> going I've mostly been following storylines and only occasionally taking breaks to go to an abandoned planet, work on my ship, or pick up a Radiant Quest or two. I'm playing this- You do realize that, like, most of the main storyline is Radiant Quests, right? I'm not going to elaborate on any of these points because I can't. Yeah. It's like, please name these quests. Please name these characters you enjoy talking to. And also you realize that most of the quest lines in- the actual main story of the game are Radiant Quests. Unironically. I kind of want to go through and count how many of them exactly are Radiant and how many aren't. Because, um, you've got the one tracking down the guy in the soul system. Uh, you've got the one with Sam Co. You've got, uh, Neon. You've got the Scow. You've got, um... The, the facility that was messing with the artifact and creates the time yeah, paradox thing. That's five. There's, uh, one more... There's the one where you meet the snake called this lady, but that's still a generic dungeon, but that is one that seems semi-handcrafted, I think. Yeah, that's the trying to figure out where the pilgrim went. No, that's not even the pilgrim one yet. Well, that was the snake lady. The that's snake lady prison. that's part of Constellation. Oh, and, no. And Dresia yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, she shoots those two snake cultists and she says, don't don't talk about what just happened. Yeah, and okay. there's the Space Pope quest. Yeah. So that's like seven. It's probably not even worth considering, hey, go up to the eye and do some repairs because it's not even like a real quest. Yeah, that was literally just to separate out so you had the really dumb choice to make. Okay, so that's like seven that I'm remembering. They're like handcrafted. How many artifacts, and I don't expect an exact number, but how many artifacts do you collect that are radiant? Because it's definitely more than fucking seven. Yeah. Sweat super fun. I have objectives, I have meaning behind what I'm doing, it- <laughs> What meaning? Like, the basic- the basic- I have objectives. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, that's a hard bar to pass. Hey, go do a thing is an objective, okay? But you have meaning? What meaning? Yeah, the what... ending actually makes everything you did pointless. Yeah, all those settlements you're building. 
All the guns you're collecting, the items, the money, ammo, companion ships. relationships, ships. You lose all of it. The only thing you keep are your skills. Ah, God, I still can't get over that. Like, the main gameplay loop of this game and, like, all of its side content seems completely at odds with resetting fucking everything. Hey, Cree. What? Check our chat. Somebody made something for you. Oh, no. <laughs> what is this dance? That's it's hilarious. What the fuck? That's what? <laughs> it's a Fortnite dance. Oh, it is? Yep. <laughs> Look, the only Fortnite dance I know is the default one, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Can I even get this on screen? Because Streamlabs has trouble with GIFs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's, know for sure. Yeah, oh. You do get. It's coming up, but it's a still frame. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, there may be a solution. Hold on. Eh. Eh. Oh, wait, hold on. When, uh, no, not that one. That one there. Eh. There we go. <laughs> I like how it's kind of rotating around, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright. Get this back into place. Actually, let me move it down just a bit. There we go, that looks a bit better, I think. <laughs> oh lord, he ballin'. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Obviously, once again, this is opinion based. If you decide for whatever reason that you don't like the characters, the story doesn't speak to you, or have some other reason that it doesn't click, then there's nothing I or anyone else can do to help there. Well, first of all, you are correct in that there's nothing you or anyone else can do to help. Um, yeah. But, like, what? issues with the story aren't necessarily opinion-based. Um, again, it feels like he's throwing up the opinion shield to make the, the bad criticisms go away. And by bad criticisms, I mean... You're saying mean things about the thing I like. Not yeah. bad criticisms as in inaccurate. Um, no, there's a lot of problems with this story. Like, first of all, go to cl a cave, collect thing, return. It's fucking boring as shit. I don't care how much fun you had with it. That is basically nothing. Like, I... I, I <sighs> Again, I can even understand how people can have fun with Skyrim. I don't understand how anyone could have fun with go collect thing in return, go collect thing in return, go collect thing in return, with a little more to it than that. Oh sure, maybe one of the bases has a, uh, or sorry, one of the artifacts has a, um, a pirate base on top of it. Okay, you're sh shooting generic enemies to get a thing or leaving. There's no narrative, there's no fucking story here being told. You're just collecting fucking items. At least when I collect materials in Minecraft, it's like, yeah, I'm collecting them so I can have resources to do the things I want to. Where here, it's just a collect thing. Keep collecting thing. Because you're yeah. supposed to collect thing. And again, like, you can find objective qualities in the story. Does the story ever contradict itself? Are there nitpicks in the story? And for anyone that doesn't know... We have an actual thing of what nitpick is. It's a legitimate criticism that doesn't actually affect the story, but there's a problem, like a continuity error, but the continuity error doesn't actually affect anything in the story. Mm -hmm. Like, these things are things you can objectively measure. Like, does a character break characterization? Does a character that's presented as being smart and intelligent suddenly act incredibly stupid and short-sighted? 
just out of nowhere. And it's never explained, but it's just, oh, but the plot demands it sort of deal. Like, like again, the whole repair the eye thing is so artificial and arbitrary. The eye was never damaged beforehand. Why is the eye suddenly damaged? Well, it's only damaged so that you can split up Constellation, so you're forced to make a really arbitrary choice between saving the Lodge or saving the Eye. That's it. And if you choose not to save the Eye, the Eye won't be destroyed or anything like that. Oh no, because the Starborn require the Eye. Because the Starborn, for some reason, can't find the artifacts on their own? Like, that doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's so asinine. The, the game's story is fucking awful. I'm actually fine with the Starborn not knowing where the artifacts are if they, like, spawn in random locations in each universe. My problem would be more with where Constellation, the only ones who can detect it. Because, yeah. um, in, that, the new game, in the new game plus thing, if you meet the Hunter again, he will say, yeah... It's always a good idea to stop by Constellation and deal with them. It's like, oh. Okay, I guess. Yep. There's a character <laughs> return after being dropped down a massive pit and then explode into atoms with little to no explanation beyond somehow he returned. Yeah. I was going to read that one out. Yep. A again, the, ho the whole game story absolutely shits all over its own world lore and setting. It doesn't make any sense. The way Earth died is incredibly egregious in that regard. And it, it doesn't make any sense why there is any conflict between Starborn whatsoever. By the very nature that there are multiple Starborn in this universe, and they've had multiple conversations amongst each other in multiple other universes, means there is no reason they all aren't working together to continually get all these artifacts. Yeah. Because what is the point... Like, if you can go to the net other universe anyways, who fucking cares who finds all the pieces then? Who cares? Yeah, because there are infinite number of universes. See, this is part of the problem with the mechanics being so unclear in the story. So, um, one thing I did check out is if you get all the artifact pieces and you return to Constellation, half of them will go with you and half of them will stay behind. Um, I couldn't actually get them to go on my ship, so I don't know what happens to them. But the implication is that you might get separated from them. In fact, I'm pretty sure you do get separated from them when you uh, ascend. Because how are you going to have, like, two Sam Coes running around in the second universe? Um, yeah. But beyond that, so... I also checked uh, what happens... Um, so when the pretentious clone of yourself says, oh yeah, you're changing the universe when you leave, um, they show two examples. One is you've got the hunter and emissary to stop, so people can collect the artifact pieces in peace, which, like, how when there's millions of Starborn out there? But also, people are exploring again because of Constellation. Th those are the two big changes they tell you. Um, and all this together, I don't know what any of the, the, how any of the mechanics of this thing fucking works. So, if I collect all the artifact pieces in our universe, and then I become Starborn, and get sent off to the next universe, do the artifact pieces in this universe reset? Or are they just there for the taking in my ship? What happens to my ship? That's, that doesn't come with me. Um, so the artifact pieces that are there would be either... I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Do people ascend with you? I don't know. Um, the Hunter and the Emissary are both willing to work with you. Um, okay, that's fine. Why won't... The, why can't the three of us work together? I don't know. Um, if... Ascending, if getting all the artifact pieces and ascending to Starborn sends you to the next universe, how do all the other Starborn go to the next universe? And we know for a fact this is possible because you literally meet the Hunter again. I don't know anything. I, I don't know why anything is happening in this game. Because most of its key information 
to understanding how any of this works is not explained because they didn't fucking give a shit. Because they just want a dumb story that they pump out and get money on and fucking abandon. Like every other fucking game they've made. Except even more lazy than previous entries. Don't think about it, forehead. Yeah. That's literally the fucking... I don't know, ethos behind Bethesda? Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just enjoy slop. I hate it. I'm so fucking sick of it. I'm fucking tired of people mindlessly defending this shit as if it's fucking God's greatest gift when it's like some of the laziest shit out there. This shit should not be praised. We are not going to get better things when you praise mediocre fucking garbage. If only this game could rise to the lofty heights of mediocre fucking garbage. <sighs> Things for everyone. And that's just the way it is. The final point I've got down on my ballad list is my own personal complaint about the game, that being the rarity system and lack of true uniques. So in Starfield you can pick up four types of weapons and armor rarity. You've got your basic model, shown in grey with no bonus effects. You've then got rares, blue with one added effect, epics, two effects and purple, and finally the legendaries, orange and with a trio of random effects. You'll find these everywhere as you go. Obviously, you're generally going to be wanting- I just noticed this dude has fucking 400,000 credits, Jesus Christ. Are you guys still there? Yeah, I am. Okay, I haven't heard you for a while, so it's questionable. Yeah. I was letting you have your impassioned speech. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. Yeah, he did. Did he have a video that's like the easiest way to get credits in Starfield? Oh or yeah, some he shit did. Like that. He probably just used whatever that was to get a bunch of credits. Hmm. I'm back. No, I didn't even know you left. I had left a message in the Discord because I would cut you off while you're while you're on roll. Yeah. To legendaries, as the more effects, the better. But it's random what's going to drop for you when you play. You could end up with a ridiculously overpowered gun real early on, or just keep getting gear that doesn't fit your build or playstyle at all. And when it comes to uniques in the game, there don't appear to be any. By which I mean there's no truly unique feeling uniques. What you do get are pre-named weapons, normally rares, which are found in one set location with the same effect every time, and sometimes a slightly different skin than the standard model would have. However, you could end up getting the exact same effect on the same type of weapon as a completely random drop. Plus, the fact that the quote-unquote uniques tend to be rares rather than epics or legendaries means they generally aren't worth using, as chances are you'll find something much better through the powers of RNG. For me personally, this is my biggest complaint with the game. But guess what? <sighs> okay, but you way. understand... This was a complaint people had for Fallout 4 as well, but because everyone praised the shit out of Fallout 4 and let it slip by, they just put it in Starfield. Yep. It, you're, you're criticizing something that they're not going to change because you're actively defending them. You idiot. And yeah, this is a problem because in games like Fallout 3 even, especially New Vegas, it's better in there, but even Fallout 3 has unique uniques and if you're trying to do a certain build yeah there's unique items in the game that can help you with that build so you go to those locations go through the challenge of that area to get that item so that you can complete your build whereas here it's literally just chance it's just rng all the way through yeah it's shit but you complaining about it doesn't mean anything because you're you're actively sitting here defending the game from any and all criticism. I've got a better one for you, Pagan. Yeah. 
Uh, hey, Bad Company Sarge, your, your opinion on that is entirely subjective. I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah, I think the uh, the <laughs> randomness is actually... It, it provides a much more dynamic gameplay experience. <laughs> I like it way more, and I like the idea that, you know, you could get something really good, but you have to work for it. You have to actually earn it by playing the game, you know, sometimes maybe not that much, but sometimes a lot, and that just makes it better. So I think your criticism here is completely invalid. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah uh, i had a problem with this but it was like among the lesser problems for me because everything else was just such a bigger problem especially the story and exploration and fucking ship building it's like yeah it's it's bethesda being bethesda it was similar in skyrim it was worse in fallout 4 uh whatever Like, even, like, let, let's pretend for a second that the exploration was actually amazing, the story of this game was actually well written. Like, this weapon system would still be a problem for me, but it wouldn't be that big of, it certainly wouldn't be my biggest problem. In fact, I kind of wish it was my biggest problem, because that would mean all the other problems are solved. Yeah. It's what? I'm still loving Starfield. Despite this being a big issue for me, I still enjoy the game, and I'm learning to adapt to it, and just accept that when it comes to my builds and the like, I'll just recommend a base variant of a weapon, and then work with whatever random stuff people get given. Sure, it's not ideal, but it doesn't ruin the game for me. And I think this is a big thing to point out. No, all the other While stuff ruins it. there are it. issues with the game that people <laughs> will have, something not being perfect isn't a reason to think it's bad. Oh my Plenty god, how oh, are we fuck still off. getting this shit? Fuck off! Fuck off! We are so sick of this shit. shit. The vast majority of people are sane people and don't expect perfection. They just want something good. Good does not mean perfect. Good means good. Above average. No, something you don't understand. Pleasant. If you have any criticism about anything ever, that means you demand perfection. And if you don't get perfection, you think it's utter fucking worthless dog shit. This guy's a fucking NPC. Yeah, I, I am so fucking sick of these people making this ar this specific argument over and over and fucking over again. Oh, just because it's not perfect doesn't mean it's bad. No, it's bad. It's not because it's not perfect. It's because there's a multitude of fucking problems with it. Yeah, it is just bad. You're just a fucking Bethesda dick writer and a shill, and you have no concept of what criticism is, and you have no standards. Yeah. This is this is how you know someone is being disingenuous. Like, right here, if nothing else made it clear for you, this should. Yeah. This right here just shows you, like, they... They're, they're completely bad faith in their arguments. They, they will just assume... Well, it's not even an assumption. I don't even think he actually believes this. He will just say anything to make the opposition look unreasonable. No matter what the criticism is, no matter how valid it is, no matter how much proof there is to prove that point, they will just say, oh, well, you just expected perfection. Because they're that disingenuous. Yeah. If you ever hear someone say something along the lines of, you expected perfection, or just because it's not perfect doesn't mean it's bad, that person is arguing in bad faith. That person is a shithead. Yep. Because no rational person honestly believes that, like, oh, you're critical of a game a bit? Oh, you demand perfection. Because no. I mean, it would be nice to have perfection. Like, when providing criticism of something... You're obviously talking about the flaws something has, even if those flaws are very minor. Where, you know, oh hey, Andor isn't perfect. There's a few problems with uh, how each storyline transitions from one to the next. The way Andor gets arrested, pretty silly. The way he gets off the prison planet to the final arc, yeah, pretty silly. Um, it's saying, yeah, this is a problem, it could be improved. But it's not saying... And because it's not perfect, it's a zero out of ten. No, it's saying, yeah, there's 
really good show. There's some problems with it. If if it weren't for these problems, it might actually be perfect. But it's not a demand of perfection. Yeah. I'm just... This is one of the things from people I fucking hate the most, where... Oh, you're critical of something? You're just upset that it wasn't perfect. No! No rational person is actually demanding perfection. And I guess that's kind of caveat there. People like this probably don't believe people like us are exactly. rational. Or that irrational people don't, uh, you know, are, are counter to their, uh, their position. They think that their position is the only rational one. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't handle Starfield at its worst, you don't deserve Starfield at its best. I'm afraid those two things are exactly the same, though. Yep. <laughs> complaining about elements may be coming across as negative and as if they don't like the game, but it could be the opposite. Negativity bias means we're more likely to talk about the bad than we are the good. So maybe- Again, negativity bias isn't really a thing. It's not really a thing. It's just a thing that people say and claim, but it's not actually true. I thought negativity bias is just you remember the negative more so than the good. Yeah. Like, um... Yeah, and it's because you're supposed to learn from it, right? We're a species that learns from our mistakes. Yeah. That's how we survive. That's how we adapt. Stick your hand on a stove that's turned on. Ow, it hurts. You're not going to do it again. You're going to remember that that negative experience. You're not supposed to do it a second or third time? <laughs> well, Cree, <laughs> see, you're special. Okay? <laughs> Yay, I'm special. That's why they put you in this bed, but... Wow. I was there for the He was a little reasons. dinky short bus to school, except he didn't even get a yellow dinky short bus. He got a little white one. It's why you go in the retard squisher. <laughs> <laughs> well, that actually being a thing is just funny. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, God. Cree's very artistic. Yes, I am. Yes. It's why you have a weighted blanket. Yes. There you go. <laughs> wow. Just fucking outing me in front of chat. <laughs> the fact that you told me you have one of those now <laughs> just made that so perfect. I was like, I have to say that. <laughs> yeah. Because that is what those are normally made for, is to calm down the, uh, the tism child. Because <laughs> for whatever reason, that... that pressure does reassurance or something for their brain there's some complex like reaction and it, it calms them down and it allows them to sleep a lot easier the weighted blanket is legitimately fucking good though holy shit I guess I kind of have one but mine's because it's a jean quilt but I use it for like to stay warm like when it gets cold I have a have a nice like thin smooth blanket that I have on all the time, but if it gets really cold, I'll throw a, a jean quilt on top of that just to try to stay warm. And it's kind of weighted just from the fact it's made from jeans and stuff, so. Hmm. For some reason, when you said jean, I thought you meant the other jean. Uh, how? I don't I, know! Like, I, 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 I don't... just, uh, it, like, started sewing DNA together to make a big strand. I don't know! I, I thought it was, like, some weird name for it. Not that it was made of actual, like, DNA genes. I was just like, oh, <laughs> it gene... Like, is that some kind of, like, medical fucking thing? Like, what? Yeah, no, it, it's just old pairs of genes. You can just cut them up to make little, like, swatches that you <laughs> stitch together. He's being special again! Stop! <laughs> no, no! I'm being bullied! Cretism moment. Cretism is showing... <laughs> He's starting to take to... cover. Ah! Seth, you're one to talk. You play SS13. You're the most artistic person in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny you say that. Hang on. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, no. You sent him off. There you go. <laughs> I got ah! bored one time on this station and I did that. On station. 
Hold on. This actually is autistic chat. You're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you set me up, so I, I took it. I took the shot. <laughs> this is a bobbery. Put the chromosomes in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got bored on station one time, and I just did that. Th yeah. That's the uh, that's the evacuation lounge. So when the emergency shuttle comes. <laughs> we have things they love about the game, but they've decided to discuss the one negative they have. It's always worth keeping that in mind. And when you can oh no, yes, no, no, yes, no, no, my no, no, no. That's my, not true. Yeah. my two hour review of Starfield is simply gonna be talking about the one singular negative I had with this game. Yeah, I I'm sorry, but again, that's not true. What if the person has only a couple positives, like I do for Starfield, and everything else is negative? Everything else. Does that mean I have a positivity bias? Also, by this standard, then, like, every discussion around everything ever would be fucking negative because of that one negative thing. He, he literally said, the one negative. So, yeah. if you have a problem with anything ever, then it's only gonna be, yeah, the negative. Oh, hey, Andor was shit because the arc transitions were not good between, like, the prison arc and the, the final, the funeral arc. Well, all the arcs, really, because even yeah. to get to the prison arc was pretty rough. I was just they, using they, one they as an example. Um, Deep Space Nine is terrible because uh, Run Along Home. The entire show is bad because of that one episode. <laughs> or sorry, Move Along Home. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, that's not how it works. You're just a crazy person, Bad Company, Sarge. The accident wasn't your fault. You need to learn to let go. <laughs> Um, but yeah, th this is just actual insanity at this point to assume that because of negativity bias that you talk about the one negative thing and like that colors everything else. I, I assume that's what he's saying. I'm going to go back to hear it again just in case, but that's what it read as to me. So maybe that person has a dozen things they love about the game but they've decided to discuss the one negative they have. It's always worth keeping that in mind. And when you can... See? So that's just bullshit. That's just him saying, oh, no, the person that's being negative about the game actually really loves the game. There's all these other things they actually really love about I, it. They're just not talking about it because negativity bias. I wonder if he means, like, um... So we watch a review of Starfield, and someone, like... Okay, let's use a different example. We watch a review of Andor, and someone's praising it, praising it, praising it, then they criticize the uh, arc transitions. And it's like, oh shit, this person must have really hated the show then. Again, <laughs> just to cover the bases is why I'm uh, doing this. That doesn't work, because that's not how people work, you crazy person. I've watched plenty of reviews of things other people liked where yeah they had some criticisms for it but it doesn't come across as oh yeah and they hated it you know yeah if I, gotta agree, I gotta agree more with tentacle dude this this is what it sounds like this is the uh phobes are secretly gay argument again that's what it, that's what this comes across to me as the people that are being negative actually really like the game i'm going to rewind again and go a bit further back just to get the full statement just to make sure. But this this is completely fucked either way. Thinking about elements may be coming across as negative, and as if they don't... Hold on, I'm gonna go just a bit further. Something not being perfect isn't a reason to think it's bad. Shut the fuck up. Plenty of the people online complaining about elements may be coming across as negative, and as if they don't like the game. But it could be the opposite. Negativity bias means we're more likely to talk about the bad than we are the good. So maybe that person has a dozen things they love about the game, but they've decided to discuss the one negative they have. It's always worth keeping that in mind. 
And when you okay, so like this is actually fish, worse than I thought because this is literally. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, this is kind of more in line with what Tentacle Dude is saying. Oh no. Where, yeah, what I said before. Like, no, the person isn't actually negative. They really love the game. They just have this one thing they don't like. Everything else they love about the game. Because they're more inclined to talk about the negative than the positive, which again isn't necessarily true. Yeah. Um. What reviews are you looking at where people will mention one negative thing and not talk about any of the positives? I'm genuinely having trouble figuring out, like, what he's referring to here. Like, where he's going to find this specific type of comment where it's like, yeah, you know, this thing I didn't like about this thing and therefore that's negative when it's someone who actually really liked it again I, I don't see a situation where it's coming up in discussion or someone's doing a review where they only talk about the one negative thing as opposed to the 12 positives I don't see again using Andor as the example I don't see how you talk about the arc transitions being terrible in Andor without covering, like, all the good parts about Andor, especially, like, the characters, um, and the, uh, the, the three big speeches at the end, fucking, um, uh, the, the little robot guy, I forget his name, um, Grandma Lady, I forget her name, too, um, Martha. Uh, no, it's not Martha. It's, um, fuck, what was her name? Uh, Kino Loy, um, fuck, there's another character. Who's the, um... Marva. Marva, Marva, Marva right, Marva. Um, and the, uh, the antique shop owner guy who's working undercover, I forget his name, too. Um, it was yeah, a cool Lucian. name, too. But point is, like, I, I don't understand how you do a review of that or anything, really, that you like and only talk about the one negative thing. Yeah. Can also talk about some of the positives, so people know that you have a balanced opinion. Also talk about some of the- <laughs> Again, Who are what you if there talking no about? What if there are no positives, Bad Company Sarge? What if literally there are no positives? No, no, we're still working under his assumption, his dumb fuck assumption, that people who like the game are only complaining about the one thing they don't like, and that's skewing opinions somehow or something, I don't know. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, and I, also, I don't know what he's talking about, but... Now he's saying that you should sprinkle in the positive so people know you have a balanced opinion. And it's like, yeah, he's it referring, doesn't matter. He, it, your opinion doesn't need to be balanced. If it's the truth, it's the fucking truth. Yeah. First of all, yeah. But he's still continuing on the same point of people ha like a dozen things and just like one thing. So when you talk about the one thing you don't like, you need to sprinkle in a pro uh, positive no. Because why should you bring up something irrelevant to the thing you want to talk about? Let's say Starfield is a good game, except there's one really big problem with it. It's like the main part of the game that there's a problem with that people are complaining about. So why the fuck do you need to b bring up that, oh, shipbuilding is good to balance out, yeah, but this other thing is really, really shit. You know? I, I don't... Yeah. I, I hate this mentality of, oh, you're going to criticize it? Well, you have to talk about something that you do like about it with it. No, fuck off. Go talk about the thing I want to talk about. He's repeating what his therapist told him. Oh, no. <laughs> Wear a condom, kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh... that's fucking brutal. But that's my most, uh, like, that'd be the way to destroy his entire argument. It's like, what if there are no neg what if there are no positives? Sorry. Yeah, what if there they are don't. no positives? What if it's big rigs over the road racing? I'm sorry, there are no positives that game. 
Yeah, but have you ever considered that uh, liking or disliking it is subjective? And I had fun with it, therefore it's good. That's the other thing that we need to... <laughs> I want to say breed out of people, honestly. is The idea Jesus. that liking something means it's good and disliking something means it's bad. I hate, I hate that that mentality has spawned from the really shit education systems we have in the world. It is shocking how many people work on that logic, and even when you explain, hey, I don't like racing games, that doesn't mean those racing games are bad. People are still unable to understand what that means. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so he's having his movie Bob Mo arc. Well, it's because, unfortunately, at this point, you have an entire generation and a half that is just fucked, right? So, I, how are you going to fix it? You need to fix the next generations and mitigate the damage of the current generation. Because, I'm sorry, there's a reason that I call Gen Z Generation Snowflake. Like, there's, like, how do you fix the problem? You can't put them all back in school. The damage is done. Like, we can't just say, hey, you need to go back for re-education. They already did their time in school. So you just have to wait for the next generation to come up through and try to fix them instead. I don't want eugenics. Again, I'm just looking at this pragmatically. How do you how do you fix Zoomers? Right? How how would you how would you possibly fix Zoomers? They're they're completely destroyed and damaged. There's some that come out of it because they they go counterculture to what they're being taught. Though those guys are fine, but the problem is the vast majority of them aren't. So the way you got to fix it is the next generation after them. I actually wasn't paying attention. I was looking at something else. Uh, are we good to continue? Yep. All right. Those were the points I've seen talked about, which I consider valid. Well worth taking into consideration. Oh boy. Now I'm going to discuss some of the not so valid points I've seen, and why I don't think they're fair criticism of the game, and should essentially just be ignored in the whole discussion. First, <laughs> hey, hang on. I want to. I want to talk about this. Uh, Silver Bar. Fuck you. In particular, that was on topic, you idiot. I'm sorry you can't follow an A point to a B point to a C point. Sincerely, fuck you. Now, back to what he said, because I didn't see that because I was so pissed off at chat being retarded. Positives, so people know that you have a balanced opinion. All right, those were the points I've seen talked about, which I consider valid, well worth taking into consideration. Now, I'm going to discuss some of the not-so-valid points I've seen, and why I don't think they're fair criticism of the game, and should essentially just be ignored in the whole discussion. First up, we have that Starfield is a Bethesda game. For some- I mean, how- wait, how's that not valid? How is- I, I mean, one, it's, it's truth, right? It's just outright truth that it is a Bethesda game. But, how is this not valid? I guess we're going to have to hear him elaborate on it, but... I, I feel like this is going to go in the direction of... Oh, it's a Bethesda game, so of course it's going to be bad, which... I mean, not necessarily. It could have been good. There, there could have been... A chance for this game if they put effort into it. That's not what happened. Yeah. Yeah. There is a pattern. That's the problem. Yeah. He's probably going to argue there isn't a pattern, but it's like, no, there is. There's definitely a pattern. There, there was a chance that this could have been a good game, and it wasn't, and that follows a trend. Yeah. Some people haven't enjoyed Bethesda games. And as this has many similarities, they also haven't enjoyed this. I I mean, because Bethesda makes bad games. 
more like, wind when and you oblivion. you notice the pattern that Bethesda keeps making bad games, when you say that it's a Bethesda game for sure, like, oh yeah, it's just more the same, more garbage. The entire style of these open world games is not inherently bad. Morrowind was good. Oblivion was good. The problem with Bethesda games being Bethesda games is that they're lazily made. This isn't a, a point about not liking their style of game. It's about Bethesda in particular making bad games over and over and over again. Fallout 3, Skyrim, Fallout 4. Yeah, Blades, Elder Scrolls Blades, Fallout Shelter, Fallout 76, these things exist. We can see a pattern that they're just bad games. Oblivion was good, yikes. I'm not saying it's perfect by any means. I'm not saying it's great or amazing. I'm saying it's it's decent. In, in, this, in the overall scale of good to bad, it lands on the good side I'm going to say a little more than just barely. You can say probably like a five and a half, five point five. Five point five. Maybe you could push it to a six with the right arguments. And like evidence, obviously. Yeah. I said, I personally think Oblivion's just okay. So I, I, I'd put it more at five, maybe four point five in certain regards like it depends on what you what you would take into context right like if i look at the dark brotherhood and how it shits itself in the in the second half of it i, I would rate it lower but yeah. if i took dark brotherhood and how it was really good in the first half i would rate it higher they had me in the first half i'm not going to lie exactly <laughs> <laughs> or if i or if i took um, the shivering isles i would rate it much higher because shivering isles is fantastic I maintain the position that you could only have done Shivering Isles properly with Oblivion for how fucked up it was. It would yes. not have worked in any other game because everyone in Oblivion was already fucking insane by default. It just and fit in perfectly. Like a, it looked like what a crazy person, like we told a crazy person to uh, <laughs> paint a portrait of someone, it looked like what that crazy person would have made. I do wish that if you're someone who knows they don't like Bethesda games, you still decide to play Starfield. Like, really. No, 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 no. Because Bethesda <sighs> said this game was 25 years in the making, and it was totally brand new, and it shouldn't have had Bethesda's other problems where they can't keep a story straight, they contradict themselves constantly, and they fuck up the lore. And they still did it in their own game, which is their launching point of an entire new game world. An entire new universe. A brand new IP. And they still fucked up. And they contradict themselves and they fuck up the lore in their own new IP. I didn't think that was possible. I feel like he's being intentionally obtuse here. I, I feel like he knows the difference between liking Bethesda styled games and I guess um modern Bethesda and he's just not acknowledging that there's a difference there because I don't know how you have a Bethesda focused channel and not know that like oh yeah people like Morrowind and Oblivion but they don't like Skyrim people like Fallout 1, 2 and New Vegas but they don't like 3 or 4 like this, this is the guy who also made the video about the um, new, uh, new Vegas fan... Or, sorry, both sides are toxic, but only talked about New Vegas being toxic. Uh, the fan bases. So, I, I feel like this guy knows the difference, and he's just intentionally ignoring it. Yeah. That, that's what it feels like at this point. And you're very likely true on that one. Correct on that one, I should say. Really, are you expecting? I know I don't gel well with FromSoft games, so I haven't played Armor Core 6. Sure, I like me. What? what? I... Okay. That that destroys your entire argument there. In general, I I don't like FromSoft games, so I haven't played Armor Core 6. 
Armor Core 6 is not like the Soulsborne series, you fucking idiot. Holy shit. This also, is, this, I hate this, this argument. This is what Starfield was supposed to be compared to Elder Scrolls and Fallout. It was supposed to be a new thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I hate this argument as well, where it's like, oh, well, you like Fallout? Well, it's being made by by Bethesda, so you just don't play it. It's like, so you're saying that the thing I love, I have to stop playing entirely because it's being made by somebody who makes bad games. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Okay, so instead of criticizing them, I have to just never, instead never of, partake in the thing I enjoy. Instead of criticizing them, you need to fucking leave. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, he, he from took software... away his argument because he made a false equivalence between Armor Core Six being a From Software game and Starfield being a Bethesda game. It's like he honestly probably would have done better if he used like a Call of Duty game or an Assassin's Creed game, where yes. it's usually just the same. Game. Yeah, where it's just the same fucking thing every single time with a different skin. Yeah, uh, in terms of gameplay, at least, where. As much as I don't like Skyrim or Fallout 4, I can at least, like, point out the differences in many of the gameplay elements to it. Or to them. Mm. You know? I, I would not call Skyrim and Fallout 4 the same game, even if some aspects of them function very similarly. Um, but even that's a far cry from fucking comparing Dark Souls to Armored Core. What the hell? This guy's so dumb. He really is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to stand by my point of I think he's being intentionally obtuse here. I tried stuff from this developer before the game of theirs at launch. After a while, I. God, that was skipping for me. He says, yeah, fair enough, we'll just go through it again. Played Armor Core 6. Sure, I like mech games, but I tried stuff from this developer before, and it's never clicked. So I'm not going to pick up a new game of theirs at launch. After all. That seems a bit silly to me, considering it's an entirely yeah. different type of game. If yeah. Bethesda were to release a game, a 2D game like Terraria, I'd be like, okay, let's see what they do with it. This could actually be good. No. I'm not going to also, assume it's going to be as terrible as fucking Fallout 4 just because it's Bethesda. Yep. Also, his argument of, well, they they never clicked with me, ever. It's like, okay, well, what if there are people who've played Bethesda games and their games did click with them, but this one didn't? Yeah. Would that, that would destroy your entire argument, then. Well, no, his argument is kind of based off of you haven't liked Bethesda's previous game, so why would you like this one? But that's the thing. Well, it's like, but what if yeah, you have? Yeah, but what, what Pagan's saying is, what if you did like all of Bethesda's other games? You played Starfield, and it was like, wow, it is a Bethesda game, and you're just like, it's shit. Jesus. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that's his premise, is specifically that people didn't like the previous games. I like, know, that but specifically. we're doing the counter to his argument. Counter is, what if you did, like, all of Bethesda's other garbage, and then you played Starfield, and because it wasn't an established but, universe like Fallout or Elder Scrolls, you didn't like this one. Okay, yeah, but then your complaint about the game wouldn't be it's a Bethesda game. I mean, you could still feel like a Bethesda game. It could still have all the tropes and everything, but what got you over those tropes and humps and hurdles was because it was set in Elder Scrolls, or was because it was set in Fallout. It's like, whenever whenever I play Bioware games, they, it's the Bioware trope. It's a Bioware game, they always write the same characters in every single fucking game they make. Well, even if we don't go with the argument of, you've been a fan of all of their games until Starfield, well, what if you were a fan of all of their games until Fallout 3? Yeah. Like, it's, and then it's like us. Yeah, and it's like, okay, so... Yeah, there's been a downward trend. So what you're saying is, oh, well, you should just uh, completely abandon it and not criticize it and just leave instead of trying to improve the games that they make. Yeah, because that's the so, ultimate thing I want is for them to improve. Yeah, um, so it, that's just such a shit argument and on I'm, his part. 
I'm pretty sure he's done this thing before with Fallout too, where it's like, yeah, this is where this what the series is now. Yeah. Because I I know we've covered videos that made that argument for, uh, before. I'm pretty sure that was his. Like, oh, if you don't like it, you don't have to play it. Oh, well, so I can't his play. Magnum, in his Magnum Copus video, he literally said that, you know, Fallout 76 isn't bad. It's just different. You you just can't accept that and that this game wasn't made for you. And that uh, basically he said that you should just leave and go find a different game to play. God, I forgot how just how much of a fucking bitch this guy was. Yeah, he is he is fucking terrible. This is the same guy who, who keep in mind called people who criticize Fallout 4 extremely toxic and hateful for having extremely mild criticism and disappointment with Fallout 4. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a try, but there's no reason for me to be. The kind of complaint is normally shown as it's just Fallout in space or it's just Skyrim in space, which is meant as a negative, but sounds pretty damn positive to me. I like. It's because you're a crazy person. Again, you have no standards. When people say it's just Fallout in space, it's just Skyrim in space, that's not a positive. That is absolutely a negative. Anybody with a functioning brain can tell that's supposed to be a negative statement. Well, even if, even because, if we go by what he's saying here, oh, well, it's just Fallout in space. Except it's worse than Fallout. Fallout Four is better than this, and that's that's bad. It, his thing though is that he's like, that's a compliment because those games are really good. That's what he's going to get into. I guarantee. Yeah, speak. I know that. That's exactly what he's going to say. But it's like it doesn't work still because it's worse than those games. So it doesn't matter if he thinks, oh, well, that's actually a good thing because I like Fallout. It's like okay, but it's worse than Fallout. My point is that Starfield was supposed to be different. Starfield was Bethesda saying that we don't need to rest on our laurels in the past or everything else. We can do it all ourselves, And they clearly can't. Yeah, no, they can't. Pod sends Sarge you socks for a good review. You... <laughs> I like Fallout and the Elder Scrolls. Exactly. Sure, give me a space version. Thank you very much. Nom nom nom. Yeah, me... again, because you're a consumer, you don't have standards, and you don't I... know what critique is. I can't tell you how much I want to use a fucking gamer word right now. <laughs> <laughs> is it the one that rhymes with maggot? Yes. Ah, baguette, got it. Oh no, I said the gamer. Yeah, this guy is an incredibly insufferable, but be uh, insufferable baguette. Yes. He'll even swallow. Holy shit! Yeah, he pretty much just admitted it. Yeah, th this is another one of those problems with the "I'm positive about everything" type channels, where it's like, it it's not just that you only be pot is like god I don't even know what to fucking say it, it seems like someone who is desperate to be a part of the fucking in group a part of the shill group when they say stuff like that yes I want that please give me om nom 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 it, it, it's so exceptionally fucking pathetic sounding it sounds like you're chomping at the bit at the bit to fucking gargle some nutsack. Like Jesus Christ. This is such a, a nothing argument anyway because he thinks everything is good. Like he just it doesn't matter how bad these games get. He will always say, "Well, I like this game." And it's like, "Okay, so it could literally be the most dog shit thing ever but because it's being compared to something else oh but that means it's good even if that thing that it's being compared to was literally the worst thing ever it just doesn't matter well you just can't argue with him at that point because it's literally well i like it yeah remember yeah. this guy was upset that people were making negative reviews of uh redfall yep 
and Fallout 76. Can't forget that. In fact, he was so butthurt about Fallout 76, he made the Magnum Copus. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right back. I'm getting a call. Uh, okay. Shall we continue? Let me use an example again. If I described Armored Core as just Dark Souls with mechs, does that sound like a bad thing? Yes, because that is legitimately not what Armored Core 6 is. Again, yeah, that's just reductive. Just say, yeah, just saying it's it's one of their old games, but with mechs, is incredibly disrespectful to the artistry and talent of people working on it. Again, it's the same as people saying that Starfield is just Fallout in space. It is incredibly disrespectful. Intentionally so. I am being disrespectful because I think Bethesda are hacks. I don't think they have talent. I don't think they can make a game. Like, at all. I think they are terribly inept and incompetent. Even if I'm not Fallout... trying to pay them a compliment. Even if all of Bethesda's Fallout games were good and people were calling this it's just Fallout in space, that would still be an insult. Yeah. Is this the, the Magnus Copus guy? It's Magnum Copus. But yes, this is the Magnum Copus guy. But again, the where this doesn't work for you, Bad Company Sarge, is that we can show that Starfield is just Fallout in space Whereas Armored Core 6 is so vastly different from the Soulsborne series that saying it's just Dark Souls with mechs is retarded. Like, we can show that that's not true. It's like, okay, I'm going to put Armored Core 6 on next to somebody playing the playing Elden Ring, because that's the newest one. And so, let, try and say that Armored Core 6 is just Elden Ring with mechs. Again, you'd have to be incredibly disingenuous and a bad faith person to say that. Whereas the people saying that it's just Fallout in space are actually fucking accurate. We could show that it is indeed just that. In fact, it's actually a dumbed down version of Fallout 4 in space. For some, it's not a case of them disliking Bethesda games entirely. It's a case of them being mod addicts, who forget that the games don't launch with a hundred different mods to put everyone in their underwear and expand various body parts to comical degrees. This is kind of like the opposite thing. This is like, yeah, this is what like saves Bethesda's games to a lot of people is the mods. I just, I don't... I need, to, I need to figure this out. Hold on a second. I need to figure out what the fuck he's talking about here because this actually does more damage to the game. Ace version, thank you very much. Nom nom nom. Let me use FromSoft as an example again. If I described Armored Core as just Dark Souls with mechs, does that sound like a bad thing to you? I said yes. For some, it's not a case of them disliking Bethesda games entirely. It's a case of them being mod addicts, who forget that the games don't launch with a hundred different mods to put everyone in their underwear and expand various body parts to comical degrees. I do joke, but for some it is just the case that they don't like Bethesda base games, but enjoy the mods that come from them. The problem is, is that so many people defend Bethesda's dog shit because of the mods. Bethesda cannot make good games, and it's the mods that try to salvage it. And if you need mods to make the game good, guess what that means? The base game wasn't good. Yep. Like, holy shit, dude. Like, you saying, oh, they'll, they'll like it once they get mods. What does that mean, then? The game's bad until mods come in to try to repair the damage. Holy shit. Yeah, and I I'm, I also don't agree with that argument in that people who dislike the game now will like it once mods come out. No, if I dislike the game, the base game, I'm not really going to bother with modding it because I don't care. Yeah.
seemed a little strange to me, as I feel like you at least need to enjoy the game somewhat to care about mods for existing. Exactly. Yeah, it's almost like what I just said. <laughs> yep. Like, again, I, I think you've created this straw man, Bad Company Sarge, that there are people that don't like the game and are just going to wait, and then they'll actually like the game because of mods. No, they won't. What did I miss? He's, he, he actually made the mod argument. Mm, but in, in, in a way that actually destroys the game more. He's like, and I think a lot of this negativity just comes comes from the fact that there aren't a hundred mods that, you know, it changed the physics and makes people big-headed and stuff like that. And, Puts people in their underwear. And it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, but you're making the argument that mods will make the game good. And this is even better. The game wasn't good. This is even better because this has implications that this is the standard. Yeah. Yep. Ugh. Yeah, he's literally saying that uh, people who don't like the game now will just end up liking it later when mo once mods come out. But then corrects himself by saying, well, but I also do feel that you would actually need to care about the base game a little bit to even care about mods, which I made the argument right before he said that, and it's like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it should be made clear, so too, just like very quickly, some really old games do require mods to run on modern hardware, that's entirely that's an that's a different beast than this game isn't fun and I need to mod it to make it enjoyable. Those yeah. are way too different realms of mods are needed to play it. Playing barches on is not always a good thing. So a lot of old games get left in the dust just because old systems, mechanics, and things that were standard back then are no longer standard. It happens. So sometimes you need mods to make them even playable. But again, that's more like an archival or like archaeologist service. That's not a we need to make the game itself good. Yeah, it would be like playing. Um, just trying to think of a game that like it, it would be like, OK, imagine five years from now, on the next Windows operating system, something like Warcraft 2 or Fallout 1 and 2 just don't function on them unless you, like, download shit to make to allow them to run. In fact, that's actually kind of the problem with uh, Arena and Daggerfall. You need DOSBox to be able to play those. Or at least you used to. I think they might have, because Bethesda put them uh on Steam. Yeah, and a Daggerfall, I believe... Well, I think the Steam versions actually boot up a DOSBox thing in the background. Okay, but they probably just have um, it all set up so it just automatically runs properly for you. Yeah. Go but uh, in Daggerfall's case, you also had, like, the Unity project that put put all of Daggerfall in Unity. Well, that's... Which is that's, really fucking nice. Yeah, that is nice, but it's also kind of different from what I meant. Yeah, yeah. I can fully step into the other person's shoes here. What I can say is that later on in the game's life cycle, there will be a lot more mods available. Just kind of a waiting game for now. The final It's a Bethesda game complaint is the one which is totally invalid, which is just the anti-Bethesda squad going around. Some people didn't like past Bethesda games. Fine, you're yeah. allowed to not like a game. But then... Are we? Are we now? Oh, how magnanimous of you, Bad Company Sarge. We're allowed to not like games now. Thank you for your you permission. Made a huge deal. After you made a huge deal about, like, these people are irrational for not liking the games that Bad Company Sarge likes. Thank you for permission, Bad Company Sarge. I, it, it was important to me to watch this video to make sure I had your permission to... Um, not like other Bethesda games, because your opinion means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. They've just sucks, anything they ever make going forward sucks, and that hating something is all they need for their personality. God, Again, you- Poison oh the God, well harder, I, you disingenuous fuck. I am struggling to not use a fucking gamer word right now. Holy fucking shit, you, you yeah. fucking piece of shit. If Bethesda keeps making bad games, 
we're going to call them out for making bad games. We said this before Starfield launched, that Starfield had the potential to be a good game. It had potential because they had nothing before it they could fuck up. Because Bethesda, as they said themselves, will not be beholden to what has come before. Ever. So they constantly do retcons and contradictions and fuck everything up. This was their chance because there was nothing written before about Starfield. There was nothing that came before this point. This was their fresh slate, and they still fucked it up. Yeah, and the whole thing about, oh, it's your personality to hate, but no. No. Some of us want these games to be good, because some of us are fans of the Elder Scrolls and Fallout and shock horror. Some of us want those games to actually be fucking good. Yes. I, I would prefer it if my RPG stayed RPGs. I don't want them to be turned into fucking hack and slash shoot em up looter shooter action adventure games. I don't want them turned into fucking racing games or visual novel dating simulators or fucking whatever else. And yeah, I'm using those examples as hyperbole to fucking make the point. When, when you take a beloved franchise that's known for being good RPGs, and you turn them into the most shallow, basic... I was gonna say something else. The shallow, most basic, bitch, boring fucking shit possible. That is irritating as fuck. I want new Elder Scrolls and Fallout games to enjoy. Because it's a series I like. And I don't want to be stuck playing fucking five games between two series forever. When there's new entries in the series, I want to be a part of them. I want to play them. I want to enjoy them. I want to talk about the lore and the characters and the quests and all the moments I like. It, it, fucking Star Wars. We had the, th the original trilogy, which was pretty good for the most part. The third one gets a bit to me. Then we get the prequels. They're pretty crap. Uh, they added some lore that was not too bad. They had some characters that weren't too bad. And then we get the fucking Disney trilogy, which is garbage. We get Mando, which is garbage. We get fucking um, Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. They're all Solo. fucking garbage. Solo, which is garbage. And then we get Andor, which is actually really fucking finally! New Star Wars I can enjoy. They're fleshing out parts of the world. They're fleshing out characters. We get these really great... Uh, moments where um, you get speeches from Marva and uh, Kino Lloyd, like two new characters in the show, and I'm still forgetting his name, the um, the antique guy. Uh, Luthen. Luthen, yes, Luthen. That's such a fucking cool name. You get that, yeah. like, probably out of the three, the best speech from Luthen. The whole I am fighting for a sunrise I will never see. I am... I don't remember all of it. It's a really good fucking speech. And Yeah, I'm fighting to create a world where I should not be allowed to exist. Yes. It's, just, it's so, so good. It's a very powerful speech. Yes, it's, it's very fucking great. Speech. And you can just hear the fucking enthusiasm in my voice just referencing these moments in this show. They're really fucking good. And how much I can enjoy that. And how I can't fucking do that with... Uh, modern Fallout and Elder Scrolls because they're fucking dog shit after dog shit. Yep. What's in then Fallout 3 for a fan who really, really likes the series? You again? Super Mutants being bastardized. Fucking the lore being fucked over numerous ways. What's in Skyrim for someone who really likes the depth and complexity of uh, the older games? Oh, it's fucking... Here's the most basic fucking RPG we could have given you. It's not even an RPG. Calling an RPG yeah. is giving it credit that it doesn't deserve. Uh, $5 from Cobalt. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, his mod argument was even stupider. He implied the reason people don't like the game is because the big titty sex mods aren't out yet. Yeah, we talked about that earlier, too. You need 
big titty sucks mods to play with. Oh. No, his whole thing was that because all the mods weren't out, that's why people don't like it. It's like, that's incredibly damning for the base game. Yeah. That was that was mine and Pagan's point, was that's incredibly damning for the base game. Yeah, for a second, when, when you said Big Titty Sex Mods, I thought you meant literally th that's one of the things stopping people from playing is there was no Big Titty Sex Mods in particular. Yeah, no, no, but that was, that was the general uh, idea, was because modding isn't as prevalent yeah. yet. And it's like, yeah, so what's that tell you about the base game? will genuinely just spend all their time trying to tear down something they're not a fan of. God. Name one. I, I hate this. Most people don't spend time tearing down things they're just purely not a fan of. Um, yeah. Most times when people dedicate a lot of their own time to criticizing things, it's either from a long-running franchise that they... Um, are either invested in or have taken interest in more recently where it's something they care about. Me making my 8-hour Fallout 3 response video would not have happened if I didn't give a shit about Fallout. Like, most people are not going to waste hours upon hours of their time to tear something down because it exists and they just personally don't like it. Um... Yeah. Most times it's someone who's a fan of the uh, existing series and they don't like a new entry. The other time something like that might happen is if, let's say a standalone movie comes out tomorrow and like you're super interested in it, the trailers look good, you're excited for it, you've been watching the interviews and the promos and everything for this, this new IP that's coming out tomorrow and you're excited for it. And then you watch it and it's just the most utter poorly written dog shit you've ever seen then there are going to be the kinds of people who are going to be like yeah this was a piece of shit I'm going to criticize this I'm going to complain about it I'm going to make my 8 hour long video talking about why it's bad you, you don't get people doing this typically over shit they don't care about at all yeah like, like, that, would, that would be the that would be the antithesis of not caring if the person didn't care then why would they give a shit if you said you liked the game or not? Yeah. Uh, in, I just weirdly can't... Enough, go ahead. No, it's just the whole people are just existing to tear something down is just really fucking weird to me. Because, sure, there's some people out there who just like destruction for the sake of destruction. That's not a large majority, but I wouldn't even see that's a... Sorry, I wouldn't even say that's a vocal minority. That's just... Some people will occasionally do that for shits and giggles. Yeah, but you'll, like, you have weirdos. Weirdos exist. Yeah, but like, there's such a small fraction that they're not even worth uh, considering when you're talking about the overall criticisms towards a thing. This is something yeah. people like Bad Company Sarge use to deflect actual criticism and dismiss it because, oh, you're just one of those people who only exist to tear things down, as opposed to having to fucking make the realization and come to terms with, oh, this person actually really cares about this thing, and maybe the complaints they're making are kind of valid. Yeah. It's just pure deflection. Yeah. That's what it is. And I hate that these small-minded little fucking bitches like Bad Company Sarge always go back to these few things over and over and over again. The fucking you just exist to hate it. What was the one earlier that pissed us off? There, there was something he said earlier that was really fucking annoying. I forget what it was. But you know what I mean. There's this, this yeah. dismissive bullshit constantly. So you never oh, have yeah, to... Oh, he said you're allowed to not like games. No, not that one. It was back when... Um, mm. It was back just before he did the uh, 12 things you like, one thing you dislike thing. Oh, yeah, that was the the people are like because of negativity bias it wasn't they that it was really just like before that game. it wasn't that it was just before that oh okay oh you expect oh, a perfection. You expect perfection yes yeah it's people use shit arguments like that that these are some of the worst people be talking about media in any form online because 
these people don't want they don't want to listen to the criticism. I don't think they even want the criticism to exist because it's seemingly diametrically opposed to everything they believe where oh no, someone is uh, being negative about this thing. I have to do what I can in my power to dismiss it or to get people to ignore it or look down upon it by making this bullshit argument that, oh, you only exist to hate it, you're expecting perfection, and shit like that. You were never going to like it because it was a Bethesda game. When that's not the problem, the problem is with the quality. They never want to fucking acknowledge that there's genuine problems with the quality. Yeah. I think a lot of that comes from an ego. From them, like they like I'm I am a smart person. I would be able to tell if something was bad or not, sort of thing. And that's where you, I feel like a lot of these problems genuinely come from. You wouldn't believe how many comments I've received on videos where um people say stuff like, Oh, you spent eight hours to talk about this when I could have played it myself or watched it myself and formed my own opinion or come to my own conclusion. It's like, yeah, you can do that, but like I'm looking at the factual quality of the game, which a lot of people aren't going to look at as deep as I do. Yeah. I'm not even saying I'm doing the most depth, it's just a lot of people don't tend to look at media with a ton of depth. Yep. They A lot of people just end up turning their brain off and just enjoying the ride, is what they like to call it. They're just there for just the experience, the pretty colors, flash the lights and sounds. That's it. Which is very sad, which is why we get so much terrible media. Because remember, a lot of a lot of companies use Dark Side Phil as their target audience. They need to make their games so that Dark Side Phil can play them. And I can't believe like I, I would have said that that was a joke. That was just a stupid joke. That that's being disingenuous and that's being hyperbolic. But then no, that was actually what they said at a game developers conference, that they do look at Dark Side Phil as somebody they need to cater to as their target audience. If you know anything about DSP, he is a blithering moron. Like, a an absolute incapable of formulating thoughts in his, in his mind. You know what I don't like? Rom-coms. Romantic comedies. Not a fan. But this is probably my first time actually saying that to you, because I just don't make rom-coms a part of my life. If I don't enjoy something, I just don't engage- You disingenuous oh, so fucking cunt. That I doesn't matter! Okay, well, but what if you like RPG, like, space exploration games? Open this would be right games. up your alley, but you don't like it because it's shit! Yep. Yeah, he is 100% being a disingenuous piece of fucking shit here. Yep. Also, yeah, you gotta like insane. how his character phased through the fucking ladder. Because yeah. he had another ladder on the side. This is probably my first actually saying and that And he just you. warps right through it. This is great don't quality, isn't it? Because a part of my life. If I Look. don't enjoy something, I just yeah. don't engage with it. But yeah, that's bad. The hate well fucking done, you dumbass. I'm gonna rewind that again so we can hear what he says when we continue, but... He, he's definitely intentionally conflating things here, where... Oh, I don't like rom-coms, so I don't talk about rom-coms. Okay, we're not talking about disliking an entire genre here. We're talking about, hey, Again. I'm a fan of RPGs, I'm a fan of Fallout, I'm a fan of Elder Scrolls, I'm a fan of open-world games that let you run around and explore and go into every single house you see and loot every fucking dinner plate, knife, and fork on every table. And Bethesda's recent outings for the past decade plus have not been good. As yeah. a fan of Fallout, I want new Fallout. I'm going to play the next Fallout game. Definitely because I have a channel that covers uh, video games now. And, oh, it, it's not good. Okay, that, that sucks. I'm a fan of Elder What's Scrolls. What's incredible, Cree, <laughs> is that you actually destroyed this argument, like, just before this. You talked about how, like, you know, people aren't really going to go into things that they don't have a genuine interest and care about. Yeah. 
and you specified like racing games. You don't really care or have an interest in racing games, so you're not really going to talk about or complain about racing games. Yeah. Um, so here, here's here's the deal. Bad company starts to make it as blindingly obvious as possible. The people that are being negative about Starfield like the genre like the themes and setting that Starfield is set in. They might even like previous Bethesda games. There's people who like Skyrim and Fallout 4 who don't like this game. I like Morrowind and Oblivion a lot. Morrowind is my favorite game of all time. Oblivion... It's probably not in my top 20. I need to sort out that list one day. But it's definitely up there. It's it's high on my list of games I like. And yet, my, my point would more be that why would somebody who who let's say they even actively dislike space games mm -hmm. why would they pick up starfield well like, he apparently thing thinks doesn't work here bad company sarge yeah because he's he's running off this dumb fucking assumption that people just hate things for the sake of hating them yeah first time actually saying that to you, because I just don't make rom-coms a part of my life. If I don't enjoy something, I just don't engage with it. But for some, the hate train is all they care about, and they'd much- Name one. That was Name his other person. video we covered, is the hate train one. It yeah, never stops weird. with this guy. Yeah, it's literally, the way you destroy Bad Company Sarge's argument here is just like, name one. Because he can't. He can't name the straw man that he has created. Yeah. Surely if these people exist, if it's this big of a problem, if there's that many... Excuse me. If there's that many people who hate Bethesda games just for the sake of purely hating Bethesda games and nothing else, surely you could point them out to us. Surely you could be like, oh, it's, uh... Jim Jammer 97. He's got, like, 200 videos about why Bethesda's terrible. And he's never liked any game they've made. Okay. You've provided an example, then. Is there more than just one? Oh, yeah, there's... Uh, Billy Bob 2004. There's fucking... Uh, Rectal Cancer 97. You know, just point to the examples if they exist. If you're not pointing to examples, I'm going to assume they don't exist. You're just making this fucking straw man... To put the to dismiss all the genuine criticism. <clears throat> also, Pagan was asleep. I don't know if he is. No. He's just he was breathing heavily into his mic. I'm getting there though. I am getting tired. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Starfield. Ugh. It's taking its toll. It is. Try that how much they hate something, rather than focus on the things in life that bring them joy. Again, we've said it multiple times, toxic positivity. Toxic positivity is a cancer. It needs to be removed. I, I hate this concept that you can't talk about, you can't critique, or you can't be negative. You must talk about only the things that bring you joy in life. Fuck off. I also think... I don't know how much of this he actually believes or not. How much of it is just an excuse. Um, I also think part of this is... That level there on the table is kind of fucked. Why are there two 45 degree angle things on there? Because you have a horizontal Thanks, one... I can't unsee it. What the fuck is that level? Yeah, because you, you, normally there's three. You have a vertical, a horizontal, and a 45-degree angle. Yep. And you don't need two 45-degree angles because you just turn the fucking thing around. Yeah. Like, that's literally useless. Why? Fuck, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, fuck. What, what was I saying? Sorry. I, my eyes just got drawn over to that level and it threw me off. Um... Fuck, I completely forgot what I was saying. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> Are you rewinding it? 
Oh, I think... I think I remember what I was saying. I, I don't know how much he believes this or not, but uh, I think he looks at channels that are largely critical of things and just assumes they exist to hate that one thing. So, um, if, for example, Bad Company Sarge were to look at Mahler's channel and see criticisms of uh, Marvel movies and Star Wars, then Bad Company Sarge will either assume because he doesn't know better or come to the conclusion because it's convenient for an argument he might want to make in defense of those things if he were to defend those things that <clears throat> uh, Mahler is just a hater of those things he only exists to hate those things when the reality is he actually really likes the MCU when it was good and Star Wars when it was good and he's critical of these things now because they've gotten so bad yep um, I think that's where he's coming from with this whole oh people just exist to hate things again either an intentional or unintentional misrepresentation of channels who are critical of things that's the conclusion he's coming to yeah he he might see my channel and see that i'm critical of fallout 3 and 4 therefore i despise fallout and bethesda as a whole which no that's not how it works you fool A lot of anti Bethesda people these is going to pop up whenever Bethesda is being talked about. Is being talked about, but it's not just the people. Well, again, the the people that are negative and critical of Bethesda are going to show up when Bethesda's talked about because you, they usually have the crazy delusional fanboys like you blowing smoke up their ass constantly. And it's like, no, 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 don't give them credit for things they didn't do. Stop giving them a free pass for creating dog shit, please. Yeah. You are the consumer-brained idiot that allows companies like Bethesda to get away with shoveling out dog shit for 70 fucking dollars. Yeah. And a lot of us just want better games. Again, I would have loved it if Starfield is good. Um, or if it was good, I should say. I would like a space game where I can explore and fly through space and land on planets and explore them and have some good quest lines and stuff like that. Starfield's not that. People company who are angry. Oh no. For some, they are big fans of a company, but don't like that they're doing something new. Starfield is a new IP, and there's a fair few people out there who wish Bethesda just worked on Fallout or Elder Scrolls. I've already established that I like both of those franchises, but if the devs were forced to just go back and forth between those two worlds with nothing in between, I guarantee you things would get worse. But they are what? getting worse! What the they fuck are, are you talking about? Already. They are getting worse, and also, what the fuck is this straw man? What is this? Oh, there's people out there who, they're just complaining because they're doing something new. Shut the fuck up. That is not why people are complaining about Starfield at all. Fuck off. Again, this is one of those situations where there is probably some retard out there. In the world I'm sure there's probably there. one. There, there's probably some out there, but this, this isn't even worth, this is just a straw man. Yes, it is. But that's all he does. That's all Bad Company Sarge does is do straw man's bad faith yeah, I know. argumentation, poison the well. Like again, Bad Company Sarge is just a Bethesda dick writer and a shill. That's all he is. Yeah, he's he made that no very integrity, clear. He has no standards, and he doesn't know what critique is. He has no style. He has no grace. He has Bethesda's cum on his face. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know how to finish that off and you fucking nailed it. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, remember, I am fucking weird. As anybody that watched my stream knows, I will randomly start making songs as we play games and stuff. <laughs> I thought you were going to go in a different direction. I thought you are going to say you randomly start composting. No, I, I will just make songs. Uh, as we're, we're playing game like tangentially related to what's happening in whatever game we're playing or whatever discussion we're having. 
<laughs> Did you see the video where he said he nearly cried because he couldn't run Starfield? <laughs> no way. <laughs> what? What video is that? Oh my god. Yeah, please Give me share a time that. code. I, if it's funny enough, we will watch it on stream just to see that, because that sounds funny as fuck. Yeah, we won't watch the whole video. Give me the title, give me the time code, I'll fucking find it. Yeah, please. Please, again, give us the title of the video, give us the time code, and it will be put into watch together. <laughs> I'll DM it. Nice. <laughs> Good. Uh, send it to Pagan or Setch. Yeah. Bad news, I think. The name of the video, I mean. Oh, no. I nearly cried because I could run Starfield. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please, good lord, let this be real because it'd be so freaking funny. <laughs> it's the Timmy Turner meme. Yes, 100%. God, please let this be real. <laughs> it's variety to thrive. And that's what Star... Not necessarily. What creativity really needs is limitations. Limitations tends to build the greatest creativity of all. The hardest part when it comes to being creative is inventing something entirely new. That's the most difficult thing there is. When you have constraints, then you get all kinds of crazy off-the-wall solutions to be creative. Like, the original Alien movie was originally supposed to just be set on a, on a cargo ship in the ocean. That was the original premise of the Alien movie. And through their limitations and not wanting to get a cargo ship and all kinds of different things, they and uh, Ridley Scott seeing a couple of other things, he was inspired to make it like truckers in space instead. And that was a like absolutely game-changing decision. From there, all their limitations then came down to how do we make a realistic spaceship? Like, I just, I just love, I, I miss when you had restrictions on budget and everything, because the limitations breed such incredible creativity, because you're trying to overcome the obstacles and burdens and things that are in your way, right? To make your vision. Yeah. Not just that, A but good like... example is, like, uh, the explosion of the, of, um... A city. I can't remember what movie it was in. There was an explosion that had to happen in a city. And it's like, well, how are we going to do that? We can't film a city exploding. We don't have... This is back before CGI and everything like that. How are we going to do that? So they instead created a scale model of the entire city block that they wanted. And then they used map paintings to create all the rest of the city behind it. And then they took this model and they turned it 90 degrees. And they filmed a... Um, a, a fireball canister underneath that puffed fire up through and they had cameras on the sides of this tilted model and they had cameras looking straight down the tilted model Independence Day, thank you and then when it exploded they just took all that in slow motion they just, they, they un, what was it, they overcranked the uh, footage I, I always got to remember, over crank is when you want to slow things down, under crank is when you want to speed things up. Because again, if, if something happens in two frames, it's faster than if that same thing happens in ten frames. Yeah. Yeah, there's um, plenty of examples in media where being on a limit of some kind has promoted creativity and led to some really fucking good results. Um... Just being handed everything by default is not always the best. Sometimes you will get that one person in a thousand or even in a million who has, like, a very strong vision and can, like, make the perfect thing with an unlimited budget. But there's also a lot of times where that ends up being completely fucked. Uh, part of the reason the original Star Wars trilogy is so good is because there's people there to keep George Lucas in check on his fucking crazy ideas. He wasn't around for the prequels, look what happened. Or sorry, they weren't around for the prequels, look what happened. Yeah. 
He unlisted the video, but I found it. It's good. I assume that's why Pagan is deafened right now. He might, yeah, he might be listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, gaming 2 had beautiful limitations in tech that led to most of the genre-defined games we love. We're supposed to believe now it's harder to make because they forgot the lessons of the past. I, I say it's more... Things can be more difficult now because of your unbridled ability to do whatever the fuck you want. Because there are no limitations. There's nothing that's holding you back. So you can make crazy, wild, wacky things. But really, you do need someone behind you saying, but why? Why does that exist? Why do you need that? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, my it's God. It's pretty good. So it's it's a short video. And it's basically him being like, the game is literally unplayable. I can't do anything, and I'm not the <laughs> only one. And I I don't know why I can't play it. And okay. then at one point should, he's literally like, I should, want to cry. Should we play it right now? Save the time code of this video and throw that in. Yeah, I would say okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Fourteen fifty six. Let's just say fourteen fifty yeah. for like we're kind of rewind anyways. Plug that shit in. Plus All right. Yeah. <laughs> My plan had been to. Oh, yeah, get us to the uh, get us to the thing where we're. Yes, get us to the juicy bits. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is pretty funny, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna skip to the good part. Okay. I've I've been looking forward to this game for years now, and I just can't play it. Oh my god. I. <sighs> This is all I'm doing for the next couple of weeks is planning on sitting in my room, playing stuff, or making videos on it, and it is not working for me. And it is depressing as all hell to have to say that. But I just can't play the game. <laughs> I can't play the game, and I'm making this video primarily because I want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it in his voice. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> his smile and optimism. Gone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Will to live. Draining. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his day has been ruined. He's literally shaking. He actually was ironically <laughs> shaking. Yeah, you can hear it in his voice, like especially on the breathings, where it's not like a, it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> this Jesus is so Christ. sad. This is so sad. Kratosis, play Star Man. <laughs> <laughs> My Bethesda charm, the Bethesda charm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh, it's so bad too, because he actually shows like what's happening. It is Oh, this game is so shit. It is so bad. It just it the freezing, the fucking audio issues, it's Oh, this game is so shit. You're right, Cree. This man has no dick. To be fair, I've never made that claim until now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, play Despacito. <laughs> oh my god, I just saw his thumbnail. Thanks, Pagan. A song of shills and boredom. <laughs> hey, Pagan posted the actual video and you get to see the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, chat. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what? What is this? Hold on. <laughs> I don't know what the context behind this is. That's the problem. Hold uh oh. On. Is, are we gonna. Yeah, I saw that earlier. <laughs> I, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know. 
Oh, Priya got moved up because of the say goodbye to Skyrim thing. Yeah, I know. I uh, brought it back down so I could show it again. I wonder if the say goodbye to Skyrim thing is because he's going to be covering Starfield now and he can't cover more than two games at once, so he's doing Starfield and Fallout 4. People chat are spamming the crying emotes. Yeah. <laughs> he makes it sound like he's putting down his pet or something. Yeah, I can imagine being upset like that, like if your fucking dog got killed. But not... <laughs> Oh god, I love the new fan art, holy shit. <laughs> Hold on. Someone put me in the retard squisher. Maybe I deserve it. <laughs> Shame it's not the actual retard squisher, because that has three things that squish. It has at least three. I'm pretty sure it has more, though. Oh god, it's just funny. <laughs> yes, I re... <laughs> oh no, one of the people doesn't know. Yeah, the retread squisher. For whatever reason, it calms down retreads. <laughs> it does. So they, so you, they put them between two foam rollers and it squishes them. And that, like, makes them happy or something. It's really fucking weird. <laughs> uh, $3 from Go. There you go. Thank you. He should go back to retail to upgrade PC, Todd. Oh no. Do not let bro cook. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, I'll put the video back oh, up. Oh. You oh, you've got it. Yep. Oh, so 1450 is what we were at. Sorry about that. I had to do it because mine did the instant stop thing. D. Yeah. This guy's just sad at this point. Enough. He was sad before, but like... <laughs> the, the Magnum Copus pretty much cemented his status as pathetic, but man oh man, that, uh, that... That put on the entire clown wig and makeup right there. Yeah. Like, Bad Company Sarge is fucking annoying in a lot of ways to cover. Mainly the disingenuous bullshit. But he makes up for it by being funny as fuck in his patheticness. It's great. Yeah. Like, I could always count on Bad Company Sarge for a laugh. <laughs> I'll be right back. You want us to continue? Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Alright. This would get worse. Korea, and that's what Starfield provides. No, it doesn't. I personally see I personally see it as a good thing that Bethesda is willing to not just bank on sequel after sequel, but give new things a try. Not everything they make is going to be a hit. No. <laughs> we don't. We don't need it to be a hit. We just want it to be good. And they haven't made anything good in twenty years. Yeah. Well, I want to say twenty-two years technically. Yeah, a little over. Because Oblivion was 06. Oh, so it wouldn't wouldn't be twenty years. There you go. Fair enough. Yeah. Look at the spread on these guns. Yeah, it's kind of insane. I like how he was getting shot at and he just stood there and wasn't getting hit. Yeah. Like, at all. Oh, because he just crashed it. And keep in mind, chat, this is the this is the game stealth bar up here. <laughs> That's how lazily they phoned it in. That's the game stealth bar. Ow, my knee such. <laughs> We're witnessing a man's downward spiral and his nearing the end. <laughs> oh no, this man's been spiraling since we started fucking covering him. Yep. Yeah, we've covered like... Is this the fourth video of his we've covered? I believe so. Yeah, because there's the Fallout fandom one, there's the Hate Train one, there was the I Hate Reviews one, and there's this one. He's a, a funnier character than we've ever had before, I could say that. Yeah, the the caution thing there, Neanderthal, that's your, your stealth bar. That's your, your stealth mechanic. 
it will <laughs> it'll stay hidden on it when you're actually hidden. Like that's that's how badly they phoned it in. Developer experiment. Then just go with the same thing over and over again. Yes, this does mean there's still some time to wait before the Elder Scrolls 6. But hey, the game will be better for that waiting. No. You don't know that. They claim Starfield took them 25 years and they pumped out this dog shit. Yeah. That's not a good sign. At this point, I'm sure you could give Bethesda 100 years to make a game. And, like, it's just going to be the same old shit. There's just going to be more of it. Yep. At this stage, I cannot be imagine Bethesda doing anything good. I pretty much had my last straw with Fallout 4. Then I foolishly gave 76 a chance. Then I gave uh, Starfield a chance. I'm done giving them chances. Bethesda fucking sucks. They release shit game after shit game after shit game. Yeah, and maybe Microsoft will get tired of their shit and just take their IPs from them. Because remember, Microsoft owns the IP now, not Bethesda. Microsoft needs the fucking EA games, Bethesda. They really should. They should just take their IPs and their, their published things, and they should just put Bethesda out the pasture. Yeah. A lot of time to make a truly great game, and I want the next Elder Scrolls to be truly great. Urging it. Do you? Do you really? Because those of us who also want the next Elder Scrolls to be great, you just spent 20 fucking minutes calling, um haters and people who want perfection and uh, people who their entire personality is hating Bethesda. So do you actually want Elder Scrolls 6 to be good or do, do you just want it to be something you personally can enjoy and everyone else with legitimate criticisms who want better games can just go fuck themselves? Fuck you. Yep. Yeah. If Elder Scrolls 6 isn't a hit, it's Jover for Bethesda. Yeah. I mean, that that would pretty much be if, if Elder Scrolls 6 turns out to be shit. Just like just like Fallout 3, 4, Skyrim was before it, I, I think Bethesda's done for. I well, think we, Microsoft will just be like, we're just going to take the IPs and give to other people. We would need it to be publicly recognized as shit. We can't have another Skyrim where it's shit, but it's insanely successful shit. Yeah. That's the difference. We, we need to have a Starfield situation. Where it's been publicly recognized as shit. That isn't a great argument. Microsoft could give Fallout to 343. Yes, they could give it to another shit studio. But at least if they give it to another studio, there's a chance. I don't right. see there being a chance with Bethesda anymore at this stage. They just keep meeking... Meeking? They just keep making garbage. How many chances are we supposed to give them? Oh, Fallout 3 was bad. Well, maybe it was a fluke. Oh, Skyrim was bad. Okay. Sort of establishing a pattern here, but, you know, maybe Fallout 4 won't be- Oh, Fallout 4 was garbage? Okay. Um, how about Fallout 7? Oh, that's terrible, too. Okay, what about Star- Oh, that's also garbage. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Again, I don't think it sold well, Sprex. I really don't. And we know that after Starfield launch, the number of refunds and returns skyrocketed on Steam. Steam doesn't give away the numbers of what got refunded where, but it's very conspicuous that it happened at the same time as Starfield was in its first week of being released. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's too much of a coincidence to pass up. Obviously not every re uh, refund during that period is going to be Starfield, but how many yeah. of those refunds are going to be from games that have been long released. Like, what else big released close enough to Starfield to make an impact on uh, refunds like that? I'm not sure there's yep. anything. Not to mention the fact that we've seen from the viewership numbers and player count numbers that it fell off a cliff. After the first two weeks, it's pretty much dead. How many people are watching Starfield on Twitch right now? Uh, right this moment? Oh, I think I could do that on... Uh... That one website, too. Hold on. Uh, 
And also do me a favor and check uh, Baldur's Gate 3 and Cyberpunk 2077 as well. Twitch stats. Uh, for Starfield, they have 1,000 players across all of Twitch. Right? Players 1, or watchers? 1,000 watchers. 1, yes. watchers on all of Twitch. Baldur's Gate 3, uh, 9,682 watchers. And Cyberpunk, uh, 2,450 watchers. So Cyberpunk is still blowing fucking Starfield out of the water. Yeah. Again, I, I think I think really that hoping. Starfield didn't sell well, and they have a ton of re refunds that they had to pay out for. I was really hoping that when I would get back, you guys would just be magically done with the video by then. Oh, why would we do that when we can make you suffer too? Uh, uh, <laughs> make it end, please. <laughs> I hate this. I hate Starfield. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> Just kill me. <laughs> yep. It's coming. Uh, doesn't help. And tearing down any projects made along the way only go to harm the whole experience. No, it Ow. does it because if Ow Starfield is shit and we criticize it for being shit, hey, maybe they'll learn something and the next game won't be shit. Yeah, maybe they'll actually realize that the people that are criticizing them are trying to help them make a good fucking game for one. This guy is just a fucking lunatic when it comes to logic. Hey, Bethesda can't just make the same two things forever. This is good because maybe they'll do something different with the next games when all their input is people like him praising them out the ass for what they're doing. That's not going to make the next game better. It's going to make it fucking worse. Yeah. Look at the progression of Radiant Quests from Skyrim to Starfield. Skyrim, and uh, it's not in the main story at all, but some of these uh, side factions have them. There's like at least one quest in the Companions that's Radiant, I believe. Um, the Dark Brotherhood, I don't believe, have any Radiant Quests until the very end where like you get endless Radiant Quests from the Night Mother. Yeah, they um, kill contracts. Yeah, and sometimes there's just, like, random jobs around the world where someone will be like, hey, there's a wolf nearby, go kill it. Um, so they were there, they were bad, but they weren't super, super intrusive. Then we get Fallout 4, where half of the big story characters turn into Radiant Quest dispensers as soon as you're fucking done with any story relevance they have. Except for Preston Garvey, who becomes one fucking immediately. Now we have Starfield, where at least 50% of the main story is Radiant Quests. That is fucking insanity. And we're getting this worse and worse. It's because people didn't p fucking push back on it hard enough when they fir uh, first started doing this with Skyrim. Skyrim got praised out the ass for being what it is. Oh, so we'll put more of the generic sludge into the next game. And then that got praised for being the garbage it is. So we're getting more sludge now. You don't get better by praising fucking garbage mindlessly because all I want to do is be positive on my channel. Do we think this game will get Game of the Year awards? We are fucking blessed that Baldur's Gate 3 came out this year and it's going to fucking oh. cock block them from getting that. I, I hope. So bad. Again, it would just it would be another um, The Last of Us 2 where Last of Us 2 got a bunch of awards and didn't deserve any of them. Uh, except for the accessibility award. That genuinely, Last of Us 2 was a pioneer when it came to accessibility options. Like that, the amount of accessibility options that game had was fucking insane. That they did genuinely deserve. But everybody knew that it didn't deserve any other awards at all. This will be another situation where the Game Awards will show itself to be an absolute clown fucking circus. We already know it is, but to the normies, <laughs> they'll realize it's a clown circus if Starfield gets Game of the Year. Well, it's not guaranteed because I don't think Fallout 4 got Game of the Year from uh, the Game Awards because that's something they would have... Uh, they but the Game Awards pushed heavy on Starfield being, like, awesome. Because remember, they were also, like, in, in Super with Todd and everything. That's true. But the fact that Fallout 4 didn't get it gives hope that, okay, it's not a guaranteed thing. Maybe someone who actually deserves it will win it this year. Yep. 
And Larian absolutely deserves it. Oh, they, they haven't done the nominees yet. So I, I was just checking if they have the nominees up. Nominees are coming. I hope November it's not even fucking coming. nominated. I hope so, too. It doesn't deserve it. I was so fucking happy. I know it's the Steam Awards. I was so fucking happy when Amnesia Rebirth didn't even get fucking nominated for an award on the, the Steam Awards. Holy fuck. Yeah. Pip Pip, where the hell did you get the idea that Tencent has 30% ownership of Larian? What the fuck are you talking about? Because, yeah, um, Starfield is so bad it doesn't even deserve to be nominated. Um, Hogwarts Legacy probably deserves to be on there. It was good from when I played. I, I need to play more of that. Uh, there's something else big that released that... Oh, Armored Core. That should be nominated. Oh, no. What? I was hoping that wasn't true. What? That was nonsense. What? No, Tencent does have its little claws in Larian now. That fucking suck. That does suck. Hopefully it's not too big of an influence. I hope so, too. Because Tencent is literally one of the most vile and disgusting companies on the planet. Yeah. Dead Space Remake? Oh, that yeah, that probably deserves uh, Game of the Year. Spider-Man? Mm. Yep. Way through the video now. This is really, really big. So, really big. So I hope you're sitting down. At the beginning of the game, when you make your character, on the very final oh, screen, he's gonna do it. after you've decided how you want to look, chosen your backstory, picked optional traits, and named the player character, there's then a button you can press if you want to choose your pronouns. Yeah, and I'm sorry, but I don't want Kitty Diddler ideology in my games. Alright, so do you, you, I... so you want them bad company, Sarge? You, you like that? You, you support that? That's what you want? Oh, interesting. As I said the other day, Az's rant is the most cultural relevance this game had. Yep. He, him, she, her, or they, them. You get that choice. And that's a bad thing. That is entirely a bad thing. Being a man or a woman is a scientifically proven biological difference. No, you're not changing that. I don't give a fuck. Again, this whole thing was created to push a very, very terrible agenda that we can't talk about because YouTube is very skittish on that. Well, you already mentioned the other thing. I'm pretty sure that's in the system, too. What, the, the kitty thing? I, th I thought yeah, I was because... working around it. Well, no, because that's like an obvious fucking phrase oh. where it's like something horrible. It's like saying rape. Well, I mean, now, yeah. Now, I mean, now you just outright said it. But it was the whole thing because I knew the other one, the P, was censored. Yeah. Right? And I was hoping that saying the other thing would get around it. Aren't you a part of the LGBT plus? No, I think the TQ plus are mentally ill lunatics. And also very, very bad people with when it comes to children. And that's the whole controversy. One single screen in the entire game where you just get that as an option. An option where it's not forced upon you, where you can quite easily miss it if you just hit accept again right after inputting your name where it doesn't really change anything about your playthrough in a major way from there on out. This is what people are angry about. This is the one downside to Az's rant, is that dipshits like this are using it as, like, the big deflection from the actual criticism of the game, where, yeah. like, there's a lot of fucking problems with this game, but people like this, disingenuous shitheads like this, see this rant and latch onto it as if this is the biggest complaint about the game. This is the only thing people are really complaining about. As opposed to the rest of the game being fucking dog shit. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And unfortunately, because of the way 
he worded his uh, complaint about it, it it makes it easy for these people to like point at it and be like, look at how unhinged these people are. Like there's look how upset they are over this. Oh, this is literally the only thing they care about. Like, it's so obvious. Look at how he reacted. And it's like, yeah, he didn't react to it in the best way, but he's still right. Yeah. He's entirely correct. This modern day anti-science nonsense has to go. Like, it, it needs to go. I'm glad the video is... Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, it didn't it's even play for Ill. me there. He said, someone going by they, them pronouns is not a big deal. Yes, it is. They're mentally ill. Help that person. It's not even that that I'm that bothers me. It's just the fact that it's getting shoved into everything. Yeah. That's my issue with it. It's not even that these people exist. It's just that it has to be in everything now. Mine is because the people the people do exist. That's my problem. Because the ideology and the entire creation of it was done for such nefarious and evil purposes. I get that. But <sighs> God, this is hard to talk about without getting into that other thing. Yeah. Because I, I, ignoring that fact that that is a, a pattern and an issue, I don't well, I mean, care. I, that's why they created it. I know, but there's, it doesn't apply to everyone who. Yeah. Well, that's why I said they're mentally ill that. because that's there's there's no basis in reality. Where that's okay. I know, but the thing is, people. I it's. <sighs> If they want to identify that way, it's whatever. They have the right to do that. It doesn't I don't, matter. I don't give a shit about if people just... I more, I more disagree with that because I don't think you should play into people's delusions. I think that's more harmful. I never said okay, about but playing then what into do people's we, delusions. But then you have the problem that that can be turned around on you then because it's like, oh, well, that's clearly delusional. You 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 can't be allowed to believe in that. That's delusional. You actually think no, that our election was stolen back. in 2020? What are you, delusional? Lock this person up. It's literally yeah, we that. Actually, we actually have evidence. It's not literally I that. know, but then they'll claim that we they have, have evidence. have evidence. <laughs> they have nothing. They will claim that their evidence is evidence, no matter I how shit it is. I don't care if they claim that they have... If, again, there is thing. Evidence either exists or it doesn't exist. I don't care because they have no evidence. Okay. I, I don't know how you don't see the issue here. Yeah, I, I don't. Because, again, one side has facts, evidence, and science on their side. The other is fairy tale, mentally ill nonsense. Okay, but you're, no you're literally advocating whatever. that people cannot choose to live the way that they want to. Whether, whether other people see it as factual or not, that's the problem. No, you can live the way you want to. I am not forced to play into your delusions, though. And we never said anyone should be forced to play in the delusions. Yeah, exactly. We never you're you're said saying that. that we should allow this stuff in. No, no I'm not. I'm saying that this stuff... I'm not saying that, goddammit. You're really starting to piss me off. I'm, I am literally said before all of this that, yeah, this is a problem. It shouldn't be shoved into all of our games and stuff. That is an issue. I'm saying that people would people like to use this stuff as like oh see they just hate all these people that's the only reason that they care that's the only reason why they want this stuff out and it's like no that's not why um yeah okay so yeah that's the point i was trying to make and you were so vehemently like fighting against what i, I was trying not. to say oh, no i didn't were. We can go back to that, and I did not. God, I don't care anymore. Well, let's just move on. I, I don't give a shit. Only bigots who want to discriminate that are kicking up a fuss. And even then, they only notice when it's pointed out in a clear way like this. If you don't bring up pronouns, then you can use they, them all the time, and people don't notice. No, people don't care no, people about don't that. People care when it's shoved into the fucking media they're trying to enjoy escapism from the shit in the first place. Yep.
How I know? Because I've been doing it a bunch over the years, and nobody has ever pointed it out. Character builds I've made in the past have been of non-binary characters. Hey, your videos barely get any views. I doubt anyone gives a shit what you do. Yeah. And still, I mean, that's I'm your... Sorry. Like, that's still your personal, like, videos, your character builds. That's not, hey, here's a triple-A game that millions of people are buying and they're forced to fucking deal with this shit. Yeah. Again, it, this, is, this is the... When you force people <coughs> to do that, that's the problem. When you force this stuff in. It's why it was a problem in Baldur's Gate 3 as well. The game is fantastic. It was incredible... And then they shoved it in in the literal last update before the game released. They shoved all this nonsense in. So it's like Baldur's Gate 3 is genuinely a leap forward for the entire industry, and yet it has a tumor on it. That sucks. God, it's not even playing for me. My very first. Is... Not, uh, he's saying he would use they for when talking about them and nobody noticed. It's like, again, you don't have high viewership on those videos. And I bet you people did indeed notice. Yeah, I, I'm sorry to break it to you, Bad Company Sarge. You are not a benchmark for anything. Yeah. Maybe if you, you had, are... like, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views per video or per character uh, build playthrough or whatever. Okay, yeah. sure. Maybe you can use that as an argument. When you average on, like, 600 views per, like... Actually, that's being generous. Some of those uh, streams or playthrough videos had, like, 200 views. When your yeah. views are that low, you're barely getting any viewership. Like, that doesn't... That's not a good sample size. He's a benchmark for peak cope. Yeah, I'm not sure I've seen anyone cope quite as hard as uh, he has. Yep. <laughs> my fans that all agree with me don't point out stuff they don't like in my video. No. Yeah. Um, also, Deus Volt. I'm, I'm only they, them, after all. Don't put the blame on we. <laughs> God, why does it keep doing... Use... Every uh, time... Do you want to try to go back and see if it goes? Did I miss anything important? No, he's, he's talking about okay. his character. They, wonder. every single time in the backstory, and there wasn't a single comment left about it. Because it really is not a big deal. I no, because no one gives a shit it, about okay. your small-ass channel, you fucking ridiculous person. Yeah, and here's the counter. If it's not a big deal, let's rip out the game. Let's rip them all out of all the games. Right now. L let's so up, let's make deal. an upload a mod to Nexus Mods that takes it out of Starfield and see what happens. Yeah, if it's not a big deal, then we can just remove them all entirely. It doesn't matter, right? It's not a big deal. Referring to everyone as they rather than he or she. And chances are, you didn't even notice until I pointed it out. And that's because it's a stupid controversy. Uh, no one noticed- well, I shouldn't say no one. We didn't notice because we didn't watch your shit other videos. Yeah, but now like he's he... saying he did it here as well, and- when has he ever talked about any of the characters? Again, you've always talked about them in the multiplicative sense, so they applies, you idiot. Again, they is multiple. Multiple! <laughs> that was the thing that gave it away. I knew then. How did you know about they, them pronouns? <laughs> <laughs> you were only nine. How did you know about they, them pronouns? The, the only other time I'll use that, aside from, like, talk about multiple people, is if I don't know if the person is male or female. Like, let's say one of you tells me about, like, a streamer named... Alex. Alex is a good example, because it's... Sure, it's Alex. Uh, I was going to go for something more, like, online internet name, like... Oh, uh, like... Jimmy GM Jam 97, or, or whatever. Yeah, whatever. It's like, okay, yeah, I haven't heard of them. As opposed to, oh, I haven't heard of him. No, that's a girl. I haven't heard of her. No, it's a guy. You know? Yeah, I haven't heard of them. It, yeah. it, just, it works. It works in context. Same thing here. Him constantly bringing up they because he doesn't name a specific person ever. He refers to them as a plural. Like, 
the characters. Oh, I liked them. And stuff like that. That actually is grammatically correct. Bad company, Sarge. Yeah, I don't think he's why nobody singled, noticed. I don't think he singled out a single character and talked about them. Yeah, he didn't. That's why. That's how I know that he's full of shit here because he didn't talk about a single character ever. <laughs> oh God, the Russians! They're coming. You mean Zayer? <laughs> yeah. People pick their pronouns. It doesn't harm you in any way whatsoever. It's not being forced on you. It just. It it is though because the, the it's there. It pops up. That is being pushed on you. If it's not being forced on you, then why can't I upload a mod to Nexus Mods that removes it so people who don't want to deal with it don't have to? Yeah, if it's not being forced on us, right? Why can't I have it say man or woman in Baldur's Gate 3 if it's not being forced on me? A lot of games are doing this now, too. Uh, body type A, body type B, or 1 and 2. Uh, World of Warcraft will have, like, a male and female outline, but they won't outright say male or female. Yeah. And it's actually kind of the funniest fucking thing ever because they don't want to use male and female, but because those are what we have, they still have to do, like, oh, well, one means male and two means female, or here's an outline of a male body and an outline of a female body. It's just the same fucking thing in the end. Yep. Huh, why are there only two body types for my 369 pronouns? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Again, as, as Scrublord says, it is being forced on you. If it's not being forced, why can't I opt out of the choice? Why do I have to pick pronouns? Yeah. Again, if even if you click select through that, you pick the pronoun. It was forced on you. The choice was forced. Just to make a comparison, trolley problem. You're in front of a lever that changes the track the trolley's on. One track it'll hit five people and kill them. That's the track it's currently on. The other track it'll hit one person and kill them. If you don't pull the lever, that's still a choice. Yep. If you try to ignore it, that's still a choice. And if you want to complain that it's political or something, I think the major factions having a civil war, meetings about space law, and various other discussions around the whole lore of the game are way more political than a couple of seconds spent at the end of a character. You can't- Okay, so again, like, you're you... being disingenuous as fuck. The politics, the inner politicking of the game world itself is entirely separate. The problem with the pronouns thing is that it is modern day pseudoscience horseshit. Yeah, when people complain about politics in their game, they're talking about modern fucking bullshit. It would be like playing a game and, like, the, the president of some planet is a absurdly rich billionaire with fucking orange hair. And, uh, you know, he talks in a certain way. It's like, yeah, he's clearly meant to be Trump. Yeah. Like, or you're, you're it's just the super evil bad guy faction, and it's suddenly revealed that it was totally Putin all along, or is Putin the third, or whatever. That shit would be fucking annoying. Mm hmm. It's like, yeah, people don't want modern politics in their games. They want. They, they don't care about the internal politics of the game. One of the most interesting things about New Vegas is the fa uh, faction. Um, choice and conflict that's going on because that's an entirely internal thing. It's not referencing uh, current real world bullshit. Yep. There, there's mm. no faction in the United States currently amassing a Roman style army to invade another state. Yep. And they're also not doing the fucking god awful thing of, oh well, the Legion is clearly run by a Trump stand-in and the NCR is clearly being run by a Biden stand-in <laughs> because current politics. Exactly. You know, there's that and whole the thing NCR the Frontier did. Exactly. There's that and, whole and thing. The go ahead, go ahead, sorry. There's the whole thing the Frontier did where it's like, oh yeah, the on the Enclave are, uh, I forget the exact quote, it was extremely cringe. It's like they're a bunch of uh, right-wing Nazis or whatever. 
a fascist paramilitary organization. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what they said. Yeah. Uh, three Australian from Get Out There, yo. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd only play Starfield to Sam High at all populated areas. Oh no. You can't keep getting away with this. Yeah, so once again, it seems like the only way Bad Company Sarge can fucking communicate is through disingenuous fucking bullshit. Yep. Great. If this truly is a big deal for you, then please leave. If you're so full of hatred that you just can't let people live their lives, and you have to try and tear others down just for being different- No one is trying to tear anyone <laughs> else down, you fucking ridiculous Actually, person. Shut up. Actually, I disagree. Up. People are trying to tear you down if you don't agree with this nonsense. They well, try to tear you okay, down. Okay, yeah, but that's the opposite side of what he's saying. I know, but that's that's the point. Is like, yeah, so bad company starts. Just leave. Go away. Forever. Please. Please do. The world will be a better place without people like you in it. <laughs> I am indeed full of hatred. <laughs> Yeah, if you don't let us force, uh, if you don't let us force our way into your media, then just leave. Exactly. That's what this. That's exactly what Bad Company Sarge is actually advocating for here. Yeah. How dare you not let us infect you with our terrible ideology? How dare? How dare you not join the religious cult? If, then you don't have a place here. I want my subscribers to be nice people, to be good people. But you have burn loot murder links in your thing. You're not a nice person and you're not a good person. I'm sorry. You're just you've not. Also, you've also taken a lot of people out of context and been extremely disingenuous to innocent people in your comments in the past. So we know you're not a good person. And technically yeah, in his you're... videos with that whole thing from last time we covered him with the, oh, I'm a gamer that hates women thing. Remember? Yep. Yep. Like, I'm sorry, he is not a good person. Yeah, he's genuinely a terrible person. You're also, he's also basically saying that if you don't believe, or if you believe in science, you're a bad person and you're not a good person. And it's like, no, fuck off, that's not how that works. Yep. Just because we don't believe in the same ideology as you does not make you a bad person. Yeah. basic human decency to respect other than gender, sexuality, race, or anything like that. Again, that's not, not what they're he's, that's he's not what people are judging moral, them on. Yeah, he's trying to moral grandstand because he wants to be the judgmental piece of shit asshole, which is as you've seen throughout this entire video and all of his videos. Yeah, and he's Again, also he, he's, you're not allowed to not like the thing that he likes. And also he's trying to confuse things here where if you have a problem with a uh, pronoun selection being forced upon you, then it's not just that, it's everything. You're racist, sexist, homophobic, everything. Yeah. yeah. That, that's why he's you missing hate... all that shit in here when it wasn't part of the discussion before. Yeah, exactly. If you don't like this particular ideology, then you don't like these people, even though it doesn't apply to those people. Yep. So that it's like, that doesn't make sense. You're literally just trying to morally grandstand on something that doesn't even exist. As a anti Boy Scout points out, yep, he wants his audience to be ideo ideologically the same as him, and wonders why none of them push back on him. Exactly. Yep. You have fostered this cesspit of just awfulness, and you uh, then are surprised that none of them call out your awfulness. Well, it's because you fostered the cesspit. It's also probably why your viewership is so low. You've uh, you've narrowed a, you've definitely narrowed down the selection of people that will follow you loyally and agree with everything you say. It's just there's not a lot of them. Mm hmm Like that. I've always judged people based on what they do, how they treat others, things that actually make a real impact on the world around them. We know that's a lie because you create constant straw mans and attack people that disagree with you all the time. Yeah. Like, yep. we've covered three of your videos in which you've 
done fucking insane things to go after people who disagree with you. Where, oh hey, both sides of the uh, New Vegas versus uh, Bethesda Fallout are, uh, discussion are bad. And then you spend like 95% of the video talking about why New Vegas fans are terrible. You, um, in your hate train video, you're again upset that people are critical of Fallout 76. You made the magnum copus where you bitched and fucking moaned that people ate up Skyrim and Fallout 4, but they had the fucking audacity to be critical of uh, 76. Again, because it wasn't perfect. Um, in your I hate reviews video, you fucking went on a random tangent about how gamers hate women when, like, what the fuck is wrong with you? No. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to break this to you. Gamers tend to really, really like women a lot. That tends to be why fan service works on gamers quite well. Yeah, I know the exact reason I want sexy big titty women in my games isn't so I can... Yeah, well, you, you hate their very existence. You be, hate the yeah, be, yeah, because I just want them to go into the kitchen and make me a sandwich. That, that's the only reason yeah. I want them to exist. Clearly. I tell you what, if they offered to do that for me, I would not complain at all, but um, I'm telling you what, I'm I'm gonna want them there because I like me some women. Like, it almost seems kind of silly to say, but women just... Well, attractive women just fucking look good. They do. Yeah, the same with attractive men. They're... Okay. That's kind of fucking Ridiculously photogenic guy became a meme with... Everybody, because he was that good looking while running a marathon and every single photo of him from every single angle was as if he was like some runway model. It was like, what the hell? It was it was shocking. And if you've never seen Ridiculously Photogenic Guy, well, I highly recommend looking that up. He is genuinely like one of those moments of here's a dude that just ran a marathon and he looks like a fucking Calvin Klein model. Like, from every single angle that he's in. No, not Giga Chad. There's a, there's a specific guy who was running a marathon, and he just looks like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's like a decade-old meme at this point. Uh, Kratos says, I play the female character in Assassin's Creed, so I'm not looking at some guy's arts for the whole game. Yeah. I like big titty hot women who are badass and who could kick my ass. Yeah, it's a line from fucking Cowboy Bebop. I like the kind of woman who could kick my ass. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you right now. Uh, if I see a woman and she got she got them muscles on her, ooh, I like me a muscular woman. I really do because it means they take care of themselves, and I really like. Them. We're fairly close to being done. The woman's being mean, I'm not gonna like that person. If someone's showing kindness, but I'm gonna form a positive opinion of them. That's really as deep as it needs to be. No, it's the not. Not for you. So you're an incredibly shallow person. Holy shit. Also, normal platitudes would work also, like wonders on you. This just isn't <laughs> true, though. We know this isn't true for him. Yeah. Yeah, because we of know that's not true. Seething hatred of anyone who is critical of fucking Bethesda content. He made a yeah. video complaining about reviews because Redfall, a terrible game, got reviewed really poorly. Yep. He, he's also making a false equivalence where he's like, he, he's basically saying, "Well, if you agree with As, then." Uh, you're not being respectful or nice to people. Like you're, he's acting like if you believe what he believes, you're going up to like random trans people that you've never met and assaulting them or some shit. Yeah. And it's like that's not how that works, dumbass. Yeah. The entire controversy in Starfield is just a tiny thing that doesn't matter. Apparently it does, it does, though, because we can't get rid of them. And it's not a tiny thing, because it's been literally the most relevant thing of Starfield ever since Starfield's release. 
Yeah. That's not a good sign for Starfield. Yeah. It's so nothing that you're not allowed to fucking mod it out because Nexus mods and other mod sites will not let you upload such a mod. Yeah, it's not just Nexus mod. It's it's like mod database and another site I think yep. who all said that yeah, if you make this mod, you will be banned. It will be removed. Honestly, you should to to make them eat crow. You should upload like the anti-fascism mod or whatever, and have it where it does remove all the pronoun stuff and everything. <laughs> Just let them squirm, because then you can write the articles. Uh, uh, mod DB removes the anti-fascism mod. <laughs> you know they'll never spin it that way. No, 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 no. I mean, but we can. Mm. I guess. No, don't show me the Getty image. I'm trying to find a really high quality picture of the ridiculously photogenic guy. Because so many people have it's just memes. It's just memes everywhere because he's that ridiculously good looking. It's like what the hell? I'm just gonna continue on with this video because I want it to end. Yes, please. I want it to please. end. I won't tune into the game for any rational person. And speaking about tiny things that don't matter. You want to take a guess? No, get your mind out of the gutter. It's just that I've seen people online complaining about super minor features that they wanted in the game which aren't there. The main example I've seen of this is that you can't manually fly your ship onto a planet to land- That's not a That's minor not feature, you that fucking cunt! That is not minor, you fucking piece of shit. That is a huge- The Have game was marketed as a space exploration game, and when people got it, Space exploration is limited to fucking loading screens. Have you ever said a single thing in your fucking life, Bad Company, Sarge, that wasn't goddamn disingenuous as fuck? I am genuinely curious. Yeah, this is ridiculous. How are you going to sit here and say that this is a tiny, minor thing that no one really cares about? Fuck off. It's huge. It's massive. It's all people talked about for a while. I know my space exploration game is all about exploring space. I don't want there to be any planets to actually exist. I don't want to fly through the vast empty void of space. I just want to land on a tile of a themed area. <sighs> I finally got a, a picture that wasn't like 220p. Or yeah, that wasn't, sure. you know, a meme. Yeah, there's a lot of memes of this guy. So when was this from? 2010? Uh, somewhere around there. 2010 or 2011. Yeah, I know it was like... He did, he did a Reddit Ask Me Anything in 2012. Again, like I said, there are just some people that just look fucking good. And it doesn't matter if you're not attracted to that gender or anything like that. Or it's not attracted to that sex. Um... They just look fucking good. And ridiculously photogenic guy. Again, they're all running a marathon. And just look at this guy. The sun itself is, like, causing his hair to highlight. It's like, what the hell? The universe was in on it. Literally advertised to explore and fly around on, on planets. Literally isn't capable of doing such. Yeah, there's a tweet by uh, Pete Hines before he uh, quit or retired, whatever you want to call it. Where someone asked, like, hey, can you get over your ship and, like, walk around and explore? Or, sorry, can you get over your ship and uh, go to a city? And he's like, yeah, you can walk there. I don't remember the exact quote, but you know what I mean. They it's asked, hey, if I get out of my ship and I keep walking one direction, can I come around the planet to the other side? You walk on, spaceman. Yeah. Well, that's a lie. Lam need to open up the map and it goes for a load zone and landing sequence to do it instead. Would it be nice to be able to manually fly to the ground? Sure. Is it actually that big a deal? No. Yeah, it is! Like, it is a big deal, you stupid fuck! God. And they advertised and marketed it as a space exploration game, and you cannot explore space, and you cannot go from space to the ground, or from the ground to space seamlessly, which says other games long before Starfield did this, and had it nailed and down. 
when did No Man's Sky come out? That was... Oh, I don't even need to do No Man's Sky. We want to go really crazy. There was a mod um, back in 2006 that was doing this. Steamless transition and change of gravity from the planet surface to space and back again. And it was a starship combat game. Let's see if I, in fact, let's see if I can find that game. Again, people, please, please, please wear a condom, or this is the result. Yeah. Yeah. And remember, like, I know there was games before No Man's Sky that did it, but look at how broken that fucking game was. It was a disaster on launch. It was a complete failure, and they still had seamless transitions. Yep. Mm -hmm. The fucking shit version of that game still had the basic mechanic of seamless transition and being able to fly around the planet. Not just the Starfield shit version. Starfield doesn't even have that. Not just the shit version, the shittest version. The worst yes. iteration of No Man's Sky had it. Yes. Yep. And Starfield doesn't. That is unacceptable. It is so bad. And the fact that they didn't mention this, the fact that they hid this from people, the fact that they advertised this game as all the ultimate freedom of being able to traverse space and go wherever you want without mentioning the caveat of, well, as long as you do it through loading screens. Yep. And go wherever you want as long as you pick a an area that will then procedurally generate the terrain and everything. Then it's not yep. going you where you want because you're just landing in a random spot then. Yep. yep. It, it might it, as well literally be a sandbox just floating in the vasts of space. That's all it is. I mean, it is. It literally is at that point. Where yep. if you have a game like No Man's Sky or any game where you can fly your ship in atmosphere, you can see an area that interests you and set down on land there. Um, we were watching uh, Stempy's Ark Survival video yesterday. Remember when they found that natural archway and decided to build on top of it? You can't yep. do that in fucking Starfield. Well, first of all, I don't even know if natural archways exist in Starfield. But that's besides the point. You can never find a natural landmark like that by flying around a planet because you can't fly around the planet. You have to land, generate an area, explore that entire area to see if there's anywhere you want to build in that looks unique or interesting. And if you don't find it, you have to fucking pick up and fly somewhere else and land. Because you can't... Just explore the planet. Yep. yep. You just have to keep making random jumps and random guesses until you get something you want. Just keep sometimes to the, the dice. point of yeah. Sometimes to the point of going back to a previous location that is now different because it's been reset. Yep. Ugh. No man's sky did this correctly years before. Yep. Exactly. Yep. There are over 300 endings. Yeah. I thought it was 200 for Fallout 3, but yeah, there, there's... Todd and his lies. He really did the... If you just like uh, Sharpfield, you're a bigot argument. Fucking sweet. Yeah. Hi. Huh? He does. He, he specified that it was the pronoun thing, though. No, yeah. But yeah, he, he basically did the same thing. But it was essentially he was trying to limit it to that if you if because of the pronoun thing existing, you don't like it, then therefore you're a bigot and racist and blah blah. Yeah. Bring this up as a this would have been nice to have sort of deal, and that's fine. There's lots of things it would have been nice to have in the game, but you should try not to judge a game based on what you wanted, but what is actually there. Well, what mm -hmm. there is. Luckily for you, my friend, I am judging it on what's actually there, and what's actually there is fucking dog shit. Yes. Yep. And also, yep. they advertise this as a space exploration game, and yeah. you cannot explore space, and you cannot explore planet. Being able to explore in a game about exploration is a pretty big deal. Yep. Yep. If this argument doesn't help him either way, because it's like, okay, well, we will focus on what's there, and guess what? It's bad, and we can prove it, okay? Well, you say we should ignore it. Well, let's not ignore it for a second, and did they advertise this as something that you could do in the game? Yes, they did. Okay, well, that's false marketing. Yep. 
which you might notice that Bethesda is often accused of, so much so that Todd has a specific moniker. What is that moniker? Oh, Todd the Liar Howard? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he's been known... It's been a meme for well over a decade now that um, Todd, not in, not entirely the most honest person, um, not known for being the most truthful of people. He, uh... Yeah. I had something else there and I forgot it. You get what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. The people on Little Off the Deep End are the ones who bring up super minor stuff like this and use it to claim that the entire game sucks. Okay, so... No, well, one, no. And two, it's not minor. It's not minor at all. And also the idea that, oh, well... Ugh. They just point at this one thing and say that it's bad. No, bullshit. There's a million things that we can point out. In fact, we have been pointing out a lot of them just in this stream alone and as well as other people. I bring up General Sam. He had some really good fucking complaints about this game that were completely true, and he backed it up with evidence. I can't get over what a fucking dismissive piece of fucking shit he is with this, where, like... This is a major thing. Any normal, rational, intelligent person would understand why this is a massive thing. And here he is, oh, this is just a small, minor, little thing that only irrational people are getting upset about. It's like, no! God, I... Oh my god. This guy is fucking insufferable. Yes, he is. I want to put the other video up and watch him almost cry again. <laughs> entire game is not terrible because you can't awkwardly go through the landing procedure yourself. And again, disingenuous. Awkwardly go through the landing procedure. It's, it's not gonna... If it you was know? seamless, it wouldn't be awkward in the first place. It's awkward now the way it is because you have to go through a loading screen and like go through a bunch of menus to get to where you want to go. He's Whereas if it, it was seamless, it would be less awkward. He's, he's calling it awkward because he wants to take credibility away from the argument, where yes. it, it's that whole thing of the thing you want to downplay, try to make it sound as bad as possible, where, like, mm. oh, you want to explore space? It's just a bunch of vast, empty nothingness. Why would you want to waste hours upon hours of your time flying through literal nothing when a convenient uh, menu screen can just take you to the exact planet you want to go to. It's like, it's a space yeah. exploration game. The point of the game is to fly through space and discover things on your own. Maybe it's I'll see... The funny see... thing is... Hmm? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. M I'll maybe you you'll see it. a solar system or a planet or even a moon on your casual travels. You'll be like, you know what? I want to land there. I want to see what's on that place because I I'm flying right by it and I can see it for myself outside of my ship and it's caught my interest. It's piqued my interest in some way. As opposed to... Open map. Click on planet. Go to planet. Done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you would mention that because they, they absolutely would make that argument. Yeah. But then at the same time, if you then brought up like, okay, but then it's also really boring to explore the planets because there's nothing there. He would then circle around from that argument you just made that he would make to, well, it's not supposed to be exciting. It's supposed to be boring. Oh, I'm and sure he was literally kind of, fucking... As Bethesda themselves said, remember, when the astronauts went to the moon, they were bored. <laughs> exactly. I... He would fall back on that as, like, a valid thing, even though he just got done saying that, well, you wouldn't want to explore the vastness of space. It would be boring and empty. But then when you apply that to the planets, which they are, he would then circle around as if it's a good thing. I'm actually expecting him to get to that point. I'm expecting him to fucking regurgitate, as like alongside about fucking five liters of Bethesda come, the exact cope argument that, oh, well, the astronauts weren't uh, bored there. Yeah. In the game, it would be a fairly small feature of it and not impact the overall game in a huge way. I, I, I know, know you're stupid. I know you're incredibly stupid. How fucking stupid are you? Like, I yeah. want a measurement. I want a mark on the scale of how fucking stupid you actually are, because apparently it's incredible. Yeah. 
How, how the fuck? So let me get this straight, bad company, Sarge. You think the ability to fly from one planet to the other seamlessly, where anything in between there could happen, and being able to seamlessly go to an area on the planet that you can see from orbit to actually go to that location and then circle the planet with your ship to find exactly what you want would be small, insignificant, and not worth doing. You honestly believe that. Setch, you've played Elite Dangerous in No Man's Sky, right? Yes. Okay. How is flying your ship through the vast empty void of space? It depends, because they're both slightly different. Elite Dangerous goes for more simulation feel. Yeah. Which I think is a lot more tense. Especially landing in uh, spaceports and things like that. Because you actually have to go through the process of lining up the ship and trying to dock and avoiding like the different machinery and crane and cargo loaders and stuff. Going all around the space dock. Like, it, it genuinely is... Like, for me, it's just it's not like those, like sort of things, but it's that tension of like, come on, don't hit, don't hit, don't hit. I don't want to pay any fucking damage bills or anything. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Or the, hey, I'm going to avoid the authorities and sneak into an area. I don't want to get scanned. I got contraband on me, stuff like that. What I'm getting from this is that mm -hmm. it's fairly detailed in uh, a big part of gameplay. Yes. Okay. And even more so in terms of combat or just exploration for both of them, right? Because you can choose in both of those games when to turn on your drive, your jump drive, or your warp drive to speed along the journey. Or you can choose when to just fly at, for lack of a better term, impulse, right? And while you're flying around normally, you can go explore the different asteroids, look for crashed ships. Maybe somebody um, ditched, and, and for example, Elite Dangerous, maybe somebody ditched some cargo and you can get a nice... Uh, this little bit of cargo that somebody tried to hide somewhere. And, you know, it's just all these, these fun little things to do. These little things stuff, to explore around. Stuff you can't do in Starfield because you're put into a skybox with a generic set of possible things to spawn. Maybe a destroyed ship that's already there. Maybe some yeah. asteroids. And maybe a couple pirates or a random encounter with, like, some person who's making bad jokes. Yeah. I, I would love to show show you guys the the elite dangerous interdiction which is the the first time when people made first contact with the aliens in uh in elite danger and just how like fucking impressive and meaningful that was and how it was all seamless like i think that's the craziest part is just how seamless it is do you think it would improve starfield if um Let's say they did have uh, seamless space travel just for a second. I'm not talking about that part. Do you think it yeah. would be more impactful in Starfield to meet the Starborn that way, where you leave a planet, and as you're flying back to uh, the Lodge, the Starborn encounters you at a random spot along there because they're coming to intercept you, rather yes. than meeting you outside of Neon because they're just sitting there waiting for you to come to the encounter point? Yes, absolutely. Especially considering this is a ship that we don't know to exist, and we assume they're aliens at first. I, I, I think that we could... I would love to just straight up show what happens to the chat and everything when you get interdicted. I, I really don't. I, I really don't want to show other people's videos if we're not actually properly covering them. And this stream has also gone on long enough. I really just want to end at this point. Fair enough. No, but yes, main, I think it would improve it quite the, significantly. Yeah, the main point I was making is uh, Bad Company Sarge is a fucking retard. And yes. he's downplaying something because it's inconvenient to him. Yep. It's an argument that is 100% valid and he wants it to go away because it is valid. Yeah. So he's downplaying it. Like this shouldn't really be swaying you majorly one way or the other. Except it, it's one of the core parts of the games, you disingenuous fuck. Yeah, and this should absolutely sway you. The fact that you can't explore in what is supposed to be an exploration game. Hell, the fact you can't roleplay in what is supposed to be a roleplaying game should also fucking sway the shit out of you. 
Yeah. But I noticed he didn't mention that. Maybe he'll mention the fact that there are no choices in the game. Please, God, show Neon. If if that is his not valid, like, choices don't matter. And he's like, this one isn't valid. Because look at all these choices. And he shows Neon. I will I will clap. I will have a little clap. Hmm. Because it is the it is the obvious bait. It is the trap that all the Bethesda tarts fall into. We have an oldie but a goodie: the console wars. Oh, now I am glad to say that I've actually not seen too much of this in the comments. And yeah, because you're relatively positive about it. Like, sure, Sony yeah, fans but... could be coming here, but it's mostly Xbox fans on the defense from any criticism this game gets. Yeah, it's people with their confirmation bias, so they want to go to you because they know you're just a shill for Bethesda. Yeah. You praise Redfall, you're gonna fucking praise anything. Mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't say praise, he defended it from criticism. That uh, seems to be very well deserved. And I've actually a few people who own PlayStations being nice and respectful. So he is, like, shocked by the fact that, like... People that own PlayStations can be respectful, yes. Yeah, that they're not a fucking hive mind. It seems like every group of people that can be singled out are just a hive mind to him. So when someone yeah. doesn't act as the way he believes the hive mind would be acting, it's like shocking. Saying come to the platform in the future, or just accepting that they don't get to play the game, and it's a shame about that, but they're mature enough to focus on other things. Unfortunately though, not everyone is so mature, and there definitely are people out there who are just trying to trash talk the game because they can't play it. There's been talk of review bombing, there was that dump. If there was indeed review bombing... In both directions. Starfield. But yeah, but the vast majority of the review bombing was positively. Yeah, because that's the thing. PlayStation fans aren't going to buy a $70 game on Steam just to give it a negative review. And, and as I understand do, it, if you refund the game your review will stay, but it won't count towards the overall score. Yep, that is correct. That is, that is absolutely correct. No one in their right mind, unless they're fucking absurdly rich, and even then it's questionable, is gonna pay money for a game they hate, for a system they apparently hate, just to give it a negative review, and just keep the game so that review will continue to affect the score. Like, they, this, is, this is just getting into its insanity here to even consider this. Yep. At least as far as Steam is concerned. There's just lots of stupid little stuff which is going to occur. I talked about this more in depth in my old Why Do People Hate Starfield video, but to blunt the edge of this a little bit, I would like to remind everyone that it's only a small percentage of the PlayStation player base who are actually trying to take- If it's a small percentage, as you say, why are you shocked that there is, like, PlayStation fans who weren't crazy in your comment section? Yeah, it seems like you have some incredible preconceived biases and notions about PlayStation owners. Keep in mind, yeah, this, this is from- I don't think of any of us here own either of the consoles. I have a PlayStation Mini, I have a PlayStation 1, I have a PlayStation 2. Mm. I, have I have a PlayStation 2 and an Xbox 360 that I have not touched in years. Yeah, I have an Xbox yeah. 360 too. I haven't played, aside from the PlayStation Mini, I haven't played any of those consoles in years. I don't even think I've touched the PlayStation 2 or Xbox 360 in at least two or three years. And I mean like physically touching, not playing. I have an original Xbox and an Xbox 360. Yeah, I have an original Xbox, too. Yeah, the old black box. The the Most... one that everyone was like, Jesus Christ, that's a thick boy right there. Yeah. Are being perfectly chill about it. So don't just go with the whole PlayStation fans of a problem. Because that's a... That's shocking coming from you. Yeah, considering you do that all the time for everybody else. Yeah. A big overgeneralization and just makes the issue worse. As it stands, some people out there will just look down on the game because it's not on their platform. But that's not a critique of the game itself. He's even done that in this very video with some people yep. just want to hate this game for the sake of hating it because that's their entire personality. Yep. 
Well, God. he literally just said, like, if you don't believe this ideology or if you don't fully support it, you're a bigot. You're hateful. You're you're a racist, sexist piece of shit. Yeah, leave and just leave. Yeah, and just leave. Kratosis has all the classic game consoles. Not all of them, but I have an NES, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, um, PlayStation 1 and 2. Uh, and then the uh, 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 64, Nintendo 64, um, GameCube. Yeah. I love my GameCube. I love my Dreamcast as well. It doesn't really get touched much. Yeah. Don't change your opinion on the actual content of the game. And that's it. All the big negative talking points I've been seeing online. I have now. I feel like you yeah. missed a few. Yeah, you quite left out quite a lot, actually. Like how there's no choice and and there's no role playing in this role playing game. I know he touched on the exploration one slightly. I thought he'd have more to say on that rather than just yeah. oh, it's subjective. I find it fun. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't even bring up like that the planets are empty or procedurally generated and a bunch of other stuff or. The characters, the story, the dialogue, he didn't bring up how... He didn't touch on the story at all, did he? Yeah, didn't say really anything about the story or characters. Nope. Didn't even bring up bugs or issues, which is kind of funny considering he literally couldn't play this game when he fucking got it to the point he was about to cry, and now he's just being like, mm, not bugs? <laughs> not optimization? Those weren't problems. <laughs> no. Yeah. I've publicly spoken about them, given my opinion, and I can move on. I'm already dreading the comment section of this video, so if you want to do a kind deed for the day, please do post something positive in the comments below. Can no. no. If you're dreading that, wait till you see the reviews. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait till you see how much the game is falling off. Wait till you see how Bethesda is probably going to end up either going defunct or completely changing. You know what? I don't even want Microsoft to shutter Bethesda. I want them to fucking clean house, get rid of every single person, get rid of the goddamn janitor, and bring entirely new people in. And don't yep. even, like, yeah. be public about it. Just treat it as business as usual. Hey, it's still Bethesda. Okay, now actually make a good game, guys, okay? Yep. Yeah, now, now your job now is to make a good game this time. <laughs> Here's what your predecessors did. Don't follow in their footsteps. <laughs> yeah, watch we, we finally get a good, uh, a good game from Bethesda. And then it's like, hmm... I'm noticing here in the credits that Emil's not listed here anywhere. Hmm. In fact, Todd cross didn't even advertise this game. Odd. In fact, cross-checking the credits with uh, Starfield, there isn't a single name that uh, is shared between the two uh, games. How about <laughs> that? I'll <laughs> stop. A nice encounter you had recently in the real world, or just a smiley face. Honestly, anything positive down there will make it much more bearable for me. Good Please God. comment on my video, guys, to boost engagement. My channel is dying. Yeah. I, I need I need basic platitudes to continue getting through the day. <laughs> oh, I hate that, my is, that is a running theme through all of his videos <laughs> we've covered, is at the end of how desperate he is for views and likes and all this stuff. It's like, more so than anyone else we cover. Yeah. yeah, even Acer Tart isn't this bad. Weird. Yeah. yeah. With, like, the, the comment and view begging and stuff. Which yeah, is extra really hilarious, considering it. he's like, I, if you're like this, I don't want you here on my channel. Go away. And now here he is fucking begging for comments. For engagement. Mm. Over the coming weeks. And I truly do appreciate it. Now, in terms of the channel, there's lots more to come. And there's going to be more of a positive focus from here on out. With me making the videos I'm really going to enjoy making. 
I'm already working. Good Except luck. for your fucking twice yearly bitch and moan about everyone else videos. Yeah. yeah. What pathetic little boy. He is pretty pathetic. Mm -hmm. On a let's play, which should start next week, a couple of small guides to help you all out, and a whole bunch of builds because I have a genuinely ridiculous number of builds in mind. I might end up making more builds for this game than I ever did for Fallout 4 or Skyrim. Plus, when there's DLC or patches, I'm planning on covering them too. So if you're looking for a Starfield channel to watch, please do subscribe and ding the bell. <laughs> wow. I'm shocked he has this many patrons, holy shit. Yeah, like, with content this bad. fucking bad? Yeah. God, I'm willing to bet if you were to take every single one, assuming he actually does this, where he does a bunch of different builds, if you were to take, and I'm talking about steel manning, I'm not even talking about like just taking random, I'm talking about like finding the moments in his playthroughs that are like the most different between each other, and you just put them into a compilation, I think you would struggle to even know that like these are different builds. Yeah. Unless it's something blatantly obvious, like he's running around with fists only in this whole thing, right? Here. Yeah, exactly. Like, those are the only way you would know. It's like, oh, well, he's only ever sneaking here. He's only ever punching here. And that's pretty much it. That's, like, the only way you would really know. Yep. Also, this isn't meant to be a flex or anything. Uh, I know the views of my own streams aren't, like, super amazing. Uh, that's fine, the channel's still small. I still get more views on a lot of my, uh, like, regular-ass streams than this guy does on his, uh, Starfield Let's Play videos. So, hold on, let me get this up for a second. Uh, Starfield Let's Play Episode 1, 1,000 views. Okay, not bad, not bad. Episode 2, 381. Episode 3, 349. Episode 4, 299. 222. 255, 227, 219, 199. Like, those are really bad numbers for a channel that's putting out videos every couple days with over 44,000 subscribers. That's like, yeah, dire. and that's, and that's a new, that's with a new game, too, because keep in mind, Starfield is still pretty recent. Yeah, yep. it's, uh, that should be really high, and it's they're just not. Barely two months old at this point. God, if we were to go back and look at, like, one of our gaming streams from, like, a game that has been out for fucking decades or something, like TF2 or something, where I wonder how we? how big are the view differences between I those. I think cause... I've got an idea I want to do. Hold on. Well, if I can do this quickly, the Minecraft stream from last night has 1.1 thousand views right now, and that's demonetized, so it's not getting shared as much on YouTube. The Oblivion Jesus. stream has 771 views. Hold on, let me check my content. I've got my phone up right now looking at it. Live. Yeah, uh, the reason I'm thinking about mine is because, again, I don't even have a thousand people sub to my channel, right? Right. Hence why I want to look at mine real quick. Because I'm pretty sure my Starfield ones actually rival or beat some of his. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, no, they, they beat all of his. <laughs> uh, so my very first one, 552 views, and my second one, 316 views. Yeah. Yeah, that's really not good, Bad Company Sarge. And I'm a channel that doesn't even have a thousand. I have 513. I'm actually getting more people than I have subscribers. Uh, part five of my Saints Row 2 stream, 391 views. Uh... Part 6, 571 views. Team Fortress 2, 558, 615. Starfield, 6.9 thousand, 3.9 thousand, or sorry, 3.3 thousand, 2.7 thousand. Another Team Fortress 2 stream, 575 views. Holocure, 890, 578. Starfield, uh, parts 4 and 5, 2.6k, 3.6k. Uh, part 6, uh, 2.9k. Hello here again, 690. Again, this isn't a brag, because my numbers aren't great either. But I have less than half yeah. the subscribers than he does, and I'm getting way more views on... Keep in mind, gaming streams, not what I assumed... Or what I assume are edited down uh, Let's Play videos, where, like, the boring stuff is cut out. Mm -hmm. All those views are me? Oh, no. 
Oh no. So, yeah, his channel isn't uh, doing the best. I wonder if he had to get another retail job. <laughs> Anyways, that seems to be it for today. Thank you for coming out, everyone. It's very much uh, appreciated. Um, I, I'm considering scheduling uh, streams for Wednesday and Thursday, because those are my days off this week. Um, I'm considering scheduling them now, so they're just up and there. So people know when they're... Excuse me. Know when they're going to be. Um... I'll probably do Oblivion and something else. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, I'll see you guys then for more stream for those of you who uh, come check it out. I uh, will see you on the next stag in two weeks. I have no idea what we'll be covering by then. Um, nah. You guys... Oh, okay. That works too, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> He's gone. Oh no. I bet his uh I bet his Discord crashed. Probably yeah. It's always fucking Discord crashing. Hello. Hi. He can't hear us. Uh oh. No, this is good. We could talk about how uh snakes are totally a kind of lizard. <laughs> you cut out for me, but I know exactly what you said. <laughs> what, the snakes are a kind of snake? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, apparently there's a super chat I missed. Hold on. <laughs> but uh, for real, snakes are kind of lizard. Um, Three dollars uh, from Get Out There, yo. Thank you. Bethesda Game Studios can't optimize while CS2 looks and runs better. CS2. Counter-Strike 2? Yeah. Or is that some... Oh, okay. Yeah, it's Counter-Strike 2. All right. And that's the one I missed, it seems. Uh, we can't mm -hmm. hear Setch, or he's not talking. I, I don't. Again, sorry. Discord I crashed. I tried to tell you that I had to be our. Uh. Um, but Discord crashed the moment I told you. I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to run to the bathroom as fast as I can. All right, we're uh. ending. Anything to say? Yeah, yeah I'm going to show my sh uh, So I have a YouTube, a Twitch, a Kick, and a Rumble uh, channel. Rumble one's been doing really, really well. Uh, the YouTube one's actually been doing surprisingly well, considering, you know, it's just all streams and stuff for now. Um, yeah, I've been playing a bunch of games. We're going to be continuing on Threadnought's Bounty game, so tomorrow is more Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Feel free to stop by for that. I've been enjoying it a lot thus far. Um, a bit clunky with controls, and having a PlayStation 4 controller is not helpful because PlayStation 4 controller's D-pad is rough and that is a common complaint with playstation d-pads and man oh man does it live up to it and my finger goes numb because good god that design is bad um yeah so uh we're just having that we're gonna be playing lots of different games because now we're out of spooktober month and we're going into just uh general play games have fun uh work on bounties that people have put and everything like so yeah we're gonna have a uh, have a good old time there so feel free to stop by again on any of those four platforms. I stream to all four of them every weekday at 10 a.m. Eastern United States time to 1 p.m. Eastern United States time. So hopefully you guys will be up for that. And of course, every Saturday, my community does Saturday Showtime. So if you want a free movie, join my Discord and you will get a free movie every Saturday. Kutoso, show the Lies Dance GIF and the most recent Tentacle Dude pick in fan art. I showed the uh, GIF earlier, but I could show it again, I guess. Hold on. Um, yeah, the most recent one is pretty funny, too. I don't agree. Yeah. Um, so here is the dancing GIF by uh, Bad Attitude. Ah, no. Ah! Scroll properly, you fuck! Rah! And OBS is like, there we go. 
Yeah, someone did a uh, 3D model, the goat. Yeah. I made a new one without the spinning. Oh! Hold on, I'm just going to bring this back down into place. PlayStation 1 Cree. <laughs> he does kind of have that, uh, oh, what was that, Rap Parappa the Rappa vibe. I never liked those games. Any any particular reason why? I just... I get really tizzy with certain things like character designs, and like I just I I always kind of hated the characters for no particular reason. Oh, you don't like lemon-headed kung fu master? Kick punch! It's all in the hip. I hate the game even more now. I think. <laughs> and this uh, is where I watched. This is where I watched my parents die, Parappa. This is where you watched your parents die, <laughs> Batman. <laughs> <laughs> And here's a fan art from uh, Tentacle Dude of Pippa apparently threatening me with a gun. I'm no, long uh, I'm no longer asking, show me your belly. Why are you doing this? See, the funny thing is, you can take... Hold on, can I... Eh, no, yeah, no. Bray! Streamlabs have been fucking up a lot lately. You could take this... And it's just my reaction to chat being chat. Yeah. Alright, we're gonna end it here, though. Have a good... <laughs> this is a real picture, actually. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for coming out, everyone. Have a good night. We'll see you next time. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. All right.